12 system New hours. Petacody's Charmony Festival has entered its countdown phase. Oh. By Clocky's Holy shit. After 12 system hours. Holy the fuck. It, it just starts. With much fanfare. Uh, I already told you. We can talk things out. <laughs> I'm sorry, Fluffy. I really have something urgent to attend to, so I had no choice but to resort to asking this favor of you all. Since you already know what you're doing, I'll also have to remind you of its risks. Yeah! Hey, partner, what's with the hostility? You're pointing a gun at me! This thing out was just a way of saying hello. For the last time, state your identity and purpose. I'm glad it was uh, Don Hung to stand behind. My name's Boot Hill, and I'm a Galaxy Ranger. Are you now? A Galaxy Ranger? All right, you then. You look like you've seen a ghost. <laughs> Did you think we all went extinct? <laughs> well, that's the price you pay for being off grid for too long. Dude's a robot. Dude's actually a robot. The righteous heroes of the hunt would never hijack the Astral Express. <laughs> I ain't hijacked anything. What, chatting with someone while holding the gun is considered a hijacking? Kinda? <laughs> it probably is. Yeah, I kind of agree with Pom Pom. Pardon my frankness, but there are plenty of rumors in the cosmos regarding the Galaxy Ranger's current status. And none of them are pretty stories. I have a hard time believing you. <laughs> this is hilarious. The Dude, it just starts off with a gun. The fool spin is getting out of hand. There's even a bit about the Galaxy Rangers being turned into gibbons by Dr. Primitive, and they're in some valley screwing around on swings. Of course, I know you won't believe me, which is also why, similarly, I have a hard time believing that you're the real Nameless. Oh. See the bullets in this gun. Nine millimeter. An eternal Ooh. classic. I may need the Astral Express's help right now, but if you're an imposter just like that one, <laughs> then this bullet might just end up in my head. I can't allow myself to be exposed to danger. Yeah. That's just the way it goes. So uh. you all have to first prove yourselves. Eh? Huh? Where are you going? I'm done. I'm, go I'm leaving. Goodbye. Mm. Recognize this? <laughs> it's a model fudger. The Jade Abacus of Ally and Oath. The CN Joe really gave this to you guys? Hmm. Model fudger? <laughs> He's trying. <laughs> this is the Jade Abacus gifted to the Express by the CN Joe Lofu's general, Jing Yuan. Its presence on board serves as the Shenzhou Alliance's official recognition of the Express. Wow. Is that enough? <sighs> Not bad, kiddo. And across these sprawling stars, a gentle squeeze is all it takes to rustle up a whole legion of cloud knights. Is that so? Now, I reckon that'd be one fudge in sight to behold. Hmm. Now it's your turn. Been ages since the Galaxy Rangers had the spotlight shown on them. We ain't equipped with such fancy gadgets. Fair. But I've been around the block enough to know the way to handle these types of situations is easy as pie. All right, then. Feel free to toss any questions my way. Okay. Let's see if my answers can't turn your trust. If your gut tells you otherwise, still ain't too late to show me the door. I bead. Okay, first question. Are you a robot? And why would I play along? If I truly am a real Galaxy Ranger, you stand to lose nothing. <laughs> All right, then. Tell me. What kind of organization are the Galaxy Rangers? <laughs> oh, my friend. This question is a hard one. I don't think I can even consider us an organization to begin with everyone's on their own faded path along the hunt okay with their own resolute sense of righteousness and not so welcome among such so-called universal values mm, this reply does not instill trust 
It only makes your predicament more precarious. I'm guessing you're gonna ask about some form of shared faith, right? But us Galaxy Rangers don't need that sort of thing. Oh. What brings us together is a shared bottom line. Never bully the weak. Never kill the innocent. Correct. These oaths aren't some lofty beliefs, but the fundamental bottom line that one must never cross as a person. As Galaxy Rangers, we strictly adhere to the bottom line. When someone crosses them, the hunt's vengeance will surely come knocking. Okay. And in this moment, the other crucial meaning of bottom line comes into play. As long as you don't cross it, you're free to do whatever you please. You catch my drift? No. <laughs> Second question. Why do you seek trouble with the Astral Express? I already said that I seek no trouble. I must go to Pinacone for a matter. But I don't have an invite. And I can't even enter the family's hotel doors. If only I could borrow the Nameless's identity. Uh, aren't the Galaxy Rangers also esteemed guests? Well... Oh. You've hit the nail on the head. This is why I'm here. It's fine if I tell you. The Rangers are pursuing an imposter. The son of a nice lady posing as one of us. She's on Pentacone right now. Oh, that's Acheron. My informant is a memo keeper. She's the same as all memetic organisms. Appearing one moment and gone the next. Ugh. She scares the fudge out of me. Still, she gave me some vital info. Okay, so she instills fear into Boot Hill of all people. Black Swan for the win. That Galaxy Ranger imposter. Who is it? Is that the third question? Is it a hard question? It isn't. Just that you might not believe me. That person calls herself Acheron. And according to our informant, she could be an emanator of nihility. <laughs> That's impossible. That's what I said. Ah, don't worry. When I first received the news, I had the exact same reaction as you. IX never gives anyone so much as a first glance, and that's perfectly normal. What reason would they have to bequeath strength unto mortals? That's a good point. Then you must know that emanators can also conceal their own identities, which, for many people, it's better that way. Otherwise, there'd be wanton bloodshed across the cosmos, or even... Perhaps, turning their back on the path they're supposed to follow. I had the good fortune of running into an elation emanator. Its appearance was no different than that of those clowns. If it weren't through sheer luck that I got it drunk, I would have never known of its eminent status. Even in the purest hunt, you'll find the Sienjo Alliance under the spotlight and galaxy rangers lurking in the shadows. You know, the music's a little unsettling now. Created by people and exist in planes beyond our understanding. To reckon that nihility emanators don't exist, well, maybe we just ain't nihilistic Did enough. I win the 50-50? I did win the 50-50. Then I lost the 75-25. And then the next 10 pull, I won. So, <sighs> I got my guarantee. So, Robin has been secured. So... We you won. Stand now. Your companions are in danger. And it's pretty harrowing. If you don't want to believe me, you'd best send a message to them. But I'd advise you to move fast. That's what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying, Fork superi Superiority. That's what I'm saying. We don't know nice. what's happening in the dreamscape or how much of what the memo keeper said is true. And that Acheron... <sighs> Who knows what she intends to do? Who knows? All right. Um. Well, on we go. Oh, that's still there. I don't intend to do anything. Whoopsie doopsies, I guess. <laughs> that's not up to you. Did you know? People who come to the land of dreams for the first time, they'll subconsciously stop to reaffirm that they're still walking on solid ground. 
and then they were unanimously raised their heads to gaze at the sky. Interesting. Also, I'm glad you really like the chat box. Thank you. Be it reality or dream, staring at the sky is instinctual for humanity. Why you gate up since the day that the golden hour was completed? It's always been there, watching over every single night of decadence. Is this an intervention? What's going on? Gang it up on me? But now this night sky has been. Why are you the ringleader? <laughs> what are you doing here? Died with a mist of nihility, and this whole event happened within the course of a single slash of a blade. I mean, <laughs> a single slash of a blade isn't really accurate. It was actually two blades. Just that the second one was faster. <laughs> she does not take it seriously. She's like, well, actually. <laughs> That's not the point. Okay, but I, I need to correct you on things. Many guests who weren't supposed to be invited have gathered at this banquet. Even if the harmony is all embracing, I have no choice but to show some of them the door. For the sake of Panacone and the peace, the planet of festivities has no place for you, a puppet of nihility. Uh huh. Those who <laughs> She's like, and uh huh. <laughs> do not bear the right to tread the illuminated stage. Okay, I won't be there. See ya. Speaking of living in the shadows, there's probably not much difference between us. It's only polite to reveal your true self, at least when speaking to others. Penacone's dream master. Holy shit. Okay, we're just going to jump right into it. Uh, the accusatory. You, Acheron, you can't just point at people and be like, you, you're the dream master. <laughs> That's, That's just another reason that you can't stay. So I was right. Yes, finally. That was the fifth person I've accused this week. Whether you believe it or not, this is the real me. We are one. Is this the unity that the family espouses? My mortal shell has long since Kill the bird! <laughs> It's the bird! Get it! The Oak family's 107,336 offspring are now my eyes, ears, and mouths, spreading joy across dreams when required. And in times of essential need, exiling evil from this haven in my stead. From the sound of it, it seems like you're asking me to leave, Panacone. No, well, 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 I am glad that, that you're, you're an understanding, understanding one. Alas, I'm not asking. I'm not trapped in here with you. You're trapped in here with me. <laughs> if you think you can. Are you threatening me? <laughs> hmm. I ended it with a period. It was a statement, not a threat. Knowing who I am and still showing such malice. You're not the first, nor will you be the last. <laughs> Put this the fear of God into that child. <laughs> and usually, when faced with my questions, most people retort, why can't I? The result has invariably been that they can't. You are confident, but be reminded the family is forgiving, but not weak. The chords of the harmony extend across worlds. If you do not comply, when the blade is unsheathed for even a hair's breadth, you will never be able to escape the eternal centurion's wrath in all of your lifetime. One hundred and thirty-seven individuals 
That is how many heathens I have exiled since I became Dream Master. Among them were those who once severed my wings, and those who immolated my body. And here I stand again, about to add another mark to the tally. And you will die. I mean, all of you will. <sighs> Uh-oh. But that won't come to pass. I'll do as you ask. I'll leave. A wise choice. I wasn't aware there was a choice. To you, that surely is the only option. Please what does she like mind. grab the child's head and just like and threw it into the pavement? It's just this like fucking sh idiot. Those born on the far bank cannot seek solace across the river. Leave and never return. The radiance of the planet of festivities is overwhelmingly bright, luring in tricksters, wrongdoers, and criminals. But even the harmony itself will never welcome the self annihilator of nihility, and even more so. And now I gotta fix the screen! Fuck you! Heralds <laughs> the destruction of everything. Your strength is obviously a gift of the sleeping and shapeless, immeasurable and fathomless, like a tributary spawn from the abyss that brings death and sin to all. Acheron. A befitting name. Why are you still talking? I'm leaving. <laughs> Take it from someone on the other side of your so-called river. You know better than I do that Panacone has already deviated from the Harmony. Whatever your intentions may be, I foresee only one outcome. Oh, she sees the bird. Its future holds nothing but nihility. Just like all the worlds that have drowned in their shadow. Oh. Okay, we're switching to Robin's POV. I thought she was dead. Well, we're gonna find out at the same time! Attention, please. The unusual event that occurred moments ago was due to a technical malfunction at Clock Studios Theme Park. The family has promptly responded to secure the area, and we're happy to report that there have been no injuries. But there is a death! Maybe? Oh, I swear that was no movie shoot. So many chips fell from the sky, and I even caught one of them! But oh. it vanished in an instant before my very eyes. Excuse me. Are you talking about the Clock Studios theme park incident? Hmm? Yeah. What about it? it oh, Miss Robin, am I seeing things right? Nope. <laughs> no need to worry. I apologize for any inconvenience caused to your delightful dream. Wait dream. a second. She's level one. But you just mentioned oh, that no. <laughs> really piqued my interest. Would you mind providing more details about the incident? Oh, it was just those chips you normally see everywhere. The green ones, they fell from the sky as if it were raining. Excuse me? <laughs> and then those chips simply disappeared. Uh, it appears to be the dream sim tech the Iris family has been developing. Huh? Miss Robin, you mean those chips were all part of a performance? B but I really... Shh! This technology hasn't been made public yet. It was originally planned to debut at the Charmony Festival. I'm supposed to be but dead. It it's been <laughs> Can you help me keep this secret? The raining chips... We're supposed to be part of my act. Oh, I see. Then it all makes sense now. I'll do anything to help make the Charmony Festival a success. Yay. Thank you. As appreciation, I like to give you a token gift. Never mind. <laughs> oh, this button is. Press it at just the right moment in the celebration. There could be an unexpected treat in store for you. All right. It looks like there are other guests who are also confused. I'll have to excuse myself. Please, enjoy the dreamscape. 
So many people talking about it. This commotion of Fuck. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, she's level 20. She could take him. Only consistent practice can ensure optimum performance. Okay, but I have the real Robin, okay? Like like the the Yep, that's that's my Robin. Yep, we're who um this is it not good. <laughs> that that's yours. That the, the trial one is over there. You, you can't have that one. <laughs> the real Robin. But the theme park definitely made waves. Yeah, that's not Rob. Hold on one second. I need you out. Ah, there you are. Okay, thank you. The re yeah, perfect. All right, I need you to swap. Swap with the other one because I you. I hope this piece of music matches. You won't survive. <laughs> Do you come with your light cone? You won't tell me. <laughs> yeah! Hello. Hi, everybody. I'll be in public. Hello. The family promised they would protect the guests within the dreamscape, but I witnessed a group of organic life forms making their way to the theme park. And soon after, a rip tore through the sky and black rain started leaking out of the void. The family needs to provide a reasonable explanation, or I'll take my loved ones and return to reality. I thought the dreamscape was supposed to be a paradise. If it's not, then there's no point staying here. All right, wake up then. Do it. Wake up. It appears the good sir has seen many great events. So allow me to do damage control. <laughs> However, their target is not the ordinary guests, but the ambassadors of the IPC. Yo, Sparkle, why are you doing damage control right now? <laughs> is of the highest importance. Miss Robin, I know the Bloodhound family has already sealed off the theme park and has control over the situation. But it won't resolve the problem. <laughs> twenty dollars is twenty dollars. The family can try their best to protect their reputation, but as a guest, I don't wish to gamble with my life. I love the idea of Sparkle. Like, like someone walked up to Sparkle and said, "Hey, listen, we got to do some damage control. Can you like pretend to be? Oh, okay, you can be Robin. All right, twenty bucks for you. Tw twenty, take it." But as you can see, sir, no innocent bystanders were affected in this incident. Perhaps the dreamscape is not as perfect as promised, but there's no place safer than dreams under the face. Robin, this is a damage control. <laughs> you know this better than I do. If this incident happened in real life, how many people would be able to walk away from it? Okay, damage control successful. Hmm. I could stay here. But keep in mind, guests come to Pinnacone to enjoy the dreamscapes. They do not wish to be entangled in a Bro, conflict. Bro, shit happens. The just move on. The IPC, so, <laughs> Sometimes, like, a fragment of the fucking sky just gets incidents. torn open. You know, you, gotta, you just gotta accept it. It happens, man. It's a fucking dream. Of course. Just, With just, the you have a new... About to commence, <laughs> we will spare no effort in our preparations. Rest assured. To express our apologies... The family has arranged this gift for the guests. Thank you for understanding. Here, have a nuke. You've had quite a bit to drink. Hello. I'm sure you're okay. <laughs> yeah. Hello. May I ask what happened here? Nothing to be worried about. There's been a small rehearsal mishap at Clock Studios theme park. Please stay calm. I am damage control. Hey, are you a fool? You don't even recognize Miss Robin? Who do you think you're talking to? Uh, I, I, I'm sorry. I, I've just been transferred oh. to the Bloodhound family, and, and I'm still not too used to working on the streets. I, I didn't realize it was you. I, I'm so sorry. You can tell her everything. A giant sword ripped. <laughs> a giant sword ripped and ripped into the sky. <laughs> we gotta panic. Everyone, run! <laughs> hey, don't sweat it. You guys have a tough job. I know how it is. How's the situation looking? Bad. Oh, 
We've sealed off the theme park. Most guests are used to bizarre phenomena in the dreamscape, and so far, no threats have been detected. We can expect order to be restored soon. So Sparkle just bombing the dream. I mean, that, that's what she's been wanting to do since the start. I mean, Rest this is not even, this is even damage control anymore. Control she's just damage. No <laughs> she's damage control by controlling the damage. I trust you guys. But regarding what happened in the theme park, what do you hounds think about it? It's okay. Feel free to speak your mind. Uh, well... Actually, I was there shortly after it happened. Oh, okay. Yeah. Is it true that the IPC's ambassadors came with ill intent? And that Galaxy Ranger who easily cut through the sky... Don't worry about the Galaxy Ranger. No harm is done when demolishing a fake... It's not real. <laughs> <sighs> Miss Robin, tell you the truth, everyone's been talking about it. The myriad factions on Panacone have already been causing unease for everyone. It's been a weird week. <laughs> Thank you all for your loyalty towards the family. And to show the you some grateful gratitude, have a nuke. Some trouble. Of course the family did not agree. The result of the failed negotiations is as you see it now. No wonder. So this is the main reason why the IPC staff are banned from entering the dreamscape. Did they apprehend the troublemaker in the end? Uh, I mean, I don't know. Don't worry. Mr. Sunday is currently tracking his whereabouts, and he'll have something to show for it soon. However, given yeah, the he's situation, all right. the IPC surely won't let this go easily. Therefore, we are relying on you hounds to maintain the order and stability of the dreamscape. Please be assured, Miss Robin. We take our orders seriously. We won't let those IPC cronies get away with this. You can't get away with this! Thank you for your hard work. <laughs> If there are any other members who still feel uneasy, please tell them on my behalf that protecting the dreamscape requires everyone's help. This is a small gift for so the here have a nuke. <laughs> family for the guests. This is the nuke! <laughs> There's one for you too. Please, open it at the Charmony Festival for an unexpected surprise. I can't believe I received a gift from Miss Robin. It feels like I'm dreaming. Wait, Hold on. I am in a dream. Correct. If trouble comes knocking on our door, we're not afraid to go to war. Rest assured, the Dreamscape's peace will be protected by the Bloodhound family. Oh boy. <laughs> Excellent. Alright, anyways, we're gonna give you some more gifts. Hi, random person. Would you like a gift? I got nukes. Have a nuke. Here you go. <laughs> Miss Robin? That's the renowned cosmic superstar, Miss Robin! Veteran Bloodhound voiced by Gallagher's VA, pretty sure. It, it, it sounded very similar, okay? I'm, I was, I was, I didn't want to say it, but you said it. I didn't expect to meet a fan here. I'm honored. I didn't expect Welcome to meet. To Spar Sparkle, you're, you're blowing your cover. Dreams. What do you mean, I didn't expect to be a fan here? You are literally the main attraction. You are the main reason why a lot of people are here right now. I can't believe I'm actually meeting the real Robin. <laughs> Shouldn't you be preparing for the Charmony Festival? Well, we talked about the real Robin, and, uh... Eh, she's probably alright. Preparation is important. But the ceremony is fundamentally about sharing the Great One's harmony with everyone. If there's a chance to sing with everyone, I will not refuse. Regarding the recent mishap, I understand it negatively impacted some of our guests. As a member of the family... It's only right for me to come forward. I am so and fucking sorry. Everyone. So, to make up for it. But, uh, are you sure it was actually a mishap? Everyone saw those chips descending like rain and the red light tearing through the sky. Claiming it was merely special effects seems a bit far fetched. Plus, I met that generous gentleman. He looked really out of it and kept talking to himself. Is this also part of the performance? Yes, the crazy man talking to himself is indeed part of the performance. How did you know? Yeah! Damage control! Everyone, please do not panic. I believe that the family will give everyone a satisfactory answer in due time. Yeah, th that was just part of the dream. That <laughs> That's the excuse they use. They're just like, are you sure that that happened? What do you mean? 
mean? Of course it did it. It's a dream. Even if you say oh, yeah, so, I guess. Miss Robin, it's hard to believe. Will you believe? Will you believe me if I give you this nuke? <sighs> Some people just never listen, do they? Oh, nice she's kind of cracking a little bit there. It just goes on and on. I'm getting really tired of this. Miss Robin? Still, I suppose I should keep on helping everyone. I am the epitome of joy, kindness, and goodness, after all. Uh-oh, she's kind of losing it. Uh, huh? What was I just doing? And uh, who might you be, miss? Here, oh, that's a sparkle. Take, this, take the nuke! Guess. Take the nuke! This has been specially prepared. Make sure to take good care of it until the opening oh, of the come in a crime. festival. Then, when the show reaches its climax, Press the button together with the others around you. <laughs> you never know. Something very exciting might happen. In the meantime... We're back to where it all began. Oh my god! You entered the golden hour from this place. And it is also from here where you will enter the true Pentacone. The true Pentacone? It is a pleasure to journey alongside you once more. But it's time I laid bare the entire truth before you. Okay, tell, say it all. As you might have heard, mm -hmm. I also go by another name. Oh, yeah. Stellaron Hunter Sam. Yeah, I think I saw that. You lied to me. <laughs> I'm sorry. I had no other choice. I know you have many questions. Yeah. Do you remember when we encountered death in that strange dreamscape? When I was caught by that meme? Y y you can't call them memes. <laughs> in that instant before it killed me, I saw the reflection of another dreamscape in its ghastly pupils. Oh. So. Following the clues in the script, I came up with some theories about the meme. That's why I instructed Silverwolf to issue invitations. Drawing everyone to the Dreams Hotel. I intended to call upon death before you arrived. To solve the riddle using... But then I got hella distracted. I was like, hey, it's you! And, and then I died. Join. However, contrary to my wishes... I couldn't defy the script. And I, I didn't get a chance to explain it to you. Wait, so you dying was part of the script? It is how you see now. I was impaled by the bladed wings of death. The heavy pressure of concentrated memoria miasma exploded in my mind as if it was actually reality. So you, like, kind of died? But after the momentary numbness subsided, I found that my body was absolutely unscathed. Okay, so Robin and Sunday are okay. So we didn't need Sparkle to do damage control. Got it. I was still alive. And it was just as I thought. I, I had arrived at a place starkly different from this beautiful dream. Beneath the dreamscape of Pentacone lies another, more chaotic, more primal memory zone. Its name? Land of the Exiles. And so, uh, then I returned to the hotel in the dreamscape, hoping to tell you of its existence. Yet I, I, I could not reveal my own identity. So it's gonna, like, take so you. <laughs> I could only divert your party's attention and lure you away from the battlefield. And after... All my attempts proved futile. It wasn't until not long ago when a crimson blade of light shattered the high wall of the dream, causing you all to fall far into the abyssal depths of the dreamscape, that I was able to awaken you and your companions one by one. So, like, do the Stilleron hunters like us or not? Like, <laughs> and, and that's it. That is all that's happened so far. I completely understand, or I'm completely confused. I know it's tough to believe all this without reservations. I just want to say, you are very close to the final answer. Okay. 
Just one more thing needs to be done. And then I can prove it to you. Now, let's leave this place. Okie dokie. Please close your eyes. Okay. Take a deep breath and visualize the dreamscape's outline in your heart. We do come from the Okay, yes, but you got to remember, remember she's also helped you must the not rest of us at all times. 3 2 1 Like sh like she could have just been like, "Okay, you're up. Uh, we we move on." Don't be afraid. The one who has come to greet us has arrived. After a piercing screech, uh Uh, through the sympathy of memoria like roaring thunder and among them one echo stood out with exceptional clarity you knew it came from the girl beside you your hearts beating at the same rhythm peaceful and even more peaceful until in that quiet darkness memories ripple into existence I never knew you could do this huh? drive? <laughs> driver's license? No. Oh. <laughs> oh, okay, he does. That is surprising. Yeah, very surprising. Why? Because this is Chapella, the city of sins. <laughs> no, it's nothing. I'm just thinking that you haven't slept in 20 system hours. Are you sure you're okay? Blade is like a tired dad. <laughs> I'm fine. I'll survive. Same goes for you. What's wrong with your face? <laughs> I'm not so sure about that. Mine is when left with that. Slow down, down a bit. Whoa. Infiltration is over. Feel free to activate Sam anytime you like. There's still some time before the next part of the script unfolds. Let me stay a little longer in this body. Okay, I'm curious now. Such a long tunnel. <sighs> Didn't feel this long when I set off. In half a system hour, it will lead us to Kafka. And then comes the downfall of the Japella Brotherhood. I, is that also part of the script? It's in your script too. Sorry, I didn't notice. <laughs> Their destiny won't change just because of your selective ignorance. Oh, they don't like her, do they? <laughs> I told you before. It's a bad habit. What about you, then? Is this the moment you finally find the death you've been looking for? As always, it's a blank slate. It's not on this planet. Why the sudden inquiry? Because I'm currently in a car with a sleep-deprived driver. I just want to get there in one piece. I am in the car with someone who has no sleep. <laughs> and you are indeed driving. <sighs> this car has full self-driving capabilities. I'll just put my hand on the steering wheel. Will that do? <laughs> hey, don't take everything so seriously. Elio would always say there's only one type of destiny. Mm -hmm. The inescapable type. He can see the future, and we, likewise, are aware of our predetermined end. But before that moment arrives, what? we can still choose what we do. We all have this right, don't we? After today, Chapella's name will disappear from cosmic history. Okay. And the Everflame Mansion will take its place. In the not-too-distant future, you'll receive an invitation. That's your next stop. Land of the Dreams. Panacone. I... hope you find whatever you seek there. Be it answers... or salvation. Do they like her or not? I'm curious now. Huh. Yeah. 
Glad to see you're safe and sound. And you are alive. You're here Close now. Your eyes. This is the answer. Isn't it incredible? The monster that we have always known as death is it's Mr. Yang, the guardian <laughs> of the land of the exiles. It's him. He abides by a certain rule. Abducting people from their dreams and bringing them here. The question that has been perplexing us, does death really exist in the dreamscape, mm. appears to be a cognitive trap. It was laid by those orchestrating events from the shadows to cover up the truth behind the disappearances and the existence of this fortress known as Dreamflux Reef. Okie doke. Every emergence of that meme is related to the Watchmaker. Okay. Since Dreamflux Reef is where it brings its captives, it's likely that many of our long-standing questions will be answered in this place. The atmosphere here is starkly different from the beautiful dream. There are no regulators here like the family. And they all look like they're mildly dazed. But from the whispers of the residents, I've heard a familiar name. Gallagher. Oh yeah, I mean, he, he's kind of responsible for some shit. It's that man again. Always in the right place at the right time. <laughs> Though that does save us the trouble of looking for him. Himiko and March have already made a move. Get ready. We're about to set off. Let's go kick some ass. The real dreamscape. The land of the exiles. I, yeah. Alright, what do you gotta say? I'm really sorry for waiting until now to tell you everything. But Mr. Yang knows before, knew before you. It's kind of weird how he already knew this shit. Uh, why couldn't you? Two reasons. Firstly, the script. In the future that Elio saw, Sam and the Astral Express's confrontation was inevitable. I tried to break the shackles of the prophecy, but this is so she doesn't like the script. Go. So, like, what are you? Like, are you with them or no? Like. Who that aside, there were also my personal motives. I wished to travel with you as Firefly and not Sam. I guess that also kind of makes sense. It's all right, I didn't take it personally. Or this is still hard for me to accept. Thank you. It's fine. It'll be all right. Elio only gave me one instruction. Allow the Astral Express to pursue the Grand Legacy. Okay. It means that the Watchmaker's Legacy holds great significance to trailblazing. And to you. Elio's scripts used to revolve and expand around certain specific Stellarons. Okay. But with your appearance, this condition has apparently ceased to be appropriate. Perhaps he also saw the impossible in the future. Huh. So who exactly is Do Sam? Do you still remember that medical cabin I told you about? Well, that's Sam. Oh. It belongs to the Iron Cavalry of Glamoth's Firmament Frontline. I took it. A Firefly Type 4 Tactical Heavy Assault Mech. Strategetic Assault Mech Sam. That's what it means. Okay. It is the cradle of my vitality. And the meaning of my birth. And for the longest time it was... <sighs> how I should have looked to the rest of the world. Well, that's kind of fucked. The time scale of Dreamflux Reef differs from reality. So we mustn't lower our guard. You're sensitive to Memoria. A slight misstep. And you could get lost in this memory. All right, Mr. Yang, let's talk. Something on your mind? Let's talk uh, about the slash. Yeah. No wonder Miss Let's Akira talk about that shit. <laughs> blade. It's 
Hard to imagine such terrifying power could reside in an ordinary sheath. If it weren't for the fact that Aventurine's power originated from the preservation, the entire dreamscape would have been affected. So we got lucky. Don't feel burdened by this. Even without that Stellaron inside you, Aventurine would still have found other methods to accomplish his goal. Let's just believe in Miss Acheron. And given it's her prowess, he knows things I don't we think don't. we've got anything to worry about. All right, what are your thoughts on Gallagher? During your investigation, he shared a vital piece of information. Mikhail, the former watchmaker who collaborated with the family to construct the Pentaconi we're familiar with today, had a falling out with the family for specific reasons. Okay. But this is precisely where the problem lies. You were clearly investigating a murder. Mm, so yeah. then why, as a security officer, is he changing the subject to talk about his past with the watchmaker? Oh, good point. And now, with Firefly mentioning his name again, it's hard not to be suspicious. What? Just be a chill dude. <laughs> Regarding Firefly. Before we found you, she'd already revealed her Stellaron Hunter identity and shared a lot of information. So like I said, I do before you. Who would have thought that the Molten Knight's true identity was actually a young girl? For her, this is a secret that she cannot allow others to know. That being the case, I think we can believe she's willing to cooperate. I think you might be right. But... She didn't reveal all her secrets. Well, that's kind of mad. Just can't shake the feeling that her situation is different from that of the typical dreamer. And I hope that doesn't lead to any dangerous predicament. All right, let's call it a day. I hope you've regained a little composure. We'll move out when you're ready. If you go all out on rolling, you can hit soft pity. Okay. Yes, but there is no such thing as building pity in this game. <laughs> I, I, I will be the example. Oh, sticker. I will be an example here. I, um. When I went to, um. Uh, when I pulled for the light cone, I got Bailu's light cone. And I was like, fuck, are you fucking kidding me? This is the fucking worst. I hate this fucking game. I want to die. And then I did another 10 pull. And then I got Robin's light cone. So I'm just going to tell you right now. Building pity is not a thing in this game. And if you think you're going to build pity, unless you want Robin, right? Like, if you want Robin, then go fucking go crazy and quote unquote build pity. But if you know you don't want Robin or um, Topaz and Numbi, then I would refrain and just hold on to it. I know it's addicting to, to, to pull. It's, it's like gambling, but... You, you gotta resist. <laughs> That's all I'm saying. All right. I really should not be wasting my time with these birds. The story is like nine hours. <laughs> Fleeting happiness, my beloved. Hi, what happened to you? <laughs> Welcome to heaven. Dreams, true or false, <laughs> all are ephemeral. <laughs> Might as well drink more Soul Glad instead. You live your best life. I really want to roll for Keep Fushu, going for straight Sean. down this alley, and yeah. it'll lead to an elevator. It'll take us to the center of the land of the exiles. So. Yeah, I, I know that feeling. I want to get Fush I, I wanted Fushuan, but I've built so many teams without Fushuan at this point where it's like, it's yeah. not the biggest necessity as I thought it was before. R uh, Robin, you can't be here. You, you, you could not take a hit if you even tried. Okay, so we have to move you out for now. For now, okay? This isn't the end for you. We're going to get rid of you, and we're going to put Himiko in, because, uh, I don't know. I fuck with this team. You can't go back. Sorry. Uh, did you also get kicked out of the beautiful dream? 
No. I want to go back. But then, then I don't want to go back. Tell me what I should do. Ugh, I don't know what to do. I don't know what to do. Oh, uh, no, she's unfortunately a C1. I was really trying for C2, I won't lie, but uh, it just wasn't happening. So, I know I need two Nihilities in order to really maximize her damage, but I just can't afford that right now. I don't even know what elements I have to deal with right now. That's the problem. Like, I don't know what elements are going to come in, and I don't know what needs to fucking smack right now. So, I'm just going to... Uh, I'll take the one and call it a, call it a week. What a huge clocky. Uh, looks He's like big. the watchmaker also left his mark on Dreamflux Reef. <gasps> just E6 Akron and not deal with the weaknesses. I know, right? <laughs> yeah, just spend money. I definitely want to E6 Akron someday, and it, it, while it might not be today or when she comes next, I'm definitely going to get her at some point E6. It, it, it's it's a goal of mine. It's a goal of mine. I have more motivations to E6 uh, Akron than I do uh, Firefly, in all honesties. Because Akron will just fuck shit up. Bro, why is my game lagging? Like Oh, wait, I got important stuff here. Perfect. Love how skill spam is faster than running. That's that's how I've been doing it ever since I got her. It's just how I've been just how I move. Unbelievable. To think there's a settlement of this size within the dreamscape. And all beyond the family's reach. Yeah, I know, right? Isn't that crazy? Yeah, 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 yeah! <laughs> the atmosphere in this fortress is uh, pretty different from that in the beautiful dream. Is that kid's head a barrel? Like I just want I, I just want to go Firefly, yeah, Mr. Yang. I I got some important matters to take care of. When I first saw it, I was in awe, too. The sky here, it's like a reflection of the 12 dreamscapes. What's even more bizarre is that this place is also separated into trade and residential areas. I know, right? The layout may be simple, but the facilities are very comprehensive. It seems that there are quite a number of people living here. Hmm. Though both dreamscapes have distinct styles, the architectural designs are quite similar. Works of the same hand, perhaps. Hard well, not to speculate are on we the gonna get a boot hill POV? I'm just curious now, because we just had a Robin, quote-unquote, sparkle POV, but, like, are we going to get a boot hill one? I think we might. But I could be no wrong, point in overthinking I don't know things. shit, man. Let's meet up I with Imako and the others first. Take a right turn at the end of this road, and you'll reach the train. Perfect. I need to inspect that barrel, kid. Not coming with us? The Astral Express likely needs room for some internal deliberation. In the meantime, I'll try and locate Gallagher. They put uh, limiteds as POVs. Uh, they did, yes. I So so I do know that, because I, I obviously I did. Surely we can play as the. I, sure. I'd be curious because it would be it would give me a good idea if I really want this character. I don't right now, but I'm liking his letting her go somewhat was the of a right personality. Decision. Further observations are needed. Uh, Misha, what the fuck are you doing over there? Her. But first, there's some. You're not safe. <laughs> You're one of our guests. Oh yeah, no. Uh, I love how the Star Rail. Uh, Patch notes said, oh, by the way, a certain character is going to become temporarily unavailable on the ship uh, and through text messages. So, like, <laughs> they pretty much just said someone's going to die. <laughs> Who's it going to be? Well, we only have four options of people who are on the ship. <laughs> Let's go. 
Moonhill's kit sure has been released. Oh, I already know. Leaks, obviously. I just don't... I try not to dive into leaks live on stream because I don't want the Hoyo assassins to come after me. <laughs> I can't He's I can't afford right court. Over there. The Reverie Hotel's bellboy. How did he end up here? And right after Miss Acheron severed the beautiful dream. We'd better check, just to be sure. Oh, Hoyo released them officially? Oh shit, well then never mind. Then no Hoyo assassins after me. Perfect for me. I knew it! I fucking knew it! I knew it! You're in the barrel! Fuck you! <laughs> I don't know why I said that. Why did I do that? Yeah. yeah. Screen four. Before I continue, I want to close you the You were the guest windows. room before. <laughs> we meet again. And a new friend. Uh, uh, forgot to introduce myself. I'm the hotel's bellboy. Me. Yes, you are. All right, I'm just going to close my, my office. Hello, Misha. I'm Welt. We met in a dream. Oh, yes, we did. Well, and who might this be? That's Clocky. He, he's a drunk. If you see him, you are on drugs. Well, what drugs have you been taking? Tick-tock! Old friend and new friend! Let's high-five! Weed! You're still young at heart. Your um, memory zone mean? Close enough. <laughs> nope. Clocky is a good friend of mine. We all live here. How did you two get here? How? Oh. This dreamscape isn't supposed to be open to the public. I wonder if it has something to do with Sleepy. No, we got sent into the Shadow Realm. Sorry, kid. So this is your home? After my work in the beautiful dream ends, I'll go back home. Commuting used to be more convenient, but ever since travel became cumbersome, Sleepy started ferrying people back and forth between the two dreamscapes. Oh. This Sleepy, can you describe what it looks like? Nope. Sleepy is a memory zone meme. Looks fierce and has many eyes, but it's actually really well behaved. Gallagher's been taking care of it. You mean to tell me Sleepy's the thing that's been killing people? Based on the description, that meme is indisputably death. A nightmare for the family, but for the people who live here, well, that couldn't be further from the truth. Oh. D death? Not in a dream, surely. Sleepy's just a little aggressive, oh. and sometimes messes up by fetching the wrong guess. But it would never hurt anyone. About that. <laughs> I see. Has it brought back any guests recently? Say, in the last day or two? We're currently investigating a missing person case that occurred within the beautiful dream. I see. Then you'll have to speak with Gallagher. But he's currently busy hosting a visitor from the Oak family, and specifically asked not to be disturbed. The one issue with Boot Hill is even an issue with Boot Hill. <laughs> it's just relics. That's for everybody. Um, Mr. Yang, the person you're looking for, is it Miss Robin? How did you know? Mm, just as I thought. Considering what happened with Miss Firefly, this doesn't come as a surprise. If you're looking for Miss Robin, I can lead the way. She told me that she'd be willing to meet with outside guests. Why is she just here? If it's not too much trouble. Also, we're looking for our missing companions. Um, a woman with red hair accompanied by a girl with pink hair. Can't miss them. You've seen them? Can't miss them. Oh, I... I haven't. You missed them! Please, rest assured. Dream Flux Reef is a small place, and it's not as bustling as the beautiful dream, but its safety is unmatched. Uh, how about this? Since it's your first time here in Dream Flux Reef, I'll be your guide and help you find your companions. And then we can all go visit Miss Robin together. Awesome! She's gone to Mrs. Grace's to visit the children. 
She won't be leaving anytime soon. So there should be enough time. Is Robin just like kind of chilling here? She's just like, you know what? This is chill as fuck. I'm going to sit here. <laughs> All right, then. We'll uh, follow your plan. I don't want to go into the general public. Thank you. Well, we now know the answer to both murder cases that have caused such commotion in Penacone. As for the intentions of the mastermind behind it all, we are still none the wiser. Uh, the visitor from the Oak family is worth learning more about. That name is Sleepy. Uh, no idea. Sleepy! But its connection to Gallagher that's is my, worth that's digging That's my into. input! Regardless, we have to find him. Say, you mentioned before that you saw Clocky that only you could see, right? Well, the only other person that was with me at the time was, uh, was Acheron and Firefly. And, well, we know Acheron doesn't really have that childlike demeanor. And I thought Firefly had that childlike demeanor. But actually, turns out she's a cold-blooded killer. So, yeah, it kind of makes sense why she couldn't see uh, Clocky. Uh... uh I can't shake off this strange feeling. Am I really still so young at heart? Oh, shit. I'm like 80. <laughs> Forget it. It's not important. Uh, we'd better just follow Misha. Stream four. Wait, I'm gonna steal your emotions. Halt! <laughs> I'm gonna take that calm from you. <laughs> it's mine now. <laughs> Everyone, look! From here, you can see the most spectacular view of Dreamflux Reef. All right, not gonna lie. That's pretty. Like that's 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 really pretty. I like that. I like that a lot. Black hole? Oh, don't break it. Don't say it like that. That and makes it not as cool. From People might die. They don't want to die. Was dream oh, so Mr. Yang is also versed in Memoria Dynamics. Yeah. I was just trying to figure out how to explain this huge hole to everyone. I bet you guys have a lot in common with Miss Kami. Who? Oh, I love how like Black Swan still has that accidental uh, activation that I included on her, and it's it's just been here since the start of this uh, stream, and it, or video depends on how we're watching how what format we're watching this in. Wait a second, this isn't your song! <laughs> Look, there she is! Wait, no, this is more important. My calculations are finally done. Oh no, not point Dexter. Another ten system hours? Shit! The above dream will swallow the dream below. My hypothesis was correct. This place will cease to exist as the dream devours everything. Oh no, not point Dexter. Are you all and why haven't you left yet? I don't know. This place is about to disappear. Why are you still what are you what are you doing out here? I'm Kami, a dreamscape surveyor specializing in memoria dynamics. Mm -hmm. And this is my life's work that I'm researching. And I'm soon to be dead. See that huge gaping hole? I do. It was just a narrow rift many years ago. Oh. But now it's grown into a giant hole. I see that. The surrounding memoria has been flowing towards the other end of the hole at a constant velocity, slowly but surely. I want to go touch it. <laughs> but the scary part is, according to my calculations, the flow rate of memoria has recently changed. And it's faster than ever before. It's almost... Almost as if something is sucking it in from the other side. I want to go touch it. By constantly improving upon Madame Rosalina's memoria measurement method, I've finally obtained accurate results. Then we could go touch it? After ten system hours, the Dreamflux Reef will cease to exist. Just like the melting of glaciers, everything will crumble and disintegrate. Dreams on that side of the void will fuse into one. That means I get to touch it. 
Uh, please don't worry. This sort of thing has happened many times before. Miss Amy isn't a bad person. She's just a bit... Crazy? Lost in her own world. Has she touched it? She'll probably realize she's wrong soon enough. <laughs> you don't say. There was a, something else that piqued my interest. Who is Madame Rosalina? Oh, do you know her too? No. Or are you also a fan of Memoria Dynamics? Just fucking tell me. We're very interested in Madame Rosalina. Yes, yes, she very interested. So very, could very, you absolutely. tell us a little more about them? Tell us everything. Because I don't know jack sh I mean, I know everything. Let's talk about it. You first. And then we go touch the black hole. Why, of course. She's an excellent scholar of Memoria Dynamics and the first person to apply Memoria Rate Measurement Methodology on interstellar travelers. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. Anything else? Regrettably, due to the presence of the Garden of Recollection, ordinary people don't pay much attention to the nature of Memoria. Black Swan. Got she it. departed this world without much fame. Mm -hmm. Leaving only a few thin journals behind. Wait, so she's dead? I came to Metacone to learn more about my Shut up back there! and went to great lengths to seek out Dreamflux Reef. All because this is her final resting place. Prodigies always meet their demise prematurely. If only Madame Rosalina had more time, she would have discovered a way to reverse the flow of memoria. I felt it. The source is in... The golden hour. There is a certain anomalous presence stirring the currents of the memory zone. I must uncover more concrete proof. I must convince everyone. Does the name Madame Rosalina sound familiar to you? Who? Before we came to Penaconi, the conductor had given us a list of nameless to look into. Her name was mentioned. Bro, that was Seems like four like months she ago. Did a great deal of research. Miss Candy regularly mentions her. I hear Madame Rosalina passed away during the prison war. <sighs> she could see the Pentacony of today. It's people building homes in the memory zone. <laughs> I bet she'd be really happy. Perhaps. Our destination is the commercial district. That's where the largest crowds gather in Dreamflux Reef. We might be able to find the... Why are you still singing? It's not your song! Scream for Wait. I found someone. Let me go. I found someone. Please, come to your senses. I'm begging you. Pink! Pink woman. Ghost! There's a ghost! Don't come near me! Oh my. I'm human and so are you. Can you get a grip? Where's the red one? Uh, Mr. Yang and Miss Trailblazer, I've been waiting for you. What? <laughs> Miss Trail? That's not my name. Quickly, come help! <laughs> I bumped into. I'll the have you know, I name is Courtness. You will so recognize. I was scared, and I just wanted to calm him down, but let me go. Let me go. I've only done good in my life. Why can't I rest in peace after death? All right, Bar Barge, we gotta go. This Lots, he's a lost cause. Well, this is how it turned out. The fuck did you do to him? Now you shall pay respect to March 7th! The ghost of Dreamflux Reef! Uh, me? A ghost? Don't make me hit you. You're a ghost! He thinks he's dead. Although, when I first fell in, I also thought the same. Oh, don't worry. We're not dead. We're maybe dead. Dear guest, this is not the afterlife. This is Dreamflux Reef. That's right. Did you hear that? Repeat after me. Dreamflux Reef. With a capital... Oh no, I can't spell. You... You're talking to someone invisible. If I'm not dead, what am I? <laughs> I shouldn't have pushed my luck and tried sleeping in my dream. Curiosity kills a papushi. Hold on. 
Oh, uh, hold on. You just don't see me. You don't see Misha? Oh, no. That's not good. That's not good. He, he's kind of needed. Oh, shit. Stop asking! You'll alert the monsters! All the dead are right here. You don't here. see the blue-haired... All of them! You don't, you don't see the Farina look-alike next... No? Oh, no. That's not good. Oh, that's not good at all. Shit. Uh, you're not talking about the memory zone meme, are you? <laughs> Don't say that name! It's all your fault. They're coming! Sleepy? Oh no, Sleepy! <laughs> Alright, cool. Are beneath the water lies an endless abyss. Bye, have a great time. Alright, cool, bye bye. Yep, yeah, here we go. One. Yeah. It happened so suddenly. He passed out. His intense negative emotions attracted the nearby memory zone memes. It's okay. He's he'll be fine. He'll wake up. He'll wake up in two system hours. It's fine. I see. But why aren't the other people around here scared? Uh, because we're the only ones who saw them. Actually, March. Actually, we're fucking insane. The, the collection of us five only saw that. So we looked like lunatics. Smack in thin air. I think we may have also hit the child in the process of that. Ooh, that's not good. Unlike in the sweet dream, people here don't see memory zone memes as dangerous monsters. And even if they pose a threat, people can easily escape by forcing a wake-up call. I see. But we can't just leave this man here. Can we take him somewhere safe? No, no, he has to stay here. It's, it's part of the script. <laughs> we can ask Jesse for help. I've gotten to know many locals while waiting for you guys. How long have you been here? Everyone here is living a self-sufficient life. I don't know how to describe it, but this place feels like the real dreamscape. <gasps> Hello. Your hair color because my eyes see all. No. The hot steam uh, from under the manhole cover envelops you. Who are you? Where are you going? What pain is there in life? What suffering is there in death? This must be one of the mysterious seven manhole covers. The manhole cover of Nihility. Motherfucker! I swear to God. If we start having an obsession with manhole colors and trash cans, this has got to be the best goddamn game I've ever played. Just say it now. The family will be done for. Oh, done don't. For. Oh, shut up. It'll be fine. I just got to do something quickly, okay? There we go. Just dispatch again. Okay. Good. Uh, oh, right. I got some of those uh, things. All right. Marge, I think you're done. You're done, Marge. You're done. Oh, my God. My You've done it. Coming to life. It's not. <laughs> In the obscure prophecy of dream, a star from the heavens has enlightened my path. Excellent. Anyways, you... How? Serving under the Ten Lords as a judge of souls, I did that not. come to the world of the living to enforce their will. I did not just e six this character. Serving under the Ten Lords as a judge of souls. Nope, I did. Come to the world of the living to enforce their will. <sighs> Neat. Thank you, Alice. All right, here we go. Back to work. The hot steam from under the manhole cover is silent and stirring. It's protect- Yo, don't- don't step on the manhole cover! Fucking idiot. Could have died. All right, wonderful. This must be the mysterious- mystical seven manhole covers. The manhole cover of preservation. Maybe another time. <laughs> I just want to check something really quick. Jesse. Evening, Jesse. Um, is it evening? Maybe. Welcome, Miss March. Who might these be? These two are my friends. As for the man lying 
lying on the ground. Uh, he's a scaredy cat who fainted from fright. Yep. Before we continue, I just want to check something really quick because I am recording so let me just check E really quickly to make sure it is recording the game audio like I want it to okay it is working awesome that's all I needed that's gonna be a weird jump cut <laughs> <laughs> I see another poor guy who accidentally ended up here I'll take care of them. Cool. Throws them on the table. <laughs> All right. There see ya. There's a lot of new faces lately. Things must be tough in the beautiful dream. Hmm. The few remaining havens of freedom in Asdana will soon face trouble. Do such things often happen here? Yep. Not really, but they're becoming more frequent now. It's kind of weird. I guess it's one of the signs of the sweet dreams collapse. This man has had quite the shock. Could you help me find a Halovian lady march? Her songs can heal mental wounds. Oh, don't worry. I know one. <laughs> hello, Vian Lake. That must be Robin. She's also here in Dreamflux Reef. Uh-huh. Robin? But I thought she... Oh. Right. If Firefly is here safe and sound, then it means Robin must be okay, too. Correct. Beach is about to take to her to find out what happened. But, but before that, let's meet up with him. You were with her earlier. Right. We met in stowaways in the residential area. Most of them came from neighboring star systems. I heard that places like Dreamflux Reef are scattered throughout the memory zone of Asdana. Like islands in the ocean. They existed before the family arrived. I also heard that when Dreamflux Reef took shape, it was the center of all dreamscapes in Anaconi. If that's true, it's no wonder there are so many similarities between the species. Let's go. Hey, treasure. See how you handle a stroke of genius like this. Stream four. Gleam of old place. Do you sell? What do you sell, Nancy? Talk to me. What do you have for sale? What what can I buy from you? Buy! I'm not I really shouldn't be surprised with this one, honestly. I'm I really shouldn't be. Why did I let Firefly buy... Why did I do that? I didn't spend all our 20k creds, by the way. I, 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 I showed mercy. This is where we split up. Yeah, yeah! So that's how it is. I never imagined we'd gather the remaining details here. <laughs> to borrow Gallagher's catchphrase, what an unpredictable twist of fate. That's not his cat. That's not a catchphrase. That's just a saying, dude. Himeko, here they are. Ho oh, ho, excellent. We found Red Woman. Oh, perfect timing. Now that everyone's here, I'd like to introduce everyone to Micah, who's partly in charge of the Land of the Exiles. Micah, these are my companions. Compadres. It's a pleasure to meet the nameless. Hello. You know us? No. I've been keeping an eye on you since the day you arrived in Penacone. The fuck? But we would have met under more appropriate circumstances if Dreamflux Reef hadn't been isolated from the 12 dreamscapes. <sighs> Please, allow me to formally Twelve? introduce myself. I'm I've only Micah, been to three! The Gravekeeper of Dreamflux Reef. Gravekeeper? Life in Dreamflux Reef is pretty liberating. Everyone here mostly keeps to themselves, without meddling in others' affairs. My daily task involves cleaning a few tombstones. You're too modest, Micah. When lost dream chasers stumble upon this place, you're the one who takes care of them, guiding them back to the sweet dream, or showing them how to survive the wild dream chaos. So, a uh, guardian of sorts. Guardian! Hmm? Uh... Were you talking to me, Mr. Yang? Oh, fuck! He knows your name! Mm hmm? Hmm? Uh, 
on that note, Mr. Mika, uh, which tombstones are you referring to? We didn't come across any graveyard when we arrived. <laughs> They're actually just symbolic stones. But since you're curious, Mr. Yang, I'll take you there. I have a feeling you might find something of interest there. Uh, but before that, you have an important guest joining you. I do. An important guest? Who could it be? I would imagine it's probably this Robin. Way, the roads here in Dreamflux Reef are a bit run down, so watch your step. I imagine it's Robin. I can't picture who else it could be, so I'm going to go on a guess and say it's Robin or, for whatever reason, Black Swan got here. I don't know. Disgraceful. Bro, I can see her from here. <laughs> like, you cannot hide. You really need a disguise for everywhere there you go. Is. What's up? Everyone sang so wonderfully. It's not often that I tried this music style, but I've gained some valuable insights from it. Oh, I can't thank you enough, Robin. Well, these thank kids you so have much. made incredible progress in only a few days. Are they actually kids though? But like, cause like we, we've been talking about like these 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 children, but with like these little balls in their head, and they're like, this man passed out. It's like that's child. It was nothing, Grace. I merely taught them how to sing. It was you who brought hope into their lives. Life must be quite difficult for them in reality, I imagine. That's right. That's why they live in the dreams. Whenever it's time to say goodbye to these kids, they're reluctant to leave. But I've explored every corner of Dreamflux Reef. And unfortunately, to I shit's met. about to happen! And they all told me the same thing. This shattered dream is not worth clinging to. That's my, that's my cue that I have to go sing somewhere. Goodbye, people. <laughs> it seems you truly are a child of the Harmony. Yes. Emma and Andy are orphans I took under my wing. Carol there, with her blind eyes, used to work at a nutrition center in the outer ring of Penacone. Uh -huh. And as for Gary, he's been living with autism since That's he my was a man, guy. yeah, Gary! They're not old enough to enter the sweet dream managed by the family. Autism representation, though, that's pretty cool. That's pretty cool, actually. If we compare people to birds, these kids are like fledglings with impaired wings. Dude, that's kind of mean. Dream, <laughs> they can fly freely. Even if they stumble along the way, well, they're still relying on their own strength. Or fine, Mr. Man. And me, an old lady with no legs. Um. Well, without this dream, I couldn't even walk toward them. Oh, oh okay. Right, I'm glad right, that dream. you found a new life here in Penacony. It's just... So, I, I guess, I, I have a question. So, does Gary have autism? Is she blind? And, well, they're still orphans. That, that, that doesn't change. Don't worry, Robin. Dreams have their significance, but they aren't everything. Both the children and I understand this. No matter how long we fly through this dream, we will one day return to reality. But you know what? Emma and Gary aren't plagued by their insecurities anymore. No. And Carol is learning how to cope with her blindness. She's doing and great. And Andy is livelier than ever. Well, even I've become more optimistic. Until I wake up and realize, fuck, still can't walk. You see, in dreams, we learn how to live. Once we return to reality, we learn how to survive. And should our feathers be damaged, then we share our wings with one another. Couldn't have said it better myself. Th There's thank you. no need to covet an illusory sky in dreams. Because we have the right and the ability to fly towards a broader horizon. It's a relief to see you safe and sound, Miss Robin. Who are you? <laughs> it's nice to see you all again, Astral Express crew. Ah, oh, she remembers I us. I heard my disappearance caused quite the commotion out there. I'm really sorry about that. Your disappearance looked like a murder scene, I'm just going to say. <laughs> Since you're here, can we assume that you're fully aware of the situation in Penacony? No. Ever since I returned to Penacony, 
my voice started to change until it gradually faded away. At first, I thought it was a temporary ailment. Hmm. Perhaps due to having been away too long. I thought maybe it just takes some time for my body to acclimate to the high concentration of Memorian as Donna. Of course, right. But now it seems the root of the problem goes way beyond me. Way. There are elements around me that don't align with the harmony. Hmm. And losing my voice is just one of the signs of the sweet dream's collapse. Well, it's bound to happen eventually, you know. We'll just make a new one. It's dreams. They're not real. The sweet dream's collapse. That memo keeper mentioned the same thing. So it's real. Okay, listen. I don't think Black Swan's just going to be like, hey, by the way, fuck it. While I was away from Pentagoni, the boundaries of the 12 dreamscapes kept expanding outward. But whenever I mentioned the anomalies in my dreams, all the family heads refused to talk about it. Only my brother was willing to respond. Well, he's, he's, he's kind of family, huh? Later, I discovered the secret letters from the IPC ambassador, which further convinced me that there are hidden secrets beneath the surface of Pentaconi. So, following the clues in the Oak family's dossiers, I found my way here, the land of the exiles. Okay. Concealed by the family under the guise of death. A dream within a dream. Penaconi's past is buried. So, did you like willingly want to come here? Is that why you you, you looked like you had you had a murder scene? Hearing you speak, it sounds as if your voice has made somewhat of a recovery. I hate to admit it, but the harmony in this place resonates more broadly than within the sweet dream. It's regrettable, but the family has experienced betrayal. The traitor, or traitors, abandoned their original principles and. Using the name of Harmony, exploited people's weaknesses to turn Penaconi into the planet of festivities, trapping everyone in the illusion of the sweet dream. Dude, this is your home. This is not the strong defending. Well, it's not your home, home, but. But rather the strong exploiting the weak. A world without equality won't ever be favored by the Harmony. And naturally, those voices blessed by them have lost the ability to sing. Well, that's not good. Could there be another force influencing the family's shift in philosophy, Miss Robin? Yes. Considering what happened with Acheron, it's difficult to conceive of another entity within the realm of the Harmony capable of influencing everyone. Unless a power surpassing that of an emanator is involved. To be fair, I think it was recently revealed that Black Swan is also an emanator. So we have... Two emanators floated around. That's fun. I'd heard about what happened to the Sienjo Alliance. But as far as I'm aware, the family hasn't faced any such external interventions. Who knows? Perhaps I've just been away too long and missed something. Regardless, I cannot accept my home is moving towards the very opposite of what the Harmony represents while still claiming to uphold it. Okay, so it is your home. Okay, cool. Glad, glad we've established. I must uncover the reason why Mikhail cut ties with the family and who exactly it was who betrayed us all. Do you remember our arrangement, Mr. Micah? Mm-hmm. Okay. Well, here's my answer. I've decided to forgo my role and never step foot on the Charmony Festival stage again. Hmm. Well, that's not good. <laughs> Eleven hours, eleven system hours, and she has decided no. <laughs> Look here, brother. A little bird. It's a bird. Looks like a fledgling Charmony dove, but Charmony doves don't live here. So how did this little bird get here? Maybe its parents abandoned it. It looks weak and frail. Why don't we find something soft and make a nest for it? This place is too dangerous for a fledgling. Let's take it with us. We can put it on the wooden shelf in front of your window. Okay. A bird like that must have a beautiful singing voice. But where will it live? I'll ask the family head to build a cage for it. A cage? But 
Then I won't have the freedom to fly. Right? Let's see. What is it that has captured the attention of the two best interpreters of the Great One? To the point that they've forgotten how to enjoy their dessert. It's the bird! Oh, poor little thing. Doesn't look like it's doing well. Do you want to rescue it? Why do you sound like that? I do. But I don't want to lock it up in a cage. Why? Even if it's small and not fully feathered, and can't sing, it didn't come into this world just to be locked up in a cage. Birds. They should be flying free in the sky. That's quite the romantic idea. And what about you, a young scholar? Do you agree with your sister? This is the moment of truth. Is Sunday cool? I think she's right. Let's fucking go! If we leave it out in the wild, it won't survive for more than a few days at best. You fucking tool! Ah, I see. It seems our little scholar is still a bit unsure. Well, let me tell you youngsters a story. Okay, but can you not sound like that? Thank you. As you probably know, Charmony doves can fly through the air. When they fly really high, the friction caused by the flapping of their feathers against the atmosphere creates amazing lights so that they look like shooting stars. Okay, I should have let him talk more because he's like, they can fly through the air. It's like, yeah. A good majority of birds can fly. Some can, but a good majority of them can. We've seen this spectacle so many times that we think it's just something they can naturally do. But that's not the truth. Their radiant display is the result of countless struggles against nature over generations. Their ancestors were too weak to survive on the ground. So, to escape predators, they started seeking new opportunities in the air. As birds do. A majority of them do. Not all of them, but a good majority of them. After countless attempts by many generations, one of them finally figured out how to fly. It soared into the sky and never looked back at the ground again. So, like a, like a dodo bird, but... The dodo bird never got past that step, you know? Like, the dodo bird was just... That fucker couldn't figure it out. And before he knew it, dead. Gone. Extinct. Dead. That thing looks stupid anyway, so... Probably for the best. So... You mean... Birds aren't born to fly. Editing me! Put a fucking they picture of a dodo bird right on screen. Yeah, look at that disgusting ass thing. Right? Yeah. Good thing that's not real. Well, that's an idealistic way of putting it. So, what are your thoughts, Sunday? I... I... I think people believe birds are meant to fly because... they've never seen those birds crashing to their death. Correct. That's an interesting perspective. So, have you decided what to do with the bird now? For now... I'll keep it in a cage until it can take care of itself, because I... I want it to live. No matter what. Fair. Well said, kids. It seems each of you has found your own answer. Your insights are truly remarkable. And I hope they come true in their own way. We will take good care of it, won't we, brother? Yeah, but Mr. Gopherwood, there's one thing I don't quite understand. Why is your name Gopherwood? And what might that be, my son? What if this little Charmony dove never learns to fly in the end? Free bird! I mean, if there are fledglings in this world that can never fly throughout their lives, should we let them go back to the sky? Only to see them crash to the ground and die. Free bird. That's a good song. Free bird. 
talking in your sleep, Birdie? <laughs> Time to wake up. I don't trust like that. <sighs> huh? <laughs> Need a hand? I'm still alive? Yeah. Happy about that. Where is Robin? Tell me. Now. <laughs> I knew that was going to be the first thing you'd ask. Don't worry, your sister is here, safe and sound. She's probably walking around the streets now. If I were you, I'd be more worried about myself. <laughs> After all, right in front of you is the guy who just stabbed you in the chest with a dagger. And <laughs> I use Sleepy to do it. If you wanted to kill me, you wouldn't give me the chance to speak. Just tell me your demands, lackey of the Watchmaker. So, you figured out who I am, huh? Damn, that was fast. No wonder you had the guts to go against the Dream Master and the Four Families. Looks like I made the right choice. Choice? You are aware of my plan and see through my act. Time is running out, so let's drop the charades. I'm suggesting we cooperate. I just stabbed you, but hey, by the way, let's work together. Just ignore the fact that I did stab you earlier. Cooperate? What makes you think I'd cooperate with you? Proper answer. Hmm. The fact that the famous Robin has chosen my side. Plus, some clues about a traitor and a bright future for Penacone. Any of that catch your interest? I find it hard to believe a man who's full of deception. Fine. You don't have to trust me. What you should trust is the sense of justice inside of you. <sighs> Breathing sounds. Show me Robin first. All right, as you wish. Here she is. Huh? No, that's Firefly. <laughs> no, that's the other one. What's your trick this time? <laughs> Just kidding. I mean, this lady will lead us to Robin, right? Fuck you. And the crew, too. There are too many people who you owe an explanation. Like, why the fuck did you stab me? What the fuck did I do? <laughs> That'd be great. Please follow me, Honorable Oak Family Head. Now, all the actors are on the stage. Moments later, because none of them are controllable except Gallinger, and we are not controlling Gallinger. This is the monument I mentioned earlier. The name's inscribed on it. Should be familiar to all of you. Rosalina and... Yep. Tiernan. When Penacone was known as a frontier prison, it was the trailblazers who connected it with the stars. They were the heroes who saved us, Donna, and their names deserve to be immortalized. Not just on this small stone tablet, but in the annals of history for all of time. However, today, the planet of festivities is nothing but sweet dreams. That heavy piece of history is all a distant memory. Just like that prison. If their names are inscribed here, then that means... According to Micah, they died long ago. Yep, long time. They've been dead. Rosalina was killed during the War of Independence. She ventured alone into the heart of the star system to investigate the flow of memoria. Oh, I can't do that. <laughs> I was going to be like, alright, I'm going to stand for a little bit. I'm like... Can't do that without some adjustments. Tiernan was a skilled gunslinger, strong and reliable. He led the people through countless battles, but he didn't live long enough to witness the arrival of true peace. In the decade following the war, Penacone faced challenges internal and external. To protect Asdana, Tiernan took up the way of the Trailblaze and led the Lampmoth family to explore beyond the system only to be surrounded and wiped out by the swarm the swarm though i had expected as much the tales of these heroes truly are sorrowful true to the title of trailblazer they spent their lives venturing into the unknown but what about this tablet there when dreamflux reef was created its owner was still alive however he insisted on erecting a monument for himself, saying that it will happen someday. Here we meet again. Everyone from the Astral Express. Robin. They're o she's okay. There's a lot of people here. 
Holy shit. I got a lot of people to talk. Why are you st Wait. Oh, yeah. Okay. Anyways. Um, no, 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 no. All right. We're going to start with you two. Brother. There's no need for words. You're safe. And that's all that matters. All right. Cool. I figured that was what it was going to be. Wait. What if I switch to Robin? Brother. I am. No yep. For yep. I figured. Okay. Cool. Well, I did my job. I gathered everyone here. Gallagher will explain the rest to you. Take care. Peace. Me, Misha. Huh. The atmosphere sure is livened up with all these people in here. Yeah, this kid really doesn't know the room going on right now, does he? I brought Gallagher here. It's time to face the truth. Oh. All right, Gallinger, it's time to face the truth. What's happening? I promised to give the siblings some privacy, so let's talk about our business first. What do you say? That sounds sensible enough. Since you went through the trouble of gathering the family head, the crew, and the Stellaron hunters, I'm guessing you have something important to say, Mr. Gallagher? Oh, is it that obvious? Yep. The look on your face is practically screaming, I'm the one behind all this. <laughs> You're right, Mr. Yang. It is indeed time to come clean on everything. Okay, seriously, I, I can't read you. The siblings already know what they need to, and they've made their choice. But you, Nameless, arrived a bit late. Okay. So it's only fair that I answer your questions. Okay. Before we begin, let me reintroduce myself. I'm the founder of Dream Flux Reef. Okay. The deputy of the Watchmaker. All right. And the one who sent out that invitation. Oh, fuck you. As Gallagher, the history fictionologist, I humbly extend my greetings to you all. Why are you a four star? History fictionologist? So what? Everything you told us was made up? Well, don't worry. Almost everything I shared was true. Well, except for the part about the family accepting me back. I double-checked with Micah, and everything he said about the family, the Watchmaker, and Mikhail is true. Thank and you he's also 13. Now let's get down to business. I'm sure you're all wondering why I went through the trouble of setting up this battle for the legacy. Inviting different factions, and stirring up a ruckus all over Penacone. Well, it all boils down to something very familiar to all of you. The Stellaron. It's in me. The Stellaron? I got that dog. But how is that possible? Penicone is a free-flowing interstellar hub. There are no signs of contamination whatsoever. You're totally correct. So, care to take a guess at what that means? It's in me. Someone is manipulating the Stellaron? <laughs> how keen. Well, what should I say? I expected nothing less from the person here who is the most familiar with the Stellarons. That's me. I got it in me. The sweet dream doesn't come out of thin air. If you think of the memory zone as the sea, creating the land of the dreams is like filling that wild ocean with earth to make an island. Mm -hmm. To achieve this feat, without the help of an emanator of remembrance or enigmata, the only way is to use a stellar one. All right, March, it's time to become a remembrance. All right, me. And that's not something you can achieve with a simple wish. It requires vast quantities of knowledge, time, and manpower. I'm sure you get what I'm hinting at. I can assure you, I have none of that. So, next. In Azdana, the planet of festivities itself is a Stellaron disaster. Huh? Uh, the planet of festivities itself is a Stellaron disaster? It all started a long time ago, back when the Watchmaker and his crew liberated the Frontier Prison. They faced countless challenges as they began building Penacone from the ground up. That's when the idea of using the Stellaron came into play. The Stellaron first entered the Azdana system during the war. The Nameless warned everyone against the folly of attempting to tamper with such a power. And most heeded their words. Mm -hmm. 
But there are always people in the shadows with ulterior motives. The turning point came after Tiernan's death. With two of the Nameless gone, the Watchmaker had to go to the front lines. It was at that moment his rivals saw an opportunity. By the time a representative from the Montour system's family arrived at the Watchmaker's call, the Stellaron had already been activated and was seeping into the primordial synesthesia dreamscape. I'm sorry, did you, did you get that? Did you finish that? And I suppose the family happened to possess the knowledge to seal the Stellaron? Not just that. They knew far more about the Stellaron than the average person. Huh? They helped Mikhail swiftly quell the civil unrest and played a part in building Penacone under the disguise of the Harmony. Whoa. Those three eras were known as the Age of Dreaming. The Watchmaker, who had been left in the dark, sent out invitations across the universe, spreading the hype around the land of the dreams. Then... How did they turn against each other? It's a good question. Remember the island in the ocean metaphor? Mm -hmm. The truth is, the Stellaron was never truly sealed. Oh, it existed that's not in good. a different form within the dreamscape. Think about this. What would it cost to create and maintain such a lavish dreamland? You know, it, it's interesting that they say this because, you know, we're. Our story always has to involve a Stellaron in some way. And we're just like, let's go to Penacone. We got invited to go to Penacone. There's no reason to go to Penacone. We're just at Penacone. So it, it kind of makes sense that uh, we got invited because of a Stellaron. Oh, God damn it. We're working all the time. It's people's lives. The opulent dream is built upon the decay of spirits with a toxic elixir called pleasure flowing through the dreamscape. It tempts people to indulge in the dreamscape and gradually their minds succumb, becoming nourishment for the sweet dream. Confusion, laziness, and cowardice, weaknesses that plague humanity were magnified and nourished by the family. Panacone became a new kind of prison, even more impenetrable than the previous one. Sadly, we realized this far too late. By then, the family had a firm grip on Penacone, swiftly quelling any opposition that arose. At my wit's end, I had to use the power of the Enigmata and sought refuge oh, in this can't chaotic say long, realm. But hope you're enjoying the update. Over the years, it's a, it's I created a, good story a meme so within far. this dream for really our good. use. How are you doing, Hal? Hope you're doing well. Dormancy. That's its real name. Okay. We exploited a loophole. You see, regular people can't fall asleep again while they are inside the dreamscape. So, this is the true meaning of the impossible. You sent out invitations in the Watchmaker's name to find forces capable of resolving the Stellaron disaster and draw them into Penacone to uncover the truth. Yeah. It's not just that. Above all, I wanted to see what happens when the major factions engage in a struggle for the legacy. Since this is the Watchmaker's first announcement in decades, the traitor within the family is bound to reveal themselves. I'm alright, I'm finally able to talk to her after my first shit. New chat box is me. I know, I really like this fucking chat box. This thing's fucking awesome. So, the legacy is just a facade. Hmm. <laughs> if you want to consider the Stellaron as the legacy, I'm totally fine with that. If that's and the case, walk normal, not talk. where is the Stellaron now? I'm good at reading. I can read. That's a question for Mr. Wings. Oh. Stellaron is still under the family's control, and as the head of the Oak family, I'm sure he holds all the answers. Everyone just like fucking turns, just like. Words! Speaketh now, bird! Alright, Firefly. As I suspected, the core of this issue lies within. The Stellaron. Because of course it fucking does. Might as well call this honk guy Stellaron. <laughs> you all look quite serious. Is there anything I can do to help? Eat the Stellaron. Eat it. All right, bird. <laughs> Are you done talking? So, will you tell us where the Stellaron is? <laughs> it is the Penacone Grand Theater itself. Well, that was easy. <laughs> I 
As I suspected. It's the embodiment of the family. The edifice that first materialized within the Sweet Dream. That's what turned Penacony into its current state. As for the person who employed its power, it is in fact Mr. Gopherwood, the current Dream Master. Yay! Well, that was easier than I thought. Yeah, well, a little Did too you easy. Actually. Your own investigation already? Correct. When I was trying to track down the person who murdered my sister, apart from you, Gopherwood was my second suspect. The fact that your first suspect was actually correct is actually surprising, but also the fact is she was not murdered. So. Confronting me first turned out to be a smart move on your part. I didn't have other options. The Dream Master has been elusive, and even the heads of the families can hardly get an audience with him. Guys, do you see that over there? Do you see that? Over there. Like, I, I can't reach over there because there's a cutoff here where my hand, there's a treasure chest right there. I want it. I'm going to go get it now. Goodbye. Moreover, Mr. Gopherwood has been kind to my sister and me. And I didn't want it all to end like this. But now it's gonna have to, bro. What do you mean by that? To be honest, my brother and I are also victims of the cancer of all worlds. Don't tell him about my. We grew up as orphans and were adopted me. by the family when they came to help. Mr. Gopher Wood recognized our potential and brought us to Penacony. But I can't just stand by and watch Mr. Gopher Wood become an enemy of the Harmony. I won't use my voice to support an evil cause. I won't step on that stage and sing. No matter what! No matter who the traitor is, or what orders they give me. I won't let the Charmony Festival become an event that destroys Harmony itself. I won't do it! For the paradise in our dreams. Indeed. For the paradise in our dreams. As the head of the Oak family, I'm responsible for ensuring Penacony's promising future. Robin and I will head into the sweet dream and confront the Dream Master. And if it turns out that the family has truly strayed from the Harmony, I'll fight alongside you. We'll put the Charmony Festival on hold and make sure Mr. Gopherwood pays for his blood debt. So, Gallinger had to kill a lot of fucking people in order to get us together to discuss about business. Bro, you could have just invited us to coffee or something, you know? Like, just been like, hey, I'm having coffee! You want to come get some coffee? <laughs> come get some coffee! No, you killed three people! The enemies you are about to face aren't like this old dog here, who can barely even bark. Since our interests are aligned, why don't we team up? Maybe, just... We have always been following in the footsteps of our nameless predecessors. And there's no reason to stop now. So we are leaving. Goodbye. Hey, yeah, we nameless won't back down from a challenge. Oh, right, yeah. Mm -hmm. Isn't that yep. right, Miss Trailblazer? Yep, mm -hmm. yep, that's that's right. Mm -hmm. Not going home. Peace was never an option. Exactly. It's time for the crew to save the world once more. God damn it! Can we have a vacation? Rest assured, sitting on the sidelines isn't in our nature. Mr. Sunday, Miss Robin, I'm willing to accompany you on behalf of the Astral Express. Only because a third party I really could murder somebody if I really wanted to. And could make all the difference if things get ugly. Thank you, Mr. Yang. Thank you all very much. We'll go get that treasure chest over there. The Charmony Festival is about to start, and time is against us. We must hasten. All right. Everyone, let's gather over here. We still need to make some preparations. Nope, 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 nope. No, 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 no. I'll come back. I, I will be back. But business is business at the end of the day. Hua needed her chest. Yeah. Excellent. Hello. I may have been quick to step up to the plate, but 
Confronting the Dream Master could be a very dangerous affair. So I am willing to step into this and kill him. That is all. Goodbye. Uh huh? Even you're saying that, Mr. Yang? Uh, uh, how powerful is that Dream Master? Not as powerful as me, bitch. See you soon. <laughs> He's the leader of the families of Penacony, and he has the entire power of the harmony behind him. Not to mention the Stellaron in his possession. We must proceed with great caution. I got a Stellaron too. You, come with me. <laughs> Maybe you can just stay behind this time, Mr. Yang? Nope. No, that won't do. Even if we count Robin as an ally, something felt off about Mr. Sunday just now. Oh. Although I can't quite put Why my is on Mr. It. Yang like. I have to make sure he won't turn against us when things start to get dicey. Like, Mr. Yang's just like. I don't trust him still. I really don't. So I'm, I'm gonna have to accompany. You're still Robin? carrying the keepsake the IPC envoy gave you, right? May I borrow it for a moment? Oh yeah, sure, here you go. Oh. Yeah. Huh. I knew it. Uh, what do you need As for? I suspected, this chip Aventurine gave to you is actually a miniature transmitter. God damn it! If I'm right, he intends to use it to track your location or contact you when needed. As it so happens, this may actually be of some use in the current situation. Oh, cool. So is Aventurine dead or at least roaming the, the plane of Nihility? Or where is he now? Aventurine? Is he still alive? No idea. And what does he have to do with our mission to confront the Dream Master? No idea. Remember what I said earlier? Working with the IPC is a way to keep the family in check. If negotiations go south and the family show their true colors by going after the Stellaron, I'll use this transmitter to send a message to the IPC. It'll be just the opportunity the IPC ambassador was hoping for. Oh, so we're helping the government. Got it. The only question mark in all of this is Aventurine's current status. But the IPC is always listening, especially senior strategic investment department heads like him. Getting the message across shouldn't be a problem. Good luck to you, Welt. Well, you take care too. If anything goes wrong, don't worry about me. Just make sure to seal the Stellaron. Not Spoken gonna happen. like a true hero. Well, that's just, that's Mr. Man. Even if the Dream Master is innocent, the family's corruption runs deep. I won't make the same mistake Mikhail did. Let's wish him the best of luck. Yeah! Don't you have something else to tell us, Gallagher? Yeah, like, why did you kill people? You could've just invited us to coffee. Why would you say so? Before we departed, the conductor asked us to inquire about the three nameless in Penacony. We've already collected intel about Rosalina and Tiernan. Dead. So the only one left is Lakework. Dead. If I'm not mistaken, we've already met him somewhere. Not dead. We? Hmm. It's not enough to say meat, but the answer is pretty obvious. After all, I've hinted at it in quite an evident way. I've been watching over you ever since I received the reply from the Astral Express, and I've seen the great effort you all put into linking different realms together across the cosmos. Yes. And now, after getting this far all in one piece, you have truly proven yourselves. Miss Himiko, were you the one who repaired the Express and got it sailing through the cosmos again? Lore drop! Let's go! Yes. Let's fucking go! <laughs> and you two, young Nameless, you have very interesting life stories and extraordinary skills. Got a Stellaron in me. <laughs> oh, you're making me blush with all these flatteries. <laughs> about my life story. I don't know shit. But I do have <laughs> extraordinary skills. I have a Stellaron in me. <laughs> <laughs> You're full of energy. Please send my regards to the conductor, Pom Pom. Oh, yeah. Please let them know that their friend had fond memories from his time aboard the Express, which he reminisce on every time he had a good drink. As for the last nameless, he embarked, disembarked, and embarked again. Oh. Traveling a in a great circle, 
ending up back where he started. On his deathbed, he told me to find the Astral Express and deliver an invitation to the future Nameless. He left behind a special gift, a true legacy. Oh. Something that belongs only to the successors of the Trailblaze. Come with me. Now is the time to reveal it. I love this lore. Oh, it's right over here, of course. Uh, back here again. Sometimes I feel like you're still alive, old friend. Like you've still got so much to say and do. Whoa. He left his relic set. Oh, how nice of him. I've kept my promise. Brought the oh, future hey, Firefly, it's good to see you again. So long for. Welcome back. I don't know why you were so obsessed with that train. But I remember your last words. Don't let us down, old man. All right, let's find out. Cutscene? Cutscene? Uh, Cutscene! The ground is moving. We're getting taller. Or the villains are going down. It, it could be one of those. Oh, nope, nope, they are getting taller. He left that behind! <laughs> Go ahead. His resting place lies in the garden up ahead. That better not be the Garden of Recollection. The first and last nameless of Penacony, Mikhail Char Legworth, the watchmaker. Holy fuck! Up. Oh. Up. Oh, okay. The staircase is here now. Everyone all right? Oh, look, the black hole. I want to go touch it. Yeah. Huh. Yeah. <gasps> Must kill. Huh. Hold on. Yeah. Yeah. Chest. Yeah. like credits do I have right now? Oh, I got a lot. That's pretty cool. Wait a second. I just saw a number. Yeah. Wow, what an absolute waste of time. Is that adventuring? Uh, the garden. Elder no, that's not adventuring. Has passed into the endless, timeless dream where no sound could ever awaken. Sure enough. Oh. The watchmaker nope. is the third nameless. Yep. Even I could guess that one. Well, how? The legacy he left behind was a dream bubble. I believe inside that bubble, there's something that holds meaning only for the nameless. Why would I think it's adventuring? You're a fucking idiot. After all. When I checked its contents, I found nothing inside. Maybe some trailblaze runes? Well, let's have a look. Let's defile the, the dead body. As the word sees, Himiko nods ever so slightly in your direction. You take a deep breath, steady your mind, and you gaze towards the watchmaker. We touch the dream bubble. You press your hands against the dream bubble and the thick, vicious the memoria converses under strain, then stretches outward from your fingertips. As if weaving a delicate web, it generally cradles your palm. This is fucking weird. A chill travels through your, from your fingertips, carrying with it a myriad of vibrant and intertwined memories, as experience would suggest. Please do not 
get mad at me if I butcher a word. I'm just but me. But this time, you see nothing at all. Try and focus and capture the memory. The dream bubble is clearly extraordinary. Perhaps the approach was wrong, you think, holding your breath and closing your eyes. With one knee on the ground, you press your forehead against the thin film coated in memoria. Yet before you, there seems to be an abyss of darkness. No crimson sun descending upon snow-capped mountains. No gentle laughter. No twinkling stars. No echoes of swords clashing. And most of all, no traces of trailblaze. There is nothing. And nothing is there. Indubitably. Oh no, that's a word I can't say really well. This is but an empty dream bubble. Wait, what's going on? It's got nothing to it, bro. Seriously? Uh, there's nothing inside this dream bubble? It must have evaporated. Hmm. How could a dream bubble be empty? Evaporated. <laughs> Just as I suspected. What do you mean? That old man always had this strange belief in the nameless and the trailblaze. And I never understood where he got that confidence from. Especially since he never managed to get in touch with the Express while he was alive. I could never figure out what was going on in that old man's head. But this empty dream bubble is so typical of him. He was always full of weird fantasies and incomprehensible romanticism. Oh, is that so? <laughs> mischievous old man. Well, I didn't expect him to leave anything concrete behind anyway. Don't think that's the case, Gallagher. I'm sure Mikhail Bert. has left us the most precious thing of all. <laughs> Don't start getting all philosophical on me, alright? The power of friendship! Just as Mikhail believes in the nameless of the future, we unconditionally believe in the nameless of the past. How could they leave with regrets for the future when they were ready to dedicate their lives to the land they loved? There must be something contained in this dream bubble. Friendship? It's just we haven't figured it out yet. Oh, okay. You I, guess also I guess we're just not friends. In the watchmaker. It's fine. Don't you, Gallagher? It's just, I guess we're just not friends. It's fine. It's fine. It's fine. It's fine. Well, I'm a follower of the Enigmata. My philosophy forbids me to have faith in anything. That's why I understand what faith means in the path of Trailblaze. And I also want to know what he left behind. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'll leave it to you guys then. Hmm. I fucking hate you. Can I borrow your pet? I need to make a trip back to Golden Hour and check something at the Dreamscape Space. Sleepy! <laughs> it's for Mikhail and for the future of Penacony. Oh, it is Boot Hill! All right! Welcome to the Reverie Hotel. How may I help you? I need to get into the dreamscape! <laughs> Greetings. We're the Nameless from the Astral Express, and we'd like to check in. The Astral Express? But I thought... Yes, my companions already checked in. My name is Dan Hung, and I believe my personal information is recorded in your system. I see. But your companion said you wouldn't be coming due to a change of plans. <laughs> now the plans have changed again. And you are... Bob. My name is Bob. Me? Uh, I'm... Pom Pom. Uh, Very convincing. Was also with the Astral Express. Very convincing. <clears throat> He's my fellow trailblazer. We responded to the family's invitation before he boarded the express, so he wasn't registered in your system. <clears throat> Is it possible to accommodate him as well? Oh, I see. Another one of the Nameless had a similar situation. Seems like a lot of people are joining the Trailblaze these days. Y yeah! Since there's a precedent, it shouldn't be a problem. Just give me a second to contact your companions. Hmm, the line seems to be busy. I'm sorry, dear guests, but it seems I'm unable to reach the other members of the Astral Express. Let me try again. Nope, still nothing. What 
do you mean by unable to reach them? It means the line's busy. My apologies. This is the first time I've encountered a situation like this. However, the system indicates that those guests are still in the dreamscape. Hold on, let me try again. Nope, still not there. How about this? Give me their room number, and we'll go check on them ourselves. I'm afraid that's not possible. I need to verify both of your identities before I can share any guest information. Shit. Well, I mean, Don Hunk's kind of covered, but him not so much. How about you just wake up someone? Let's say, uh, Wilt. I'm sorry, but there are strict rules regarding forced awakening. It cannot be done without the proper clearance. So nothing works, huh? What's your solution then? Are you saying we sleep here? At the reception? Please be patient. We need to contact your companions in order to confirm your identities. Let's try again. Nope, still nothing. And now it seems you need to confirm our identities before you can contact our companions. <sighs> it seems so. Wow, what a weird conundrum we're stuck in here right now. Well, guess we leave. <sighs> Fudge! Look, nothing personal, but if you can't handle this, go find someone else who can, okay? So, this is the the definition of I would like to speak to your manager. Uh, please calm down, dear guests. I do recall that Mr. Sunday, the Oak family head, personally handled this issue earlier. Oh, please wait a moment while I contact him. I don't think she's trying to give us a hard time. She really just doesn't know what to do. Nope, still nothing. Uh, I have a bad feeling about this. You tried to contact them on the express earlier, but they didn't respond. <sighs> Something doesn't seem right. I need to leave for a moment. You can stay here with the receptionist. Sure thing. <sighs> Just don't keep me waiting forever. Just don't kill them! <sighs> Don Hung seems pretty worried about his companions. I should give him some space. Stressing out about it won't help anything. Alright, okay, he's kind of a nice individual then. He's... He is kind of nice. Alright, anyways, do your thing. <coughs> Alright, that's just a firearm. We just have a firearm now. Okay, that we need to put that away. How did we get past the the checks? Hey, I found the person you're looking for. Well, a face recognition failed. <laughs> Don't worry, it works. Greetings. I'm Cody of the Bloodhound family, head nice of security for the hotel. How may I assist you? Please let me in. Hello. So, uh, there's something I wanted to ask about. I've been hearing some unsettling rumors about certain incidents that might affect the Charmony Festival. Do you think there's anything to be worried about? I've traveled all the way from the Hayai Federation and I don't want my trip to be ruined. Um, what do you mean? I heard rumors. Wait, you haven't heard? I'm not sure where you heard those rumors, but they're completely baseless. I can assure you, as a representative of the Bloodhound family, that everything is going smoothly for the Charmony Festival. Damage control! At present, all of the families are focused on making sure the festival starts on time. Even the Dream Master himself has arrived. So don't worry, your trip won't be in vain. Sweet. Ah, uh, <laughs> that's a relief to hear. She doesn't appear to be acting, so... It seems that even the hotel staff are out of the loop. Or she's just really good at damage control. Excuse me. Excuse me. The Charmony Festival is about to start. I'm so excited. <laughs> it sucks that Robin's not going to sing, right? Hey, you guys here for the Charmony Festival too? Who are you? Well, I didn't come all the way here specially for the festival. Honestly, I don't really even know what it's about. <laughs> but I heard it's a lot of fun. I love the idea. He's like, I don't know even why I'm here. <laughs> it's just convenient he was there. Well, back in my home world, Anaria, 
We have festivals like that all the time. Uh -huh. My dad threw me a birthday party one time that was just as extravagant as the Charmony Festival. Bro, I'm getting a read on your personality and I already hate you. Oh, come on. The Charmony Festival is a once in an amber era event. How can a birthday party compare? That's, that's right, Jano. Jano. Well, you never know, right? Maybe on her world, birthdays only happen once in Amber Era. Right? Anyway, let's forget about that. Have you heard about the uh, unsettling things happening in the dreamscape? Unsettling things? What could possibly go wrong? It better not ruin the Charmony Festival. I've been looking forward to it. So much so I didn't know what it was before I got here. Relax. With a big event like this, there's bound to be lots of gossip and rumors. Don't worry. If anything does happen, the family will be on top of it. Yeah, about that. <sighs> oh, that's a relief. Phew! I didn't come all this way to see the festival go down the drain. Well, looks like I won't get any fudging clues out of these two. Go on! Just They're say the fuck words. You know you want to. Just say fuck. Back already? Yeah, I'm done. Hasn't she returned yet? Nope. I'm starting to wonder. Sending her to contact Sunday was a good idea. Neither the staff nor the guest seem to know anything about what's happening in the dreamscape. And wherever we go... All we see is people enjoying themselves. Fucking happiness! Definitely not a good sign. <laughs> Fucking people being happy, this can't be good. I agree. Another unusual thing is that the Oak family is supposed to be in charge of organizing the council and managing everything inside and outside the dreamscape. However, I walked around the hotel, but didn't hmm. meet a single member of the Oak family well, like two, right? on such an important day. Well, I'll be forked. If I remember correctly, the head of the Yoke family is that Sunday guy. What day is right? it today? And what day is it today? Oh God, it's Tuesday. That that's not good. It's not Sunday. That was a we terrible don't joke. Don't, too long. don't clap. Don't. Let's go back to the clap. express for now. Uh, not so fast. Have you ever robbed the IPC? Bro, bro. If you run away now, everyone will be chasing after you. Are you suggesting we sit here and do nothing? I wouldn't say do nothing, but let's stay put for now. No. Even if the family has ulterior motives, they couldn't have anticipated us showing up here. We're the surprise factor for them. They don't want to attract unwanted attention from certain Outsiders, That's so a good point. They don't they know do we're here, reckless. except an emanator. Black See, Swan knows we're here. The IPC lackeys are keeping a close eye on this hotel. If I were a family member, I'd find an official excuse and keep the surprise factors here. If we just wait here, that would be like walking into their trap. Of course, we don't need to walk into their trap. I gave a backup plan to the memo keeper. If it turns out we won't be allowed to enter the dreamscape, she'll order a drink for me in the VIP lounge at the hotel. In reality... A secret signal. That's right. Oh, a concrete object can indeed help the memo keeper establish a connection with you. But Boot Hill... A boot Hill? If you have more backup plans in the future, I hope you'll let me know in advance. <laughs> I'm sorry. But it's one of my quirks. I have too many unreliable friends. And if I reveal that I have backup plans, things can... Things can go awry. And that would leave all backup plans completely useless. I see. How do we get into the VIP lounge? This is where my street smarts come into play. I pull out a gun! <laughs> All right. You're the 
lobby manager, right? Yes, I am. How may I assist you? We're the Nameless from the Astral Express. Yes, we are. We wanted to check in, but there's something wrong with your system. The lady at the front desk said she would contact the manager, but now she's nowhere to be found. Was she the manager? Now we've been waiting here forever, without any food or water. Like, what the what fork? The fork, man? Ah, what the Is fuck? This how I'm fork. treats its guests. What, right fork? Right? What the fork? Is this your idea of street smarts? Starting an altercation? It's called standing up for your rights. Yeah. I apologize for the inconvenience. Please wait while we try to contact Mr. Sunday. I'll arrange two premium seats in the VIP lounge so you can rest there while you... <laughs> See? Just like that. Just... Uh, just... Don't call yourself nameless next time. Wow, this bar's something else. Right? Certainly A place where I can pull my gun out. <sighs> oh... Anderson! Uh, one beach soul glad? Shit. Not stir. That man could sell. That that that's a guy who could sell. Good evening, gentlemen. Hi. Hey, I have an order for a bottle of his Donna's White Oak. Can you help us find Has Donna's White Oak? Hmm. I think there might be a misunderstanding. We don't serve that here. Oh, no. Way. Are you sure you're not mistaken? If someone had reserved such a beverage, I would definitely remember it. It sells for hundreds of thousands of credits per bottle, after all. Uh, I couldn't afford to cover for such an item if it were broken or lost. That's strange. Well, could it be that the memo keeper couldn't afford it? Then what should we do now? Oh, no need to rush. Well, let's grab some drinks first. Maybe I arrived too early. Yeah. She hasn't come yet. Now, let's see what kind of juice malts you all have here. Huh. Well, uh, give me a glass of Heenum Valley, 40 years. I'll have it neat. No ice. Well, that's the most expensive one on the list. You have a taste for the finer things. Yes. <laughs> it's on the house, anyway. What can I get for you? Anything you recommend is fine. I'll have an orange juice. Then I would recommend today's special, Glass Village. It's classic Soul Glad mixed with Laboom juice. It's refreshing and suits your cool demeanor. Hmm, just one minute. Yummy flavor, dynamite barbecue with rocket fuel. Ooh, sorry, really hits the spot. Truly, the finest sherry cask aged malt juice in the cosmos. Dynamite barbecue with rocket fuel. Earth, is that really something that humans enjoy? No, no, he's a robot. <laughs> hey, this guy doesn't know anything at all. As long as you're satisfied, dear guests, please enjoy. I don't know where I'm here. Let's give the memo keeper another half system hour. If she doesn't show up, we'll need to come up with a new plan. In the meantime, let's take stock of the situation. What do you think? The situation is unclear. Something must have happened on the planet of festivities, but the public is unaware of it. Yes. Someone in a position of power within the family must be covering it up. Not quite me. I don't know, man. It's unusual for the followers of the Harmony to invite other factions, let alone the IPC and the Masked Fools. <sighs> if what you said about the Emanator of the Nihility is true, the situation in Penacony is a little complicated, to say the least. Actually, there's something else I'm concerned about. Regarding Acheron. As you know, 
The faction that follows the path of the hunt are some of the most dangerous folks in the cosmos to mess with. I mean, who in the right mind would impersonate the Sienjo Alliance or the Galaxy Rangers? Isn't there a saying among the Sienjo people that uh, the Rainbow Sect lets their Lux Arrow do all the beating? Hmm. Talking. Do all the talking. Talk. Well, you know what I mean. Even though the Galaxy Rangers have been out of sight for years, we've been keeping an eye on this region. Even the dumbest criminals know better than to mess with the Annihilation Gang, much less the Rangers. That Acheron lady, she doesn't seem like a lunatic at all. On the contrary, she's highly logical and organized. She knows exactly when to hold back and when to strike without mercy. Correct. And do you believe that someone like her would have an ulterior motive for impersonating a galaxy ranger? Sure, but I do have my suspicions. Maybe she knows a Galaxy Ranger, or perhaps she's trying to lure us out for some reason. Anyway, what worries me more are the anomalies within the family. They've summoned followers from various paths for the festival. No matter how generous such a gesture is, this move seems highly unusual. Unless the invitations weren't sent by them. Uh, if that's the case, it's even more intriguing that the family insists on organizing the Charmony Festival, despite the chaos. Of course. Maybe it's she pay the harmony pulling the strings. You find it beyond human understanding because it wasn't arranged by humans at all. People do stupid things out of irrational impulses. They abandon their principles when self-interest is involved. They believe in things they know they shouldn't and fudge. They even break their own rules. I imagine every time he says fudge or fork or whatever, he's just he just really wants to say the F word. Like he just really wants to say fuck. So I hope he gets to say fuck at some point in this in the story. But eons Wait, don't. Is this... they stick to their oh, determined no. path oh, and no. never turn back. Even if they reach a dead end. You think Shipei's will is behind all this? It may not necessarily be Shipei. But there's definitely some higher entity involved. I know it may sound pessimistic. But if human free will were reliable, why would we even need Galaxy Rangers? Fair. It's much simpler when you boil it down to the eons and paths. Like how Lon always follows the path of the hunt, or, or how the Express stays true to the Trailblaze despite Akavili's disappearance. But in my opinion, Akavili's fall holds significance for the Nameless. Oh? Oh. So you're saying the Nameless now have to take responsibility for their own choices because their absolutely right leader is gone? Exactly. I believe the purpose of the journey isn't just about following a path that's always considered absolutely right. It's more about doing your best to choose the right path for yourself among countless possibilities. I don't know what you've been through, but I agree that people must take responsibility for their choices, because no one else can do it for them. That's why the Galaxy Rangers need to uncover the imposter. Right. And figure out her true intentions. She's just chilling. Just in case. I have a backup plan if the memo keeper doesn't show up. This is my final backup plan. What's the plan? You sure have a lot of cards up your sleeve. I don't have sleeves. Well, going back to my old career would make things a lot easier. 
By the way, when you were walking around the hotel, did you happen to see any important looking guests? Mm -hmm. What's your plan? It's simple. We just grab some hostages and use them as bargaining chips. Jesus for the fucking Christ. Or maybe we can even take their identities. No need for that. We'll return to the express now. Wait. Are you getting scared? <laughs> Draw your weapon. Let's make a big scene. Are you leaving, esteemed guests? Uh, would you like to cancel that as Donna's White Oak you just ordered? <sighs> huh? As Donna's White Oak. Oh. But didn't you just say? Ha <laughs> ha. Looks like you are a bit intoxicated, esteemed guests. Uh, you ordered a bottle of As Donna's White Oak just a moment ago. Black Swan. Hmm. Looks like your memo keeper friend has finally arrived. <sighs> oh, right. Sorry, my memory's not the best. You know. Too many modifications and all. I'm a robot. <clears throat> anyway, let me check. Well, fork me. It says Donna's White Oak, all right. And there's a note. I'll be waiting for you on the Astral Express. Okay, guess we're going back. <laughs> no mistake. That's her message to you. She knew the hotel wasn't safe, so she suggested we find another place. Well, looks like we took a detour, but... Now, it's back to the Astral Express. So, what are we waiting for? Let's go. Let's go. Hi, Black Swan. No, that's You're Pom Pom. Back? Two guests just boarded saying they were looking for Boot Hill. Two? So I told them to wait in the parlor car. Oh, just in time. Two guests? Yeah, or two. Look, we welcome all passengers on the Astral Express, but sneaking in like that, you have no regard for etiquette. My apologies, Conductor. It was an oversight on my part. I assumed you were already acquainted with the Garden. Given the chaotic situation in Panacone, the Nameless are the only ones we can truly trust right now. You are the Memo Keeper. Yes, yes she is. Th the greatest of Pleased all time. Nice to meet you. Don Hung. I've seen you and others' memories. And as for Boot Hill, this is our first face-to-face -face meeting. I hope you enjoyed that bottle of Astana's White Oak. You sure have a refined taste. Finally, Memo Keeper. Well, let's cut to the chase. Spill everything you know. That's precisely what I intend to do. But before that, Please allow me to introduce myself. Okie dokie. My name is Black Swan. What? And I serve the Garden of Recollection as a memo keeper. As for Acheron's story... She brought Acheron?! I'm sure she knows it better than I do. Greetings. I'm Acheron. What? You Garden of Recollection shirtbag! You betrayed me! I apologize, but she did that at my request. Due to certain reasons, I have been exiled by the family. Thankfully, this memo keeper came to my aid and helped me escape their surveillance unnoticed. To be honest, it was more like stalking, stalking. than helping. Yeah. And the process was far from unnoticed. But we did escape. I asked her to guide me to a place beyond the family's reach and to contact a few trustworthy individuals. Namely, all of you. Trustworthy? <laughs> Son of a nice lady. You think I'm dumb or something? What is happening? How about this? I'll put a few bullet holes in your head and see what secrets spill out. Then... We can talk about trust. It doesn't have to be like that. I'm willing to answer all your questions, but not right now. If my cover hadn't been blown, we might have had more time, but at the moment, we don't have any other options. No other options? What do you mean? This is the only way I can ensure everyone's safety. Okay. I kindly request an immediate warp jump out of the Astana star system. <sighs> oh. 
Ranger is requesting? As far as I can tell, she's not a threat and seems to be telling the truth. I've briefly traveled with your companions and know their whereabouts, Don Hung. Please rest assured, your nameless companions are safe, but they need our help. As for Boot Hill, you may have guessed. I've been waiting for you. Galaxy Rangers are known for their elusive nature and limited contact with each other. So this was the only way I could reach out to you. Only by doing this can I find a true Galaxy Ranger and fulfill a long-standing promise. To return his relics to their rightful owner. Huh? Someone once told me that every rainfall is like a gift from the heavens. A sign of their mercy upon the world. Raindrops are said to be the tears of the gods, shed in response to the sorrows of the world. Their constant pouring is a reminder that the gods haven't abandoned us yet, so... How long has this rain been going on for? I used to believe, just like you, that it would eventually stop. Years and decades passed. And in the end, such hope faded away before the rain did. Just like the arm branch is reaching for the moon. Looks like the god you mentioned doesn't exist after all. Well, that sucks. As he spoke, the old man's gaze remained fixed on the distance, amidst the fine drizzle of black rain. Oh, oh, the countless shadowy hands. Oh, oh, those are not the hand branches I was hoping. Uh, emerged from the sea, shrouded in an eternal mist reaching out towards the sky, one by one. Well, let me share a story with you. It's a story within a story. This is a story exception. Mortals who walk the paths are like sailors on a vast ocean, leaving behind a trail that creates countless ripples of possibilities. These ripples last longer than the fleeting lifetimes of humans. And for some, their presence leaves such a strong mark that it's reflected in the waves. Michael, those shadows on the ocean. Sin thirsters, the obsessions of the path striders, they emerge from the depths of IX, seeing themselves as masters of their own destiny, unknowingly repeating the actions of their past lives. They emerge from the nihility and head toward it, leading purposeless lives. However, these Hollow phantoms. They were once my dear companions. A group of galaxy rangers. Are you watching over them? Watching over them? No. I'm guiding them toward transcendence. It was a brutal war. A crusade that shook the universe. The universe witnessed the fall of Zulo, the Lord Ravager, but it came at a price. The unwavering Oops, determination of the hunt really followers slow. persists oh, even man. in death. So someone must guide these lost souls to their life beyond. They were heroes in their time. They shouldn't be reduced to mere puppets of nihility. As for me, I have suffered too many losses on that battlefield to advance any further. And that makes me the most 
fitting person to carry out this task. But you know, these sin thirsters, they're not who they used to be. Does this seem pointless to you? No. Well, some tasks have to be done, even if they are pointless. <sighs> I can help you. For what? For the meaning of the nihility. That's what I've been seeking. I see. After all, this realm is off limits to ordinary souls, right? Thank you, stranger. I wish that you find what you seek. Before we part ways, I have one more question. It is true that their actions and even their entire lives may seem pointless from our perspective. But if, and it's just an if, if this is what the departed ones expected, should we try to change it? A good question. And a profound one. I don't know the answer. Fuck! What I do know is that one day I too will pass away. And when I bid farewell to this world, someone will stand at my grave and place a bouquet of flowers on it. We're going back to Robin! Is this the real Robin? Or is this Sparkle Robin? When I appeared as a child... Real Robin! My speech, mindset, and soul reflected immaturity and innocence. As I grew into adulthood, I left behind my childlike side. Oh no. I humbly request your blessings, esteemed advocate of Shibe. Come to me, my kinship. I have sought their presence with us. As you wish. I have faithfully served the Alfalfa family for nearly a decade, promoting the path of the harmony to the best of my ability. Wow. However, I I'm like just made a thinking mistake about yesterday. everything that's happened so far. I'm like, While I was wow. preparing dinner for the family head, I accidentally dropped a prepared dish on the floor. Oh, you fucking tool! Out of uh, laziness, I lied and claimed that everything was ready. <laughs> Although the head has dismissed me as punishment, it has been tough to sleep with the guilt still gnawing at me, as I worried that the seeds of evilness may have taken root in my soul. So, I confess to you now, to seek atonement for my sins. Do you sincerely repent and vow to change your ways? <sighs> yes. Have you examined your soul and confessed all your sins? Oh, yes. Are you willing to accept the process of atonement? <laughs> yes. Very well. Show your dedication and goodwill to the family. And you shall be reinstated among them. Now, please, leave in peace. Oh, praise she may. And thank you, esteemed advocate. Next, please, step forward. Who are you? I, I wholeheartedly confess to you. Please, pardon my sins. Rest assured, I have implored their presence to be with us. As long as you are sincere, absolution will be granted. Oh, oh, great. You know, I... I arrived in Panacone as a stowaway. I sold everything to get a ticket. My house, my land, and... my two children. You sold your children? I see. Please, go on. My children were starving. He said go. And I hope they'd have a chance at survival if they became slaves here. If... if I can strike it rich here, I'll lift them out of that situation and give them the life they deserve. But the Bloodhound family got wind of it. They're on my tail, hunting me down. I thought I could bring my kids here. It, it was all my fault. 
all my fault. The family is ready to forgive all sinners. I'll ask the Bloodhound family to cease their pursuit. You don't need to live in fear. Oh, thank you. Thank you. I'll work my hardest to redeem my children and make them part of the family. Praise, praise the harmony. Next, please step forward. Hey, long time no see, Mr. Sunday. The most esteemed individual in Penacony, and the next leader of the Oak family, right? Leave. I have sought their presence with us. Let us pres- Sure, let's just get this over with. <clears throat> I have sinned, please forgive me. Yep. I wasted half a pizza at breakfast, and a bottle of soul black. Unacceptable! That's it. Nothing more. Can we wrap this up? I've got a robo-ball game to catch, you know? Do you seek to atone for your sins through good deeds? My sins? Wow, starting to sound like a saint, huh? Well, let me tell you something. Neither the family nor you have the right to judge me. You think nobody knows what you're precious family has done? Oh. About the watchmaker? Oh. Huh? <laughs> Don't kid yourself, Featherbrain. Those dream chasers might be fooled by your act, but don't fool yourself. Before you start spouting off your holy verses, answer me this. Where does the power of the Oak family come from? And your power? What makes you think you can sit there all high and mighty, looking down on everyone else? Well, I've spent enough time in confession today to enter the Harmony's Paradise, right? Then I'll take my leave. Good luck with your election, and uh, don't make me regret my investments in you. Fuck that kid. Oh, revered triple-faced soul. Hear my doubts. Who can judge the strong when their power hides their crimes? Who can vouch for the weak when they will pay any price to survive? Who can comfort the purest souls when even they get led astray? Defending the weak is truly the foundation of paradise. Then who, who is responsible for the suffering and anguish in this wretched world? <laughs> Brother? 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 Welcome back. We're here. Are you all right? Nope, not okay. Uh, fine. I've been working long hours. And I just made a trip to Dreamflux Reef and back. So, I'm a bit out of sorts. But it'll all be over before we know it. You've been working non-stop on the Germany Festival, Mr. Sunday, and no one could have predicted this incident. Even if the Stellaron does pose a grave threat, I still feel sorry for all the trouble we've caused you. <laughs> no need to worry about troubling anyone. The Charmony Festival was meant to spread joy and harmony across the cosmos. Meant to. But now- It has always been our wish to make everyone happy, so... We'll do our best to explain everything to the Dream Master. I'm sure he'll understand, even if the negotiation does not go smoothly. I'll refuse to go on stage. Without the Chord Master, the Harmonious Choir would not arrive. And the Charmony Festival would be just a grand performance, and nothing more. <laughs> I'm relieved to see your determination. Hell yeah. You know, since arriving in Penacony, we haven't had any contact with this Dream Master himself. I'd heard of the heads of the five major lineages, but the Dream Master is a mystery to me. The Dream Master rarely grants an audience, even for us. But, given the urgency of the situation, He's agreed to meet us in person. <laughs> Perhaps you'll be the first guest to meet the Dream Master in years, Mr. Yang. 
Let's hope we can reach a consensus that satisfies everyone. Because I am prepared to kill. Indeed. Let us hope so. It's about time. We'll have to get ready for the meeting. Don't worry. I'll be waiting here. Alrighty then. Thank you for everything you've done. I'll be waiting here. Checked out the list. Oh, fuck. Nope, the gas is up there. Oh, God. Oh, that's another crime. Robin is just too busy committing crimes by throwing musical notes at people. Okay, that one didn't hit anybody. She is fine. No! Oh, Mr. Sunday. Hey there! Okay, see the moon in the sky? It's about the size of the cap on my soul glad bottle. Yeah, it is, buddy. Yeah, it is. If I just reached out my hand, I could grab the moon, couldn't I? Yeah? <sighs> the, the moon? You mean the Grand Theater? <laughs> yeah. Look at me. I've been away from home for too long. Ooh. I must be missing that moon. <laughs> but it's no big deal. The Grand Theater here looks much better than the moon back home. It's just magnificent. Magnificent. They told me not to sell everything I had just to come to Pentaconi. How short-sighted. Selling everything you had? Why would you go to such lengths? Why? Can't you see? Life back home is miserable. But I could get drunk. I'm so really glad here. <laughs> it's better to be here at Pentaconi. That's right. About tomorrow, just sweet dreams. You can do whatever you want. That's what I call living. <laughs> yeah, now this is the life. Is this truly living? <laughs> huh? What did you say, young lady? I didn't quite catch that. <laughs> oh, it's nothing, sir. You see, the traffic on Glock's Avenue can be dangerous. How about I ask a Bloodhound family member to escort you to Idean Park over there, so you can continue enjoying your sweet dream? Oh, yeah, that's a great idea. It's a great idea. Wow. No wonder you are the leader of this sweet dream. You're totally a lifesaver. See you around, Mr. Sunday. And uh, it was nice chatting with you. <laughs> Bye. What's up, sister? This is the land of the dreams. But why do they live like this? The man we ran into... He doesn't seem happy at all. Even though sweet dreams are nice, they're just illusions. But for him, they're the only way to survive, even if it means giving up on reality. That's not really living at all. I suppose you have a point. But, in my opinion... That's how most people live their lives. Why do you say that? You think that man is not actually living. But that's not quite accurate. Even without Panacone, people create their own illusions called self-value. People believe they have a predetermined value to fulfill. Gaining value means gaining power. And those deemed worthless are seen as the weak. However, Value doesn't come out of thin air, and there's a limit to it. To accumulate value, people have to take from others. I see. So, the weak get exploited and oppressed. Are you suggesting that this is not how things should be? Exactly. Okay. But, ironically, people don't think there's anything wrong with it, because they uphold the illusory notion of self-value. And even the weak believe in it. The survival of the fittest. That's where all the tragedies in the world come from. People come to the sweet dream in Panacone to escape from that reality and find solace. 
No tragedies exist here. Only happiness. Although in its nascent form. Isn't that the same paradise we yearn for in our dreams? Maybe. <sighs> Perhaps that man is just an exception. You're right. Let's not jump to conclusions. He's just the one. We should experience the dreamscape ourselves. Just as I did at Dreamflux Re- Yes. Seeing is believing. I'll accompany you. The Dream Master hasn't shown up yet, so we have some time for a stroll. How about... No, oh, we just hit a car! Alright. Glad to meet you again, Robin. Again? How are the preparations for the Charmony Festival coming along? We're all so excited about it. I'm not doing it. <laughs> it's going smoothly. Thanks for making the trip to join the festival. Bro. Why? You're not even green. You're too kind, Robin. It's a pleasure to have guests from all over the universe celebrating day and night. Bro's already started streaming. He's already leaving. What do you know? That's going to look great for the video. I can't stand being lonely or bored, so... This jubilant dreamscape is perfect for me. But if this went on forever, would it get boring too? <sighs> nah, not at all. Who would get tired of having so much fun? Every day, you get to wear fancy clothes, uh, explore all sorts of dream bubbles, indulge in delicious food without gaining weight, and you never get old or sick. As long as you can afford a room, this place is the ultimate paradise. But you know that only a few things can be brought back from the dreamscape to reality, right? That's exactly why I don't plan on bringing anything back. Just enjoying the dream itself is good enough for me. I, I mean, I'm not one of those long living species. I only have around 60 or 70 years in this lifetime and uh, there's so much to worry about. Being happy here is pure bliss. Relatable content, but also why? Only in this sweet dream can I truly feel like I'm in control of my life and fate. Who would want to go back to reality after experiencing this bliss? <laughs> I see. I genuinely wish you all the happiness in the world. Robin is having it a pit of you right now. She's just like... Are we sure? And I wish you a fantastic performance, Robin. I'm off to the blue hour for the ball. See you later. Bye. <sighs> Seems like that guest's perspective didn't resonate with you either. She had a valid point. I could sense her genuine happiness. It's just that... What you're trying to say is, she thinks she's in control of her life. But in reality... She's just escaping from reality and seeking solace in this sweet dream. Once she steps out of this sanctuary, everything will be lost. Well, she did make mention of being able to afford a room, didn't- However, the paradise in our dreams, it doesn't have to end. No, and the paradise we yearn for shouldn't be just a fleeting dream either. I agree. Run! Across the street! Talk to man! Hello. He's quiet. The scenery in this dreamscape is truly breathtaking, isn't it? Oh, hey, who the fuck are you? Can't believe I'm meeting you in person here. What an honor. <laughs> You're right. Even though time stands still in this dreamscape, it always feels fresh. Why are you slashed I find like something that? something new every time. A philosophical mind. I hope I'm not intruding. Oh, not at all. No. With little time left, I yearn for meaningful conversations. Especially with someone as esteemed as you. Do you mind if we chat? It's my pleasure. No need to be formal. 
Just speak your mind. You said, with little time left. Please, forgive me for being blunt. But is that why you came to Penacony? <laughs> yeah. Well, I was part of a war. I guess that's fair. While escaping from the Sarkozian mothership, I got exposed to some radioactive materials. And then, all my comrades died, and my hometown was wiped out by neutron bombardments. Lots of, uh... Bombings in live. planets. Everything I knew gone. That's when I heard about a possible solution here, so I came. How heart wrenching. Ah. I hope the family has been able to help you. And they have, and I'm truly grateful for that. They provided me with a comfortable room the most advanced life support services in the cosmos, and a stellar team of caregivers. My physical body is now in the dream pool, sustained by life support. The me you see here is whole, rational, and no different from any other person. But I can't say the same for the me in the hotel room. Makes sense. My true appearance. Huh. I hope you never have to witness it, Robin. So... You'll be living forever in this dreamscape, right? <laughs> Just being able to live at all is good enough for me. Whether it's in this dreamscape or not, well, I don't really have much say in the matter. I guess that's fair. My world has been torn apart, and my life could end any second. So, even if this whole place is an illusion, it's still my paradise. And I'll treasure every moment I spend here. I guess it's like a good point for him. <laughs> now I envy those everlasting things. He's got like an understanding. Oh, story. It's so tragic. Fortunately, this sweet dream gives him joyful memories to hold on to for the rest of his life. That's precisely why this sweet dream in Penacony exists. However... Even this sweet dream has its limitations. While it provides solace to the disillusioned, it can't completely eliminate pain and reality. There no. will be a way out. Panacone is already on the right track. Meet the other rock. Hey, Sparkle! Look what we have here. A lovely young lady. Wait. Is that me? Kill it! <laughs> Brother. Hi, Stripe Dink. How's it going? I'm to see you again. Show yourself. Your trick won't work on us. I've heard that a skilled mass fool received an invitation, too. That must be you. Right? Did you... Enjoy yourself? Barely. The people here are way too gullible. A little right. bait is all it takes for them to bite. And they run away at the slightest hint of danger. Yeah, no kidding. In other words, they're naive and cowardly. Now that you've had your fill, it'd be wise to leave before it's too late. That's good to hear. The music of Glad the harmony doesn't fine. tolerate discord. What? Now that you have the real Robin, I'm useless? Oh, how disheartening. I've done so much for the family. Do you know how much damage control I did? You should be thanking me. Because if it weren't for me cleaning up this mess, Panacone would still be in shambles. That was a personal request from the head of the Iris family. And it has nothing to do with us. Right. Step aside and stop causing trouble for the Charmony Festival. The Charmony Festival? <laughs> you think you can scare me? You think I have no idea what you're planning? I don't care what you're thinking, chicken wing boy. Oh. But I'm pretty sure our lovely Robin won't be appearing on stage. After all, you're well aware of what a sorry state this dreamscape is in under the banner of Harmony. Hanakoni, the land of the dreams. Is this truly... 
the paradise you desire. Robin's like, no, not really. I don't really like this place. Stop it. <laughs> stop, stop it. Stop. <laughs> What's the rush, chicken wing boy? Did I get to you? Our paradise is none of your concern, Mast Fool. Leave now, or the family won't tolerate you anymore. Yeah, I'll, I'll tell you what, Missy. <laughs> all right, all right. I'll go. But Robin, I suggest you seriously consider this. Do you really believe those living in dreams can escape pain and find true happiness? She does. She's going to set off the nukes. <sighs> well, I've done my part. And now I'm simply waiting for the fireworks to begin. Here, the last two gifts for both of you. And don't lose them. If by some unfortunate chance the Charmony Festival starts against all odds. Remember I'm going to give you nukes. <laughs> and it'll be thrilling. Bang! I heard a raven cawing in the distance. It seems the Dream Master will arrive soon. Sh should we go grab Welt, maybe? I, I feel like we should have Welt on our side. Like... Hold on. No, 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 no. We gotta go get Welt. Oh, hold on. Important business, sorry. Robin's gotta commit crimes. Well, thank you for everything you've done. Why are you waiting there? We're over there. Run, Robin, like your life depends on it. <laughs> I don't want to. I'm good, though. Thank you. Let's wait here for the Dream Master to erupt. Okay. By the way, brother, I heard you no longer have a sweet tooth. Back what? We kids, <laughs> you used to steal my desserts. Seems like a lot has changed during my absence. What exactly happened? Well, someone has to stay awake even in this sweet dream. But that someone doesn't have to be you. Or anyone in particular. Right? We are carrying too much on your shoulders, brother. The paradise in our dreams. It shouldn't be like this. Hanakoni is nothing more than a dream. Yeah? It can't erase the worries and pain of reality or bring you happiness. It only offers an escape from reality. Nothing more. That should Remember really the old man we met earlier? Without this dream, he might have completely lost himself. F fair? That might be true, but even without Penacone, he could have chosen another path. As far as I know, the Intelligentsia Guild has been promoting their rehabilitation techniques for a long time now. I would know this because I don't live here anymore. <laughs> that path may have been more ordinary and challenging, but now... He is receiving hospice care in a comatose state, and his fate is sealed. Is Panacone granting these people a future? Or is it taking it away from them? She's defecting! Quick, get her! <laughs> this is probably what he's thinking. Well, don't forget this. Not everyone really has a future. The future for humanity is like... The sky Listen, it's birds. a cool vacation spot, but People that's really all it is. That flight is inherent to birds, because they've never witnessed those birds crashing to their death. Do you remember how we took in that little Charmony dove when we were young? Yeah, we took care of it. Provided food and water, groomed its feathers. And later, when I decided to leave Penacone, I opened the cage and set it free. Well, I... I didn't mention what happened to it in my letters, because I didn't want to upset shortly after you left. It crashed to its death right in front of your window. Well, yikes. <laughs> I had surmised as much. I knew you wouldn't have avoided mentioning the bird for no reason. Despite that unfortunate outcome, I still believe it was the right decision. 
birds aren't meant to, to die their lives in cages they belong in the sky even if they can't fly but here's the thing if there are birds in this world that can never fly can we really assert that they belong in the sky oh dear there's some sibling rivalry going on here I think uh, Robin wants to die again are you implying that the same goes for humans too Let's take the Astral Express as an example. The Nameless made tremendous efforts to bridge worlds, gaining fame across the universe. However, only a few extraordinary individuals can endure such a perilous journey. That's I, because the pursuit I'm of the trailblaze some tension. exceeds the like, capabilities like Sunday's of like, ordinary you humans. dare defect against me? Otherwise, why would this path be filled with broken rails, an abandoned express, and even a fallen eon? That's just... sophistry. If that were true, then only the powerful would have the right to determine the future. Man, I start stream today and I'm thinking like, man, it's good to have Sunday on our team and, and all that shit, and here he is talking shit right behind our back. Well, it's right across the street, dude. That dude could fuck you up, like, really fast. Unfortunately, that's exactly what happens. Another name for the future is self-value. While this world has its fair share of heroes who inspire people and garner admiration for their heroic deeds, the majority of ordinary people will never become heroes in their lifetime. Some are born weak and vulnerable. Some find themselves trapped in unfortunate circumstances. Some fall victim to malice and cowardice. When it comes to survival, everyone is equal. And the weak can only watch as their value gets constantly diminished by external forces. That's why we should care for the weak and support them as if their suffering were our own. That's what the Odes of Harmony have always taught us. While the harmony holds noble aspirations, the strong will always be strong, and the weak will always be weak. I see. Even in this carefree dream, human nature contains greatness, but it also harbors inherent weaknesses that can't be eradicated. In the end, if people can't even secure their own survival, they won't care about the illusory future of equality. As long as the law of survival of the fittest prevails, there will always be fledglings crashing to their death. Jesus Christ, dude. But if people don't live for the future, do they merely exist I'm for survival? I'm running a business! <laughs> if even you, my brother, don't believe that the harmony will save the weak, then which eon can make our dreams come true? People often forget that when the first bird took flight, the entire world envisioned a future where no more fledglings would ever crash to their death. Are you reading, sister? What are you reading? Mr. Gopher Wood gave me a picture book. It's about the story of the harmonic strings. I could become a chord master. I'd like to summon Dominicus, the harmonious choir. Ooh, good choice. I want to sing with everyone and spread our wishes so that all can feel happiness and joy. <laughs> I see. Then I would summon the harmonious choir too. Don't you have a wish of your own, brother? Yeah, like stand for yourself, douche. <laughs> of course I do. It's just that. It includes your wish and everyone else's. I long for a true paradise where everyone can find peace. Then let's build a stage there and invite everyone to our performance so that both our wishes come true through the power of the harmonious choir. It's a deal then. It's a deal. Yeah, it's a deal. But how can I become a chord master? I know! Maybe you will have to become a star first. 
Um, I feel like there's some shit I'm missing out on. <laughs> All right, eight hours left. You're back sooner than I thought. Yeah, I know, right? Any it's kind of crazy. No. <laughs> he dead. Yes. And now, it's up to us to forge ahead. <laughs> that thing's dead up there. <laughs> <laughs> Since he's already carried out his last wish, my final mission is complete. But I can go hard now. If I sound curt, it's good to have determination. The path Mikhail left for you is not an easy one to tread. Why else would he have chosen to sleep in solitude, staking everything on some nameless in the future? But you have the numbers. And in numbers, you have three nameless and a stellar on hunter. This is going to be a so weird might one. Might just delay your inevitable a little more. Oh God, any more encouraging words? As I see it, relying on Welt's negotiations alone is far from enough. Regardless of whether the other party will be compliant, negotiating simply allows us to meet them as equals. It won't grant us an upper hand. Hanakoni is our rival's home turf. What are you doing right now, Firefly? We already have are you like picking your nose? To play with. You like put your Rather arm up. Like, you, like, I, I feel like you might be picking your nose right off, now, Firefly. An offensive approach might be a wiser course of action. We're more familiar with the Stellaron's properties than most. Really, and really, Firefly shouldn't be doing anything right now. Like, dream, the, the, the focus on, is on Red Woman right interests. now. Like, like she should, there like, should be nothing going on. Our interests, they're bound to retaliate hastily. And as the saying goes, haste makes waste. That's right. Oh no, not as picking her nose anymore. Pose a threat to the Stellaron. No, no, was not doing that. We have a chance at gaining the upper hand. But the problem is, on the eve of the Charmony Festival opening. How exactly are we going to get close to the theater? Family security will be airtight. And if we brute force it, even if we succeed, it's too risky. We're just going to do it anyways. Hmm. So no one's going to say anything? Then I'll raise my hand. I know the answer to this question. Why don't you just do that normally? Looks like we have one more ace up our sleeve. Time for the master stroke. Why are you speaking like the general of the law, Fu? Don't worry about it. <laughs> so, I heard that before the Charmony Festival begins, there will be a pageant to kick off the festival. It's called the Soul Glad TM Trademark. Festivity Audition. Oh, you had a <laughs> And it's going to be held in the moment of Scorch Sand. I didn't realize she was going to say TM as well. As long as we clinch the top spot, we'll be able to attain the title of Festive Superstar. And be able to personally bask in the graces of Miss Robin. Uh, not that that's important. <laughs> What's crucial is. Bro, that we, we could can just talk to her! <laughs> arrives. Hey, Robin, what's going on? Oh, not much. Just doing some shit over here. Ah, oh, excellent. See you later. So, how do we go about participating in these festivity auditions? <laughs> I've already procured special invite tickets from Miss Robin's fan club. You asked her. Oh, to tell you the truth, I had been preparing to join the auditions all along, but now it looks like even if I scrape through, I probably still won't have the chance to shake Miss Robin's hand. We literally just saw her! Like, here! You could have done all you talked to her! That's huge! So they're still running this thing, huh? It was originally just a publicity stunt. Set up by Mikhail to drum up attention. But it looks like it might be worth a shot. We'll follow Marge's plan. Mr. Gallagher, will you be joining us? Because it turns out you're actually not a scumbag and you actually didn't kill people. But you did still kind of kill people. Again, could have invited for coffee, but it's fine, I guess. I'm afraid I won't have the time. <clears throat> As a virtual character, I've already completed my final mission. Whether Penacone can awaken from this dream is all down to you. Just disappears. It's like. <laughs> Should we ever cross paths again? I'd love for you to visit the Express. All right. I'll have to add to that data bank of yours you've got on the Express. And Miss Firefly, we thank you for all your support. We're faced with a formidable enemy. As long as the Astral Express and Stellaron Hunter's objectives are aligned, we're willing to cooperate with you. 
We've already come this far together. I'd like to join you for the rest of your journey on Penacony. I'm pleased that we can finally fight shoulder to shoulder. I couldn't ask for a better ending. This is also the spirit of the Trailblaze. Now everyone, let's prepare to move out. I really feel like Firefly really just wants to be a trailblazer. I really do. Like every fiber within my being is just saying like she really does not want to be a Stellaron hunter. She really does not want to be part of this group, but she kind of like got forced in. Oh. Oh fuck yeah. Fuck yeah! If you have ambition, dream, and the tribe to your friend, the next superstar of Pentacone. I got that! That's me! <laughs> oh wow, they've really outdone themselves! Oh, I'm starting to get excited! Behold! Here come four friends with spirit eyes and full of steel! Are you aspiring? No, it's the other four behind us. Yes, you. Oh, fuck! <laughs> oh, thank you. Excuse me, you four. What are you hoping to get out of all this? Oh, no, maybe it's Jake Rabbit's head. As the last group of contestants, how confident are you in overcoming all of the challenges? Like three out of ten at best. Would you be open to a brief exclusive interview with us? It'll be quick. What's the question? Your journey is long and fraught with peril, yet under a sky blanketed by banners, you vie for the crown. I have nothing to say for you. The sword and rose! Protect the beauty, the beauty, the beauty! Magnificent and majestic! Yes. A knight's head is hard as steel. Brother Land's focus is stubborn as a heel. Ooh. We don't all have to be winners. But if okay. we don't have fun, <laughs> we'd all be sinners. Oh, good point. <laughs> That's so deep. People are pouring in. Kind of feels like all sorts of baddies are showing up. Let's get in there quickly and enter the competition. Quick, before they start asking questions. Ladies and gentlemen, please make way. <laughs> make way. Who is that? Coming towards us now is one of Pentacone's top ten wealthiest tycoons. Oh. Allow me to introduce myself. Wow! I'm the director He's an old man Black NPC! I wow! My four friends, introduce yourselves to the audience across the cosmos. Mm, hello, everybody. I'm Himiko, a nameless from the Astral Express. Hi, Himiko. And these are my companions. Ahem. <clears throat> Don't you guys need to hide your identities? No, not really. I can't hide it anyways. Pentacony is plastered with our posters. And because the Astral Express is so well known, the family won't dare to make M any Maybe you moves. might need to. Just don't mention you're a Stellaron Hunter. That's... See, see, the Astral Express are good guys. The Stellaron Hunters are bad guys. So don't mention that, okay? <laughs> Hello, everyone. <laughs> is she say cheese? <laughs> Is it really a good idea to have a talent show in this pivotal moment of our story? <laughs> Fuck, break the fourth wall with our fourth option here. Uh, hello everyone, I'm the Galactic Baseballer, and she say cheese. Uh, don't expose my net handle to everyone. Too late! Uh, hello everyone, I'm March 7th. I'm an ordinary girl who loves adventures. No, you're not. You're not ordinary. You got ice powers. Hello, everyone. I'm Firefly. Mm, I am also an ordinary girl who enjoys adventures. Yay! Ordinary girls who enjoy adventures. Yay! <laughs> My favorite trope. So it's a bunch of nameless guests. This final face-off is bound to be spectacular. Time is precious. My four friends, come with me. No. 
Absolutely not. I will not take a bottle of Soul Glad. No matter what you tell me, I will not take a drink of this Soul Glad. I swear to. Hello, how are you? I'm not supposed to be here. This place is buzzing. Yeah. That's right. This as the era filled with boundless possibilities. Oh. God damn it. Fucking bird. Hi. Bye. Stream four. Gleam of old plates. Whoa. Grab a bottle of soul glad. Absolutely not. No. Nameless, you're a right. Reminds me of the grand occasion when Penicone was first established. Why? I was still a young, bright-eyed lad back then, lured here by the watchmaker's ads, full of zeal and ready to make my first fortune in life. Yeah, so why does that remind me of you? Okay. Once, during a particularly grueling day, I passed out and was resuscitated oh. by a drink from Mr. Sousa. That sweet taste has since been etched in my mind and that was what drove me to create the soul glad that we all know and love today. Never drank it. The dream chasing era was truly a wondrous time. Oh, I miss those days and the watchmaker. Scorch Sand Hall is my homage to that time of boundless possibilities. I wholeheartedly hope you make it to the finish and emerge as the next superstars of Why? Penicone. Why? Why? Now then, is there anything you'd what? like to say? Do you say that to the everybody? Officially begin? I feel like you say that to everybody. Nah, we would win. <laughs> nah, we'd win. <laughs> Rest assured, we're going to take it out of this. I can feel it. Rest assured, we're going to take it out of this. All right, nah, we win. <laughs> That's the trailblazing spirit. How about you, Miss? Hello! Everyone, next up, get ready for the Mega March 7th Adventure, where I'm going to break the speed run world record. For what? What's it? What are you doing? Trailblazing into the uncharted and challenging the limits. That's Miss March 7th for you. How about Miss Firefly? Uh oh, I'm gonna turn into a robot. Don't talk about the robot. I hope that by the end of this journey. Everyone will have achieved the outcome that they hope for. Those are some really wise words. Also very boring. <laughs> uh, a wonderful wish. Miss Himiko, what are you expecting from your team? You, be the adult of the group. <laughs> what do you expect from your team of children? Safety first, everyone. <laughs> very motherly. Words, very motherly. <laughs> Waiting for you are three stages, each connected to that era. The first two stages offer two distinct paths to choose from, with unique challenges on each route. And in the last stage, you will face off against a champion who has defended the title to this very day. Oh, we will? Well, those are the oh, sorry. Words. Simple. Everyone clear? Mm -hmm. Now, I hereby announce that the 33rd Scorch Sand Festival of the 20th season, sponsored by Soul Glad Enterprises, has started. You forgot the TM, sir. Everyone, as the Chimony Festival is drawing closer, we must reach the end as quickly as possible. Factoring in efficiency and safety, Splitting up into two groups is the best choice. March and I haven't known Miss Firefly for too long and aren't overly familiar with her. It'd probably be better if the two of you paired up. Okie dokie. Fine by me. Let's do 
it. All right. I don't have a problem with that. I'm not shit chat. Let's do this. Say what now? I get to pair up with Firefly. And there's no catch. Pull up. Has any any of you bothered to ask me for my consent to this? <laughs> Pull up. It'll be a shoe in with me we'll around. Split into the assigned groups then. Let's not waste time. I'm a little disappointed that they didn't say anything about like that was awful. Never speak again. <laughs> Hello, what are we doing? Welcome to the first stage of Soul Glad Enterprises. Yeah, 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 yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Trademark. Season. Dream Play Fantasia. Oh. In this stage, you can choose between two challenges. The School of Acting or School of Action. Is there a difference? In the School of Acting Challenge, you have to complete three performances from three scripts and move the panel judges. In the School of Action Challenge, you have to defeat three groups of enemies convincingly and reach the end. So in the Action Challenge, I get to fight people, but in the Acting Challenge, I get to do stuff. Now, make your... All right, Firefly, what do we want to do? We gotta get in the ball. Oh, I don't know if I really get much of a choice on this manner. Consider it's a fucking cutscene! Oh, okay, we do get a choice. Alright, where are we going? You know? Uh, action challenge? Or do we want to go to acting challenge? Action challenge or acting challenge? You know what? I'm feeling fighty. The champion's crown awaits you on the stage. Hold up. Welcome to the arena of action stars. Thank you, but I gotta change the team really quickly, okay? The team comp is in shambles. Let's go fuck shit up. Please make your way to the stage. And vanquish those malevolent scoundrels with your dazzling fighting techniques. Fuck the yeah. The title of Panacone's next big action star awaits you. Good work, Black Swan. You get him. Competitors, allow me to introduce the rules of this challenge to you. Oh, okay. There are a total of three stages up ahead, each with their own challenges. The enemies you will contend against are antagonists from the film Once Upon a Time in Dreams. Nah, I'll kill him. Defeat them swiftly and decisively to set a new record. It's worth mentioning that the fastest time of this stage was achieved by a contestant with fiery red hair. Astoundingly, he overcame all enemies across the three stages in only five minutes. I know who it is. Time is of the essence. Let's make this quick. We got this. We fucking got this. I... Bro. I'll do it in two. All right. Who's first? Contestants, you are about to confront the monsters of the primordial dreamscape. I've already killed During like a... During this period, oh, sorry. Penacone was nothing but a barren wasteland. I believe that. The dreamscape was fraught with strife and disorder, with memory zone memes running rampant. So I get a kill too. As dream chasers who've come to power. You're Panacone, wasting my time! Beating them is your first step towards success. I have five minutes. <laughs> All the soul glad is ours! Don't even think about plundering the soul glad from us! Oh no, I'm about to kill a person. Oh, that's not good. Oh, no. <laughs> what are you? What the fuck are you? Oh, I'm, isn't chosen. I'm glad I brought the team I brought in. All right. Uh, Beneath the water lies an endless abyss. You won't get away. I can do this. Give me strength. Don't worry. It's just a scrape. Get him! I weep for the departed. It too shall fall. Oh! Oh! 
Let's fucking go! I don't know what the fuck that was! <laughs> so glad! My so glad! The good news is he's not dead. Pretty simple. I just hope these tests don't take too long. Yeah, you're not in a giant suit of armor, so uh, you're kind of like in a position right now. Oh, go fuck me. Congratulations on becoming the first group of dream chasers. Answering the call from the watchmaker, you are disappointed to learn that Panacone isn't paved with gold. It's bullshit. Designed to your current plight, you start from the hierarchical dredges, biding your time for a chance at success. Is that a dude in there? Is there a dude, dude, is there, is there a guy inside that? Just as you're about to give up, uh -huh. a downpour sparks a business idea. It's been you like two enter minutes. the umbrella business. But just as things are looking up, At the umbrella you encounter business. a competitor. Defeat them and emerge victorious from this trade war. Raincoats are not allowed in this facility. We are umbrellas. Why is our opponent so glad? Yeah, we're umbrellas. <laughs> the fuck? Because this is so glad Enterprise's 33rd festivity auditions of the 20th season. And we're um Do you understand the market? Umbrellas and so glads are not comp competitors. Isn't this just product placement? It is product placement, Firefly. To safeguard the integrity of so glad. I will soar high into the sky and become its shiniest star. These are devils. I'll crush them all. Nah, I'd win. Elusive foretelling. Ill tidings manifest. Beneath the waters lies an endless abyss. You won't get away. Yay. I weep for the departed. It too shall fall. Yay. Perhaps you stick in Hit him with you that. Desire to control the heavens, and I'm no exception. Oh, man, that did not do damage. <laughs> For oblivion. I have something for you. Nice. Nice. Time for an overhaul. Stop hitting me. All right, we got him. He dead the now. The world kisses me with pain, and I provide with soul glad in return. Woo! Ooh, shit. Yeah, it's just a fucking product placement, yo. Fine, I'll pull it. No, my Get back to your home, okay? Fire physical imaginary. No, no, no. Okay, bye. Stream four. Of old oh, this is gonna get fun. Make a wish. Congratulations to our two dream chasers Let's for establishing go. yourselves as budding stars and So Chattagone. Where are we? Like three minutes However, now? Four? Now you. No matter how lengthy the battle, you always persevere. Topple this powerful opponent, and the tides will turn. Paving a way to success! None will take my soul glide away from me. Mm -hmm. I will use the transmutation arcanum to turn into a dinosaur! You, you already got there. You did it! You are the dinosaur! Oh, dinosaur! Devour my enemies! Grab a bottle of soul glide and make your dreams a blast! How much do you think they're getting paid for this? Honest question. How how much are they getting paid? Elusive foretelling. Ill tidings manifest. 
these or devils. I'll crush them all! Free will or wait on the still waters of oblivion. I weep for the departed. It too shall fall. Man, that would have been nice to just kill him. So I will. Still humanity never conceals its desire to control the heavens, and I'm no exception. Oh. What do you want to know? Oh, already dead. You won't get away. Memories beneath the water lies an endless abyss. I have something for you. I'm scared. Hit him, Hua Hua. Hua is the fucking best when it comes to hitting things. They gotta be getting paid like overtime for this. Ah, you truly are a beast. More than I can ever be. Time and a half at least. Huh. That should do it. Okay. Let's go. Mr. Yang is waiting for us. Mr. Yang? Isn't this fight way off from the actual storyline? Yes. Transforming into a dinosaur isn't imaginative enough for you? This is the sort of magic only seen on Penacony. Anyway, let's get back on track. Where were we? Oh, that's Sorry. right. Sorry, broke After the script there. After an extended there. battle, it you finally long. emerged victorious! But the companion who journeyed to Penacony with you chose to leave, having lost all hope. What's going on? In the years that followed, you encountered each other once more on the prosperous streets of Penacony. But dared not call out to one another. Huh? Perhaps akin to the lingering regret of every dream chaser. Oh, well done! You brought to life the thrilling action scenes from Once Upon a Time in Dreams with your fighting skills. Oh, they were action, yes. Looks like we won. Let's hurry up and get to the next stage. Okie dokie, but first, the treasure chest. Oh, hold on. There we go. Yeah. Oh, no, I don't want to fight them. I don't want to fight anyone right now. I only want to fight if I have to. Some like it hot. Very interesting. All right, next. Congrats to both of you for clearing the stage. But more importantly, are you having fun? <laughs> fun is more important than success. And look at the time. You finished much faster than that redhead contestant did. I did? Oh, sick and nice. That red hair contestant. Who is that exactly? Argentina. That's a country. Yes, I know. You'll find out eventually, but only if you clear the next test first. Welcome to the second stage of the 33rd, 33rd Scorch Sand Festival, Festival 20th, 20th season, season sponsored, sponsored by, by Soul Glad Enterprises. Enterprises. Gunfire time! Yeah. You have the option to choose Gunfire and undergo Brother Hanu's trial, or Time, where you'll face Clocky's trial. Now? What am I doing? Like, what do you mean? Like, what, am, what? What is. Oh, wait, I think I know what it is. I'm gonna pick Clocky. If it's what I think it's gonna be. Like, if it's those two mini games. I don't. I don't want to do Brother Hanu's because I'll be honest with you. Do not enjoy those that much. Alright. Time trial, gunfire trial. You know what? I might as well fuck it. I don't care. I don't care enough. I made a mistake. I don't care. Dear friends, welcome to the enchanting universe created by the Watchmaker. Thank you. you is the morally dubious yet ever charming character from the animated Clocky series, Hanu. Firefly. He's so fucking cool. 
It is said that these cartoon characters were inspired by the watchmaker's own experiences. According to research by clocky scholars, the original Hanu of reality shared a deep friendship with the watchmaker, akin to comrades in arms. Enter into the world of Hanu via the TV by the entrance and partake in an enchanting and suspenseful story with him. Good luck in there. I knew I made a mistake. If it's a gunfire trial, we should be able to settle this with a fight, right? I hope this won't waste too much of our time. I, we should be fine. Alright, here we go. Mm. Sir. What are you doing? You're wasting time! <laughs> yeah, I've seen a lot of birds. Yum, yum, yum! All right. Ready? One, two. Are we? Are we both in control of this Hanyu character? Quick, move to the left. Very good. <laughs> Looks like you've got the hang of it. In this Hanyu's adventure episode, Boss Stone has gathered his battleships for an assault on Dreamville. Old Buzzfly, Cousin Wolf, and Bobhead are all raring to go. The brave Hanu must thwart their advance and protect his home. Alas, Hanu presently is ill-equipped to fend off the malevolent mischief makers. We have to get the rocket launcher. He is preparing to seek out the puzzle gentleman's aid. Go forth and speak to him. Okie dokie, let's go. All right, Firefly, so I know you said we're both in control, but truthfully, it's me in control, okay? Watch. Watch and learn. Oh, brave Hanu. You look like you could really use some help. Are you speaking to me? Long time no see, Hanu. Yeah. You look pretty stressed out. Why is How that your voice? How about and thrilling game of Dream Jigsaw to blow off some steam? Fuck yeah! <laughs> Actually, the plot dictates that you directly provide aid to us. Let out a really cool sound. <laughs> it might be the coolest symph in history. Oh my! So fucking Are cool. You telling me that Boss Stone has rallied the villains to seize Dreamville? What a dreadful twist of fate! That is not what I said at all. Listen closely, Hanu. I just said I'm aware you're in need of a suitable weapon, and I also know there's one just upstairs. But you know what? You'll have to play an exhilarating round of Dream Jigsaw first. No Jigsaw, no moving forward. I hate you. Let out. That's not fair. You have to help me now. <laughs> what do the weapon and Jigsaw have to do with one another? Just run out a really cool sounding hmph. You make a cool hmph. Only someone as cool as you could produce such a cool hmph. Perfection. Now scurry along, Hanu. But tread carefully. Two ne'er-do-wells are also eyeing those jigsaw pieces. No! Either outsmart them with the quick knockout, or ensure they don't catch you in the act. I can't wait to see you finish the dream jigsaw. Best of luck, Hanu. I should have done the other Let's one. Stay alert and make sure those monsters don't spot us. Yes, I agree, Firefly. I could have, I could have told you that honestly. All right, we have to get up there. Don't worry, Firefly. I'm gonna commit. Look up there. If we. Yeah, we're I, uh, Firefly. I know. Let's see, I've done this maybe once before. All right, I've obtained a scattered jigsaw. I pulled out a bird. Let out a really cool sounding hoof. All right, distract them, please. You are not distracting them. Got it. Quickly, run. He ain't see shit. Guys, we're winning. Oh, oh, wait, you're down. Finally, that's all the jigsaw pieces. Let's hurry back. Oh, thank God, I'm so good at this game. All right, time for more dialogue. 
Oh no, this isn't dialogue, this is a puzzle. Oh no. Oh no. I got it. I got it. I got it. I got it. See, I got it. I got it, and... Oh my! The exquisite sensation of perfect alignment! My organizational itch has been quite thoroughly scratched. I have disappeared into the sea of butterflies, illusions of the past. Hurry now, Hanu. Touch that TV set and transform back into your old self. Then head upstairs. I'm noticing a problem no with bothering the fuck out there. of me. Are such haphazard instructions? Nope. I'm on Firefly. We got things to do. Disconnecting from that thing so suddenly has left me feeling slightly disoriented. Yeah, that's normal. You get used to it after the 80th that's time. Hanu? Holy shit, it's really him in the flesh. <laughs> Holy shit, that was so cool. <laughs> Holy fuck, this is cool as shit! Ah, uh, I know the answer for this one. <laughs> that was awesome. What exactly is he talking about? No fucking idea, man. It's time. It's time for me to make an appearance. All right. Ah, the plot thickens. Help. Clocky? Uh, I can also see him. Is this character part of the show? You can see this. Oh, no, that's not the real Clocky. In Dreamville, Clocky is everywhere and can do anything. Like right now. I can be your translator! Tick tock! <laughs> so what do you say? Hanu says, battle! We must do battle! Fuck yeah! <laughs> the enemy is at our doorstep! And we have no path of retreat! For the- <laughs> Alright, let's fucking do it! Touch that suspicious looking TV right now! Oh, that one? So they just- Jumped inside that TV. Correct. Sheesh. Logic in this plot and dialogue is really being pushed to its limits. Oh, don't worry. It doesn't make sense. Well, here we go again. Ready? Yeah! No, no, no! Uh, run them out of town. Yeah, we're wasting time with these things. I need to stop. <gasps> Treasure. It's morphin' time. I am gradually getting used to this. Huh. Who knows? I might even be able to perform some high-level moves with Hanu. Let's do it! Oh, did someone say high-level movies just now? That's right, pal. The upcoming script is just exploding with all sorts of high-level shenanigans. Firefly, you should be used to this one. We're going to grab an explosive. Last we saw, Haru was preparing for battle. Suddenly, he hears heavy footsteps coming from the hallway. The mischief makers have broken into his home. God damn it. But brave Haru won't go down without a fight. He instantly sprints for the storage room, ready for a do or die showdown against the baddies. But we still don't have any weapons in hand. I think what he's trying to say is go get the weapon. Guess what? Hanu's favorite bazooka just so happens to be in that storage Firefly! Room. <laughs> this is your moment! <sighs> what a coincidentally convenient plot twist. It'd be even more awesome if the organizers allowed me to wear armor. Don't talk about armor. They get suspicious. The storage room. It's behind the shelves, right? Son of a bitch. <sighs> he wasn't lying. There's actually a bazooka here. Correct. And we're gonna fire now it right at him. Have this thing feels just like the soaring locust too. Oh my god, you would know about the soaring locust. 
Well, Honor's dead. <laughs> the end. Oh, no, the not so unstoppable Honor has actually fallen. Quickly, return to the battlefield and seek revenge against the bad guys. You got it. Oh fuck. Oh, my. The unstoppable Honor has been spotted. Everyone, please proceed with caution. Hanu is getting fucking absolutely destroyed right now. Quick, we must hide. Alright, we got the Hanu launcher. Yay, I'm winning. <laughs> oh no. Don't worry. Careful. It looks like we've got more company. Get ready to fire. I know what to do. That was pretty cool, right? Oh, um, hi guys. Here we go again. But no big deal. We're pretty handy with this bazooka now. She's kind of getting a little too used to this. Guys, this is a problem. Kill streak. Do I get the tactical nuke? Quickly, head through the TV to the next thing. Do I get the tactical nuke? I'm gonna take it as a no. I do not get the tactical nuke incoming. Got it. This is the worst. Well, that's that. But it is gonna be hard to let go of this bazooka. Um. Never mind. <laughs> Let's hurry over to the next stage. Firefly, your Sam is showing. Chest. Yay. Little, little Caesar. Pizza, pizza. Oh no, we're just going. Okay, cool. Congratulations to both of you. Thanks. You've overcome all obstacles and proven yourselves. But uh, unfortunately, there is only one who can be Pentacone's festive superstar. In the final stage, you will face the defending champion. If you fail, you will lose the opportunity to become the festive superstar. I'm fighting Argentina, aren't I? Welcome to the 33rd Scorch Sand Festival's third stage in the 20th season. Sponsored, Sponsored by Soul Glad Enterprises. Superstar Showdown. Man, can't wait to never hear those words again. Alright, get into the pinball. We're gonna get fucking launched into the stratosphere. How big is this place, man? Bam. I really don't get much of a choice on this one. Uh, I get to go to Superstar Gina 1 or Superstar Gina 2. <laughs> I've got those backwards. <laughs> uh, yeah, that one. Alright, we're gonna fight. Oh, yay, it's Argentina! <laughs> Fuck! I need to remember your weaknesses, no man. Way. I think I just saw someone. Someone extraordinary. No! He's not! Yeah. Oh, God. It's him. The extraordinary one. Oh, God. Make a wish.
Um, you could talk. Uh, by the glory. Oh, it would appear that uh, they couldn't get the voice actor for this one. Or my game is broken. Uh, but by the glorious light of beauty, I never thought I would see you again. Uh, I know. Are you a knight of beauty? That is absolutely who that is. Will you be participating in the Charmonia Festival as well? Upon hearing the impending festival, I commanded the one and only to bring me to Penacote with full haste. Alas, I'm pretty good at Argentina. Uh, alas, at the cosmos unguarded by the beauty. Disor oh, he moves his face as well. Uh, disorder prevails. Thus, my passage was delayed by tending to the sick and injured. Oh, well, this is a good dude. Fortunately, the mini rabbit mech pilot, stray cat duelist, galactic ninja, and quad drive into... Intilleration law. Okay, yeah, okay, okay, I got it. Yeah, what save the world? What a righteous act of beauty if that's the case. No, that won't do. The rules of the contest are sacred and unviable, just like the beauty. Um, I'm begging you, all I speak is the truth. Believe me. Hmm. I cannot present. Oh, man. All right, well, I guess we're gonna have to fight. Oh, okay, well. Just, let's just start the fight. Come on. Listen. Argentina, we gotta we gotta fight now. Thank you. Anyways. Oh nope, we can talk now! The symbol of Ow! An elusive foretelling. It's the song! Ill tidings no manifest. Flesh I'm gonna hold everyone back again! Oh flesh food. Another journey begins. Destiny for oblivion. I weep for the departure. Bro, I only got one. It too shall fall. Time for an overhaul. Confess. Familiar. Put forth all your might. Say, hey, stop cheating, you fuck. These are devils. I'll crush them all. Uh. Give me strength. Don't worry. It's just a script. Still oh, still water is a challenge. Perhaps you still humanity never conceals its desire to control the heavens, and I'm no exception. Stop! Stop! <laughs> I'm gonna hold everyone back again. Got the Free. All right. What? Okay. Well, what are you doing? What is that? When an ally turn starts. Oh, uses her ultimate. Restore HP to 3.7. Okay, plus 84. At the same time, every ally currently have to tier. Okay. Destined for oblivion. I'm gonna save. I gotta save my I shit. I have something for you. Nope, nope, we're not. Memories are beneath the water lies an endless abyss. I am realizing I the grave the mistake of that air. It too shall fall. Behold, this symbol of peel. That is way too much. Isn't chosen. Uh. I make. I have. Regret, I have regrettable decisions I've just made. All right, you hit. <laughs> Still waters of oblivion. The flesh wound. Uh oh. Confess. Yep. He is cheating. Yeah, he's cheating. Yeah, he's cheating. He's up to his shenanigans again. He's cheating. He's cheating. He's cheating. Seals its desire to control the heavens, and I'm no exception. Give me strength. Don't worry, it's just a script. I weep for the departed. It too shall fall. God, that's not good. Put forth all your might. Stop. Cheating! You are fighting a jet. Come 
god, I hate him! Oh my god, I hate him! Fucking bitch! Perhaps you still don't hear anything that never conceals its desire to control the heavens, and I'm no exception. Fiends or devils? I'll crush them all! Put forth all your might! <sighs> God, he is so fucking cheating right now. Much obliged. Huh. Got a lot of nerve. Please. No. Stop. Okay. Hell is over. <laughs> Scumbag. We don't have much time. May fate allow us to meet again. Night of beauty. Thank you. Have a great day. In that you case, cheating bastard. let's make our way to the end. You cheating bastard. Anaconi's really thronging with talent. I hope we make it in time. Bro, Black Swan, get back. Thank you. Good work, Wawa. But at what cost? I lost Black Swan. Congratulations to the Galactic Baseballer and Firefly on becoming this Scorch Sand Festival champion! Sorry, I had to take care of some business. We look forward to their amazing entrance in the Charmony Festival! Um. That's just me. What about? Okay, I guess I'll take all the credit. Thanks, guys. Oh, hi, guys. We met up again. Congratulations to the both of you on becoming the festive superstars of this year's Charmony Festival. Before entering the Grand Theater, I, on behalf of the organizers, extend my sincere congratulations to you. Wishing you joy under their radiance. Hey, Sunday, how's it going? Where are my stuff? <laughs> you already worked things out with the Dream Master? As previously promised, my sister, Mr. Yang, and I have met with the Dream Master. We delved into the truth about Penaconi and its Stellaron, and have come to a consensus. Both I and the Oak family cannot acquiesce to your request. Neato. Cool. So Sunday's a bad guy. Whippy doo. Um. As expected. Whippy. We acknowledge the perspective of you, nameless. Penaconi does require change, but not as you propose. The planet of festivities cannot and will not revert to a place characterized by chaos, disorder, or anarchy. Through your journey of overcoming obstacles, you must have glimpsed the essence of that era. The vulnerable ruthlessly eliminated. Equality non-existent. Common folk living precarious lives, eking out a dreary existence. Bro. Ultimately, 
Only heroes like yourselves manage to achieve success. Yeah, so you should maybe comply. But I would dare ask, if you did not possess the special status of having a stellar... Hey, we don't talk about that about to the public. They're, they're not ready to know what I'm built with. <laughs> which Penacony would you prefer? A dystopia for the survival of the fittest? Or a sweet dream paradise for all? I don't know why you're asking me. There's nothing wrong with being the fittest. Uh, nothing wrong? That's not the point. Don't let him mislead you. Absolutely. Mr. Sunday, even if the members of the Oak family can't fully agree on what to do about the Stellaron, now's not exactly the time to be holding an extensive discourse about Penacony's past and future, is it? The Stellaron issue concerns the life and death of everyone on Penacony. If anyone has a better suggestion, the crew is more than willing to listen. Also, it'd be best to tell us the ins and outs of that meeting. This way, we'll at least know what Welt and Miss Robin are dealing with, and the reason why they failed to make our appointment. Ah, Navigator. That is precisely my intention. With all present, let's begin by discussing the details of that meeting. All right. Okay, just turn it to the fucking boss. I know it's you. Let's talk about our tribulations and choices. Our ideals and beliefs. You know what's fucking insane? I thought Gallinger was like gonna be the bad guy, but really he's just he just wanted to like gather everybody for what he could have just done was a coffee a coffee gathering, but it turned out to be a uh murdered but not murdered gathering. And uh he was actually kinda like within some realm of like reason. Whereas this guy's just a fucking scumbag. And our final course of action. The only path to take. Alright. Do the thing. Alright. Are we switching POVs right now? No, we're not. A while ago. Oh, yay. We're going to find out. That, that for the longest time, there have been scoundrels who would use this the charm festival, festival that I have bequeathed to the masses as a tool to realize their ambition. Indeed, Dream Master. Once the Charmony Festival begins, the Stellaron's powers, along with the song, will be broadcast across the entire planet of Penacony. And then everyone in their dreams will be unable to awaken. Hmm. This, this is, is indeed surprising to me. I love it. <laughs> the dreamscape is maintained by the collective effort of the five families. If someone were to use the Charm Festival to recklessly disseminate the power of the Stellaron, this individual must hold a position of great authority. Do you have any such? I'd like to ask, did you really not know of the Stellaron's existence? Hmm. I would have never thought that this nameless would point the spear at me. Quite astonishing indeed. I, he simply asked, did you not know about it? Didn't say anything about, hey, fuckface, you're lying. Tell me about how you know about the Stellaron. If I have offended, the Astral Express extends its sincere apologies. But the current circumstances are dire and leave no room for meticulous inquiry. We're doing this out of concern for the Dreamscape's safety. So, if you could, please alleviate our concerns. Dream Master, it's just to prove that the Charmony Festival has nothing to do with the Stellaron. If we're being overly cautious, I will return to the stage to offer tribute in song, just per the arrangement. <sighs> Sunday, Robin. Yep. I've watched you two grow up. You did? And know your dispositions like the back of my hand. Both of you, right now, can surely be lauded as their most devout advocates. I already know your resolve. The magnitude of this matter is enormous. Yes. And cannot be taken lightly. Since Mr. Yang has asked with such earnestness, I will personally respond in kind. 
If there is a need, the entire Oak family will be mobilized to heed your call. Someday, might I ask you to beseech them to cast their light unto me and question me in their stead so that no lies may be concealed? I will do as you command. Robin, could I entrust you to be present as a witness, to document the truth, and, and to, to proclaim, proclaim my innocence, so that, that all slander may be utterly dispelled. I will do as you command. May thy will be carried out on earth, just as it is in the heavens. Oh, triple-faced soul, please sear his tongue and palms with a hot iron, so that he will not be able to fabricate lies and make false vows. Let us begin. Up, oh, yep, cool drugs. There's nothing else to prepare. Understood. Question. Have you devoted your life to your god? Never worshipping other gods? What kind of fucking question is this? Ask the fucking question, Stellaron! Naturally. Do you love your god as you do yourself? Stellaron! Always heeding their admonishments. Naturally. You are going easy on him! Stellaron! Have you strayed from the path expected by your god, betraying their name? Never. Have you ever been inordinate with your asks of your god, coveting more than the foundation of the creation itself? Never. Oh my fucking god! Then, a final question. Stellaron! Do you swear to fulfill all vows, past, present, and future? You're useless! <laughs> With the Eon as my witness, if I do not deliver on my words, or if I renege on my vows, may I be cursed in accordance with divine law. Is that an ad for the al album over there? That's neat. They have seen your faith and have endorsed your faith. With this, it can be evidenced. Just a moment. <laughs> He's like, yeah, are we just gonna like, not talk about the Stellaron? What is it, Mr. Yang? I have another question I hope to have answered. To my understanding, the family's harmony and prosperity have never relied on so-called divine laws. The God you both mentioned, are they truly Shipei? Mr. Yang should know that those belonging to the family toil together as if they were king, embracing solidarity and unity under their light. All duplicity is laid bare before the harmony. Such a delicate and complex symphony. Which other god could perfectly harmonize this, if not for the great one, she may. Perfectly harmonize it. Therein lies the problem. It isn't an outsider lurking in the shadows who dare approach the me, harmony, but a dissonance that has surreptitiously emerged from within this very symphony itself. In the distant past, there existed an eon. With one flick of the wrist, they crafted the laws of the cosmos. Their followers formed the Beyond the Sky Choir. Sp Later, they fell. The route traversed by this eon clashed with the harmony, ultimately being absorbed and fused into it. Okay. The chorus that once reverberated across worlds fell silent, and when it echoed anew, it was transformed into the Hymn of Harmony. Though an eon may perish, paths with no masters still linger. In the all-forgiving harmony, echoes of bygone dissonance may subtly arise. Mr. Yang. What the fuck? Being overly astute can be a detriment. Especially when you find yourself alone and without allies. I don't think you understand the power this man has. Hmm. So this is how it is. For the sake of our grand cause, Sunday, please afford these two an opportunity to rest. Wait, what, Robin too? What?
sorry, Robin. It's just you... I did not wish for you to know this. <sighs> it's a pity that things have turned out this way. Well, we're fucking his shit up. So, this is the true reason I can't sing? The shadow that envelops Panacone is actually... We were never children of the Harmony. Our ideal paradise could not have been crafted by Shipe. True bliss can only be guaranteed by the one who transcends the many. Oh! That's neat! Within the foundation of law, humanity establishes civilization. Mr. Yang came in and said, it's not Zipe, is it? And they're, and they're like, fuck? <laughs> and through harmony, we obtain order. All right, well, I guess we're... Unbelievable. To think that there would be remnants of the order on Penacony. What have you done with Mr. Yang and Miss Robin? Yeah, your sister. Your sister. Dude, your sister. What the fuck is wrong with you? Don't worry. I just gave them some time alone to ponder their fates. You should know that these actions make you an enemy of the Astral Express. Yep, you're done fucked up now! <laughs> Should we need to stand against the Nameless? It would only be myself and the Oak family involved. But we haven't reached that point yet. No, I think have we, we have. No, we have. Your efforts for the justice of Panacone are evident to everyone and have been widely observed. Bring it. All right, give Mr. Yang back to us now! Oh, I intend to. But that hinges on the outcome of this negotiation. If it is the order that drove you to imprison Welt and Robin, and you're using them to coerce our compliance, then there'll be no point in entertaining any type of discussion. You are mistaken, Miss Himiko. They are in very safe hands. And just as the family has always proclaimed, no one can be harmed in the dreamscape. Least of all in the beautiful new world belonging to the Order. Panacone and the entire universe have witnessed far too much innocent I, You gotta bloodshed. feel bad for Robin to discover that the her god isn't the god she thought it was. Or maybe she still follows Harmony in. The brink of life. And she's been like under this ruse of like, I follow Harmony. The, Harmony is my thing. Zipe is the thing. And then they're like, uh, yeah, so we're Order actually. It's like, not me. Natural selection. The world abides by this principle, establishing the well-being of humanity atop the corpses of the downtrodden. Only we, or rather, I, possess the power to put an end to this farce. So you've decided to resurrect a dead Eon? No one's ever done such a thing. That's pretty interesting, actually. Let's find out how that works out. If Miss Himiko is interested, let's draw back the veil and speak candidly. I've always firmly believed that people can understand one another through peaceful means. Okie dokie. I'm willing to divulge the unembellished truth as to the intentions of the Order's path striders, so that you will make better judgment for the Astral Express, for Panacone, and for this stretch of the universe. Yeah, hey, I wonder how Boot Hill and Don Hunger are doing right now. To the beauty of that huh. ideal. So, come with me, everyone. Let us retrace our steps and see once again where this road leads. Once again, I wonder how Don Hung and Boot Hill are doing. Huh? Where'd he go? <laughs> Disappear among the sea of butterflies. Welcome. This isn't any location in Penacone's dreamscape. It's my inner world. The reason the scenery before you remains Bro, unchanged it changed. is because your consciousness has drawn on similar concepts to fill in the gaps. Bro, I want to get out of your head. Who in their right mind would expose this? Their, yeah, like, what the fuck, man? You're so fucking weird. That means... Did you do the same to Welt? It's a tuning process. Stronger in effect and more draining on the mind. Bro, I should have let Argentina the gray -haired win. gray-haired <laughs> guest has experienced it before, so she should understand what it entails. 
Huh? Tuning allows you to intuitively grasp my feelings, which also means that I cannot hide anything from you. All right, well, tell me everything, scumbag. Now, everyone, please look at the huge screen. The road we once took begins here. All right. From this point on, you will witness the numerous decisions I've faced. I've selected a portion of these to share with you. All right, before we continue, I have to realize something, that uh, Robin is not committing crimes anymore. Uh, actually, that's somebody completely different at this point, so I have to change the text here. So, uh, Sunday commits crimes. Okay. That's way better. I believe after going through similar predicaments, you'll be able to better understand my thoughts. Hello there, Jump Games. Let's begin. The first decision. A story about a baby bird. About a baby bird. This story happened when Robin and I were very young. Mm -hmm. We were victims of the Stellaron disaster. And the family's Mr. Gopher Wood, who would later become the he Dream goes Master for Wood. What a man. Saw that we siblings had no one to turn to and took us in. I'm definitely not the first person who made that joke. Later on, Robin and I lived the time with nary a care in the world. One day, after dinner, while my younger sister and I were lounging about in Mr. Gopher Wood's yard, we spotted a fledgling Charmony dove all on its own. Oh. Huh. Yeah, no, I really like this, uh, the chat thing, too. It's really cool. I'm glad you like it. That baby bird was tiny. It didn't even have all of its feathers. Right, we talked about it. And it couldn't it. sing. Right. When we found it, it was already on its last breath, mm -hmm. having fallen into a shrub, probably abandoned by its parents. Yeah, possibly. We decided to build a nest for it right there and then. However, thinking back, that winter was unusually cold. Yeah. With fierce winds at night in the yard, not to mention the many poisonous bugs and wild beasts in the vicinity. Was that just something Winter brought, or was that an in-general thing? It was clear that if we left the fledgling in the yard, it stood no chance of surviving until spring. So, I suggested we take it inside, place it on the shelf by the window, and asked the adults to fashion a cage for it. Yeah, I wanted to include YouTube still, but, like, I can't fit... Twitch and YouTube in the same like vicinity so YouTube had to take the fucking hit plus there's more interactivity with Twitch here and I'm also realizing that YouTube side has privacy problems because uh, someone was chatting earlier uh, someone was chatting earlier on the YouTube side and it was showing I think their Google profile picture not their YouTube profile picture so and that's probably something that you don't want to expose. So I might have to scrap the YouTube window, honestly. We decided that when it would regained suck. its strength enough to spread its wings, we would release it back into the wild. The tragic part, something that we'd never considered, was that this bird's fate had already been determined long before this moment. Hmm. Its destiny was determined by our momentary whim. Okay. Now, I pass the power of choice to you all. Faced with this situation, what choice would you make? Stick to the original plan, and build a nest with soft net where the Charmony Dove fell. Yes. Or build a cage for it, and feed it, giving it the utmost care from within the warmth of a home. I eagerly await your... Alright, cool. Well, I'm on Robin's side. Oh, right, I should ask the others. Okay, hey. Hey, Himiko, how it you It looks like he really has no intention of imprisoning us. If it's just a quiz, I suppose it's fine to humor him. Wait, you weren't there five seconds ago. Back to the question. Were you? I would personally choose to build the little Charmony Dove a cage. What the fuck is wrong with you, Himiko? No special reason. I do think that a fledgling should have the right to fly into the sky. But if it can't even live to that point, then there's nothing to talk about to begin with. I see. I see. 
All right. Firefly. I can't decipher his intentions right now, but mm. based solely on that question, I would probably choose to build that dove a cage. What the fuck? I am not the headphone crusher. Even if I was going to release it God. back into the sky, it'd have to be strong enough to fly first. I fucking hate that, actually. If I left it... <sighs> that guy just casually throws this kind of question at us? I know, right? What exactly is his deal? But fine. I'll answer, I guess. If it were me, I guess I'd choose to build a cage for the little Charmony Dove. After all... Leaving it there, it's bound to get hurt by wild animals or something. And that'd just be too sad. Fuck, fine. I guess I'll answer what everybody else is saying. Fuck, it's three to one, I guess. Majority rules. Make the decision. I'm happy to see that you made a choice similar to ours. If your mind is made up, let me reveal the outcome of this choice. We passionately nursed it back to health. Preparing only the best food for it every day. We even preened its feathers. Later, on the day that Robin left Penacony, yep, we opened the cage door and let it fly back into the sky. And what happened? I watched it for a long while by the window. Probably about three or so days. In those three long days, the little Charmony Dove tried again and again to spread its wings to fly into the sky, but fell to the ground, only to keep trying. Finally, on the hundred and thirty-seventh attempt, it succeeded, but its attempt did not go perfectly. After flying unsteadily for a while, it fell to the ground, unable to grasp the direction of the air currents. The fall shattered its wings. Yikes. It writhed helplessly in my embrace. But it was all for naught. Finally succumbing to a painful demise. And in that instant, our tender care, our given love and hopes, they all became the inevitable push that sent it to its death. I deeply regret the choices we made. Next, let us head to the second decision. This time, it's the story of a dream chaser. Okie dokie, let's go, this next question. This story happened when I was appointed as Bronze Melodia. Oh, that's pretty A position important. exclusive to the Oak family, charged with listening to the problems and vexations of dreamscape residents, and providing them with the relevant guidance. It was during that period that I had the opportunity to hear voices from all corners of the dreamscape. Well, that's not fun. Joy, sorrow, arrogance, regret. The complex tapestry of human nature that formed the world. And I was fortunate to catch a glimpse of it. He right. was a dream chaser. Ah, him. And an illegal stowaway. Just like the rest of them, he came to Panacone in search of a better life, except that... Was, was Panacone America? The price he paid. I suppose you could say it was everything. He told me, I sold everything I could at home. The house, the land, even his two children. He sold his children. <laughs> he said he could not afford to raise them, and that at least they could eat if they lived as slaves. He had a plan in place. He would buy back his children once he had made his fortune. Uh huh. And enjoy Panacone's beautiful dream with them. Alas, his plan to smuggle himself was somewhat clumsy. Uh. And he was sniffed out by those pig headed hounds. Oh. After hearing the Dream Chaser's story, I immediately appealed to the Bloodhound family to cease their pursuit. That way. At least he could live peacefully. Right. But I was still too naive to the ways of the world. Oh, well, this is a long time ago. I did ago. not anticipate that what I thought was a kind gesture would later lead to dire consequences. So... I'll tell you the outcome soon. For now, 
I'd like you all to make a choice. Will you do as I did? And try to convince the Bloodhound family to stop their pursuit? Mm -hmm. So that the Dream Chaser may live peacefully and realize his wishes? Yeah, probably. Or will you remain silent? Leaving him to languish while the hounds are hot on his heels until his inevitable judgment arrives. I look forward to everyone's decisions. Who knows? Perhaps they might even alter the outcome of this tragedy. Tragedy? All right, Himiko, what do you think? A dream chaser story. If I acted out of kindness, I would probably ask the bloodhounds to stop their pursuit and lend him a hand, but... What cruel repercussion would this choice result in? I think... Sunday must have been deeply impressed by the limitations of the strong defending the weak through this... Okay. What do you think, Firefly? This question... Surely it has some connection to the baby bird story. Right. And this connection is precisely the breakthrough Sunday aims to use to persuade us. I'd probably choose to ask the Bloodhounds to cease their pursuit. Bro, we're on- we're, we're picking all of his answers, and to be fair, they're all really good answers. These illegal stowaways are really quite common on Penacony. Don't talk about the one but behind us. But that guy us. in the story, I don't think he deserves any sympathy at all. He sold his kids to chase a dream. Even if he intended to go back March for that, 7th with a different he's answer! <laughs> with that thought, there's only one choice. Let the Bloodhound send him back home. Holy shit. This person deserves to be punished. March 7th! Wow! Holy fuck! Out for blood! Going for the jugular! Look at her go! Okay. Hmm. You know, Mark Seven has made, made me think about uh, your two, you guys' two decisions over there. I need to collect this. This is important to me. But you know, uh, but March Seventh, going for the jugular over there. Meanwhile, we got the other two over here who are just like, just, 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 but just fine. Okay. Do we go for the jugular with March Seventh, or do we listen to these two? <sighs> Keep in mind, March 7th has been trapped in a block of ice for God knows how long. Um, uh, uh, Firefly over here is a, is a robot. And Himiko dies in the other game. <laughs> oh, God. Fuck me. I'm sorry. Uh, I'm sorry I'm so new to this, but I'm here to learn. You, you're gonna, it's okay. We learn We learn as we go around these parts in Star Rail, my friend. Um, I, I, I'm kind of liking March 7th, honestly, with this one. Why am I thinking so hard about this? Dude, these results can't be that serious. Uh, you know what? March... I'm sorry. Oh, uh, well, I convinced the Bloodhounds. I'm honored to witness you arriving at the same decision. Out of respect, I'll share with you the dire consequences that my choice back then brought about. All right, let's find out what First, happened. First, the outcome. He attained major success. Oh, that's good for him. After avoiding capture, he ran a business for a few years very quickly making a name for himself, elevating his status. Well, that's nice. So he, he got his kids, right? He not a tycoon like old Artie, but he was considered a character of excellent repute. So he went to go get his kids, right? Now then, did he realize the wish he set out to achieve? No. The last time I saw him was in the real world, where the hounds were going to permanently exile him, and I was the accompanying bronze melodia. The mission was simple. Listen to the criminal's repentance. He told me the reason he was in this predicament was because he conspired to usurp the head of the Alfalfa family. When I asked him about his two children, he instead responded with a question. What children? Oh, we should have went with March 7th on this one. In the end, my heart aligned with the harmony. 
and the good deed I dared to undertake held no value, turning instead into a wrongdoing. It created a lamentable oppressor and countless oppressed individuals. As to your choice, I once again offer my heartfelt apologies. Next comes the third and final decision. Probably shouldn't we have March 7th on this one. I'm feeling bad now. And the story this time is my own. All right. So why this was I a bully to my own sister? The day I was appointed the Oak family. Nope. Head. This is a while ago. At that time. Mr. Gopherwood. Mr. Gopherwood was the current dream master. And as for his wish, we had a private conversation. So let me share that private conversation. What surprised me was that the dream master had only come to deliver a letter to me. He let me read its contents, and it was a letter from my sister. Oh, Robin! The letter contained the usual pleasantries, anecdotes from her travels, nothing out of the ordinary. Just as I started wondering how this letter related to our discussion, the Dream Master began to speak. Do you know who wrote this letter? I would hope it's my sister. My sister, of course. But why would you personally visit me to hand me a letter from my sister containing mere trivialities? No, it was me! I wrote the letter! Fuck you! <laughs> to help you grasp the full scope of this issue, do you know where Robin is <laughs> at this moment? From what the letter indicates, she must be in Caspelina 8, correct? She's touring there right now. Correct. <laughs> Has she mentioned anything about a stray... A stray bullet? What? Well, okay. Now, now, I don't think she has any reason to mention about bullets and shit like that when she's not in immediate danger, I guess? She didn't die. A war has broken out on that planet. It is because of this very reason that Robin chose this destination. To bring peace? To spread the word of the harmony. And to save the lives of that planet. She personally made for the front lines. Honestly? Good for her. She hoped to ease the people's suffering with song, and was willing to brave mortal danger to deliver the IPC's medical supplies. Unfortunately, stray bullets show no such compassion. Hello there, Hal. How you doing? Is she all right? Yep, she didn't get hit. If the operation was successful, she should probably be recovering in the field hospital. By the eon above, the bullet struck her neck directly. Holy shit! Possibly as a reward for her consistent deeds Still of Still sick, yeah. It didn't hit any vital arteries. Once you've attended to your outstanding tasks, it'd be advisable to write her back as soon as possible. Wow. Those... Damn savages! I'll pack my bags right away. My gratitude for bringing this to my attention, Mr. Gopherwood. Now you understand why she always wears such elaborate neck ornaments, don't you? Oh. How could this happen? Miss Robin? It's all in the past, so please don't worry. I share this in the meager hope that you will understand the harmonies limitation a singer got shot in the neck didn't As hit Randy any vital says, organs and she still sings to this day many times what a fucking trooper wishful thinking if i got shot in the neck i'd be like i'm done fuck it likewise i've prepared one last question one last choice but rest assured this choice will not have any grave consequences because this is merely a figment of imagination. Okay. A nightmare that has haunted me through countless nights. If you ever had the opportunity to make a choice like I did, would you still support Robin's journey on the path of harmony? Well, of course. Uh, yeah, I would support Robin. Miss Robin's courage is admirable. And here I was thinking she was just another superstar celebrity. 
Pull Robin yet? Yeah, we got Robin. We got Robin in a light cone. But the fact we got the person who got shot in the neck. Sunday's younger sister? No, I doubt he'd wish harm on his own flesh and blood. No matter how grand the ambition. So what's your choice, Firefly? Oh, hi. I often feel like I've dreamt of similar scenes on certain nights. Hmm. In the dream, I see blurry faces. I don't know who they are, but I sympathize with all of them. Fighting for survival against some unfathomable force. Their confusion and fear are lucid to me. But I also remember they chose never to give up. Correct. If Mr. Sunday's question leaves you puzzled, you should find the answer from your own experiences with each trailblaze. Dangers and tribulations will surely follow. Like right now! But would you ever back away? Would you stop March and Don Hung from reaching their next destination? No. I believe you have an answer of your own in your heart. And Stellaron. There's an answer in that Stellaron of yours. I can sense it. You can't believe that happened to Miss Robin. The strong defending the weak is a great mantra, right. but if I had to pay such a price... I... I don't know what I'd do. I don't know either. C cool. Good discussion, everybody. I'd still support Robin. I will make this choice. <laughs> I see. I am now aware of everyone's stances. So, uh, we're gonna fight now, right? Raising these questions merely serves to illustrate one point. The plight of Panacone cannot be salvaged by the harmony. The true foundation for a sweet dream paradise can only be established through the order where the strong govern the weak. It's just the road. Bothering me a little bit there. <laughs> I know the suffering of being tormented. The turmoil of losing your way. How sorrow and even despair set in when matters don't work out. All of this causes me unending pain because this is not what happiness is at all. Okay. We must teach the weak how to live a happy life. And this life isn't some noble propriety that the upper crust preaches, but in definitive terms, a way of survival that belongs to everyone. So what is your definition of living a happy life? Yeah. Huh. Good question. Human consciousness is fundamentally an illusion. A cage known as self-worth. People lured in by this illusion make mistakes, yet still ask that external influences bear the burden. When one mistake after the next permeates the masses, they become impossible to trace. Thus, the amassing of these individual cages culminate Robin to Robin looks like she's ready prison, to fight. <laughs> a place dictated only by the rule of survival of the fittest. Nature is always accompanied by predation and sacrifice. Its antithesis is known as order. That is what I want to do. Unite people's happiness under the banner of order. They won't need to make bitter choices any longer, nor face the weaknesses of humanity. They can cast aside their primal instincts to build a haven for mankind. <sighs> Simply describing thoughts is far too abstract. So allow me to provide a simple example. Okay. As you all may know, there are societal norms like weekends and long weekends that exist on some worlds. Fuck yeah! That's what I'm talking about, a long weekend! Let's get one of those in! During these hard-earned rest days, people are given the chance to extricate themselves from the stresses of everyday life. 
allowing a certain tranquility to return to their souls. Bro is speaking real life right now. What the fuck? And it is only on these. And he's literally the name of a day on the weekend. The law where the strong prey on the weak. Fucker. They can live out their the lives happily during these Sunday? brief intermissions. <laughs> it's just a pity that two or three days are still too fleeting compared to the span of a lifetime. Yeah, this will bully. This this won't be a fucking pain in the ass of, for a bully in the, in the in the near future. Let's name him after a day of the week. From where I stand, society's ideal system should be seven rest days. Following Sunday, there that's should ensue you? a second, a third, and indeed an infinite procession of Sundays. No, no, we don't need more Sundays. The There's a face of the new bleeding. world. Idyllic, eternal, peaceful days. Bro, we don't need 40 Sundays. It's fine. And thus... Every person can return to their base Whoa, selves in this the text utopia. Moved. Some gaze in reverence at the stars, pouring their whole beings into calculating the distance between us and the isolated world of Pagana. Meanwhile, some seek refuge in quiet corners, holding one another, unencumbered by the chains of unwelcome obligations. There would be no need to bear the hardships of reality. Only in this way can humanity face the inevitable end with the purest of spirit. Living a life of dignity. This is what it is to live in bliss. Miss Firefly, you who are stricken with entropy loss syndrome. How the syndrome, fuck do you just know this? <laughs> you of all would surely understand this. <sighs> Like a flawless theory. <sighs> Bro, we cannot agree with this. But what is the price to attain all this? The cost is minute, merely a personal and eternal sacrifice. If this paradise is to be maintained for everyone, Someone must remain trapped in solitary wakening until the end of the cosmos. Is that you? No, because you were in the real world. Which means that this so-called paradise is still a dream. Stepping into this paradise means forsaking reality, correct? Yeah, I guess. I mean, that's why you're able to stand as Firefly here. As Firefly. It is not forsaking, but transcending. Flesh, blood, sorrow, weakness. If the physical is the root of spiritual suffering, it is only logical that we defeat it. Right. But in this supposed bliss, people won't have defeated their demons. Nope. The chance to overcome their tribulations would be forever lost to them. In other words, it is an escape. Yeah. That's another way of understanding it. But there is no shame in escape. On the contrary, the seeds of escape exist in everyone's hearts. Don't you agree, Miss Firefly? And as to why we sleep, it is because we are afraid to awaken from our dreams. Bro, I can't remember half my fucking dreams anymore, so honestly, whatever. But this is not in conflict with the grand plan. Only in acknowledging this can we truly understand the frailty of human nature. And from there, show compassion and protection. I... I admit that you are a born leader. Okay. Your perspective on humanity brims with pessimism. Yet you express compassion for all. Even when your heart pities them. But unlike you, I live for the self. From my perspective, individuals making choices for themselves is their birthright. She literally has a fucking, like, disease that's, like, killing her. And she's like, fuck you, man. 
The want to escape may be innate in the weak. But whether they are weak or not, it is not up to another to decide. Perhaps in your mind, you also view me as weak? Oh shit. I'm gonna lurk for a bit, but I've got audio turned off. Spoilers, you know. Smart. <laughs> because I don't think so. Since Miss Firefly has said her piece, the Astral Express will also naturally give you our answer. Because we're <laughs> because we're not on the same team. <laughs> we'll leave it to you. Just as Mr. McHale instructed before. Tell him our choice. Oh no, you're putting this on me? Oh no. Not long ago. What do you what mean? What is this place? Misha. Oh no. Does this place ring any bells, Misha? Bells? Hi, bellboy. <laughs> I. I don't know. But I feel a sense of. Deja vu. You're gonna get stabbed. What is this place? Get ready to get stabbed. It's the realm within a dream bubble. This was left to the Astral Express by a nameless. But weirdly, when we entered it, it was completely empty. Okay, not getting stabbed. Dr. Edward from the Dreamscape sales store told me that dreams are formed from memories. And a dream bubble can't take shape if its core is empty. Right. So I thought... You might be able to help us in unraveling this mystery, Misha. As a hotel doorman, you know Panacone best among us. Hmm. I... I don't know much about dream bubbles. I just... I just work if here. You want to this <laughs> I'll do my best. I, I just work here. <laughs> I'm counting on you then. Uh, Himeko, I still don't get it. Why were you so sure that Misha had a connection with this dream bubble? I wasn't sure. It was just a hunch. Wild guess. But since Misha feels familiar with this place, my hunch might be correct. This place feels a bit nostalgic. Like the first time Robin... Robin? It's like the first time Firefly almost died. The second time she almost died was, well, when she died, but actually didn't die. It does look a bit familiar. Exactly. This is where you and Firefly encountered death. Right? Which we now no, know that's as sleepy. <laughs> Considering its connection to Dream Flux, I can't Reef, his name's it's sleepy. not surprising it appeared here. The question now is who brought you here? Based on the clues we have so far, it's unlikely to be that masked fool. So identifying them is crucial to us. It's Sparkle. I know it. We're drawing closer to the truth once more. Let's give Misha some time, as I believe he'll unveil the secret of this dream bubble. How are you so certain in these things? You know what? You're Himiko. All right, but there are doors all over the place. Which one should we choose? <laughs> Misha just turns around and be like, Do you have any that answer, one! <laughs> we, we're like, okay, fair enough. <laughs> hmm. I guess... What the fuck? Maybe this way? Uh, I'm not entirely sure, but let's give it a try. Oh, fuck. You're running. Oh, shit. Wait, you managed to choose the right... Weird. This place is <laughs> quite different from the hotel. That one! <laughs> I just... I feel like I've been here before and even lived here for a while. If I remember correctly, there should be a fireplace down that hallway. Clocky and I used to sit by the fire, listening to the crackling of firewood. No, no fireplace. And, and the room on the other side was the toy room. Yeah. I loved spreading out all the toys from the box on the floor and making up stories for each of them. Hold on. This doesn't make sense. Didn't I grow up in Dreamflux Reef? So, what is this place? Who are you? This could be a case of amnesia. But don't worry, Misha. It's everyone gets everyone amnesia. To forget certain <laughs> aspects of the past. 
those memories haven't vanished. They're just lying in the depths of your mind. We can surely get them back. Since this place seems familiar to you, why don't we explore a few more rooms? Yeah, let's do that. And see if you can recall anything more. Yeah, then let's check out the rooms I just mentioned. Okie dokie, let's go to the fireplace room. Oh, it's actually is. Oh, look, fireplace. Oh. All right, toy room. I heard some noises from the room. Origami bird? Origami bird! That's a friend of mine. Origami bird! You and origami bird are friends? Bestest of friends. Yeah. It's a member of the compass crew. Just like Clocky and Miss Mirror. And there's more than just one origami bird. They are a big family with lots of brothers and sisters who lots look the same. Birds. They follow Miss Mirror's orders and handle all sorts of jobs on the ship. They're the best sailors. Wow. Sailors? Can origami birds be sailors? They could be whatever they want to be, March. You don't don't tell origami bird that. Could you tell us more about the compass, Misha? Tell us more about the origami bird. The compass is a ship bound for the new world. Clarky and his partners travel through layers of fog to the depths of the sea. Whenever there is danger, Clocky will use a compass and guide the ship in the right direction. Got it. That's a great story. But in the Panacone cartoon, Clocky and his partners have always lived in Dreamville and never ventured out, right? I got a brain. Imaginary friends. Huh? Oh, that does seem to be the case. They live in my brain. <laughs> I, I clearly remember Clocky arrived in the new world in the end. <laughs> Perhaps Clocky has a hidden past. Oh, no. So where has Clocky gone? He left. Did he leave to protect Dreamville? Probably. Anyways, we're going to walk there. Ooh, fireplace. Mikhail, that's the name? Now we all know him as the Watchmaker. Yes. So, who is he talking to? Do you know anything about it, Misha? Nope. I'm sorry. I don't know much about the Watchmaker. But, Mikhail. Anything special about that name? Yeah, he's the Watchmaker. <laughs> Mikhail is... Is Grandpa's name. Grandpa? Do you mean you're the watchmaker's grandson? And you're just a bellboy. But we haven't heard anything about the watchmaker having descendants. And the name Mikhail is not rare. Perhaps what? it's merely a coincidence. No, that's a very uncommon name. I, Himiko, I think you're speaking hooky right now. Could you tell us more about your grandpa, Mikhail? Yeah, he's a watchmaker. <laughs> yeah, sure. He was a seafarer who fearlessly ventured into mysterious seas and storms. He was always on the sea and had lots of friends who accompanied him on his travels. Okay. He didn't want me to call him Grandpa, because that would make him sound old. Yeah. He believed he was still young. The name Mikhail was given to him by his parents, Mihaly and Elise, both renowned seafarers. I would hope that he got that from his parents. Every time he came back, he'd share his logbook with me and tell me about his adventures at sea. I want to become a great adventurer, just like him. It appears that the seafarer has nothing to do with the watchmaker. So, perhaps it's just a coincidence? So, where is your grandpa now? Dead. He went off on a new journey. And it's been quite a while since I last saw him. So, probably dead. I think I hear the sound of water. We should go. We should go you directly. You mentioned there's a magnificent fountain up ahead. To the source. Upstairs. Look, there it is. 
Look, it's the water. It's fountain. It's fountain. It's cool. This is a fountain. The water resembles a precious jewel yeah. embedded in the dreams of all seafarers. Every time I gaze at the shimmering lights beneath the waves, it feels as though I'm back in this place, standing by your side. Yes. Have you recalled anything, Misha? Nope. Yeah. I saw these sentences in Grandpa's logbook. He used to say that despite the perils of the sea, whenever he stood on the deck in the afternoon, overlooking the sparkling waves, he would think of this fountain in front of his house. He often said that those moments felt like returning to his family's side. And the difficulties at sea didn't seem quite as challenging. Oh. <sighs> you know, I quite understand such sentiments. I was frozen inside a block of ice. Uh, don't sigh, or you're starting gray hair. Like me. <laughs> hey, don't tease. I was just being a bit sentimental. Look at me, gray hair. We don't know how old I am. Perhaps every adventure <laughs> far from home <laughs> like carries she... a fountain within their soul. Even though the other side of the sea remains shrouded in the unknown, the fountain in front of his house serves as a compass. How's it going, Des? Leading him back to his cherished ones. Just to join the story, that's what's going on. Yeah. While Grandpa was at home, we would stand by the fountain and place the compass, a toy boat that I made, into the pool. Bro, I just, like, noticed his, like, eyes over there. They're, like, they're, they're, there's, like, a, key, a keyhole. Heh. <laughs> Neat. Back then, I would ask him when I could go on adventures like him. And he would always laugh and say I was still too young. Oh, it seems this Mikhail is truly a seafarer and has nothing to do with the watchmaker. Damn it! <laughs> Based on Misha's recollections, the scenes in the dream bubble appear to be his childhood memories. Yeah, it's Misha. But this raises more questions. According to Misha, he was clearly born on an oceanic planet and led an ordinary life with no connection to Penicone at all. I have discovered a plot hole. Could this be some sort of metaphor? Perhaps the sea refers to the memory zone. I mean, there is water right behind us, so it very much could be that that water is the sea. I'm sorry. I don't know. My memories keep pouring out uncontrollably, like water flowing from a fountain. The fountain! Perhaps I'll, I'll remember more things if we go further. Fountain! <laughs> oh. It's the fountain. We're going to the opposite side, right? No, we're going this. Oh. No. We should turn left here. Oh, okay, okay. We'll take a detour. We'll detour this direction. Uh huh? Something nope. feels different about this place. It's okay. This I've been here, March. Up ahead is Grandpa's study. Acheron's displeased. But Black Swan has room. happiness on her face. Himiko doesn't know why she's here, and Huahua is scared shitless. Let's move forward. I hear voices in my head, and it's hurting. <laughs> Your imaginary friends are attacking me. <laughs> Please? Okay, fine. The atmosphere in this room feels totally different. Yeah. Misha! You finally come! Who are you? <laughs> Clocky, you're here! Huh. Yeah. This is the room where we first met each other. Wow. 
and you weren't like scared shitless that this fucking talking cl clock is in your grandpa's study? Are those books on the bookshelf log books left behind by that seafarer? Yeah. Whenever he came back, he placed a log book on the bookshelf in his room. They contain records of his expeditions to Let's go every corner of the world. Let's go read one. Just opens the book and is like, beeps everywhere. Hmm, I think we're in the right place. <laughs> he described our world as a fountain. At some point, the, fountain. the sea started to gradually swallow up the land where people lived. To ensure that everyone had land to settle on, he had to continue exploring the sea in search for the source of the rising seawater. On that day, he called me to his study, telling me that he was embarking on another journey. However, I could sense the gravity in his expression. It... It was the same look I had seen on my father's face before his final voyage. Oh... Genshin? Are you talking about, like, the book with the memes? <laughs> no, that's the fucking memory zone memes. The, the fucking creatures in this area are called memes, literally. It's fucking stupid. <laughs> I asked him if I could go with him, but he said that my adventure lay elsewhere and told me to stay home and patiently await a certain sound at the door. See it. No, no, the water rising. Ah! Oh! <laughs> you know, considering that Misha looks a lot like Farina for some weird reason. Yeah, it checks. What sound? <laughs> Very observant, March. He told me about a vast ocean in the sky. That's not where the water goes. <laughs> he spoke of a train that transports children with a desire to venture far away traversing the sea of stars without ever stopping he said that he knew the crew on the train and that he had asked them to take me along he said the journey i had always dreamed of would start there that's ours a train could it be? It's the train! <laughs> it's... It's the Astral Express. I... I remember now. Grandpa's friends are a group of nameless who came to this world to resolve a disaster caused by a star. Then, he gave his pocket watch to me. It was his cherished treasure, appearing in every one of his adventure tales. He explained that difficult times were ahead, but assured me that the watch would guide me. He said, as long as I kept moving forward, I'd eventually reach my desired destination. And then, it was as if I heard... Why is he still here? You can go now. The distant sound of a train whistle echoing throughout the room. Exactly, Misha. Oh fuck, he and stopped. Then we followed that whistle, didn't we? Okay, yeah, see, he he realized I was looking at him. I was like, you sh you can leave now, and and he's like, fuck, I gotta talk now. Yeah, I think I can still find the way we took back then. <laughs> he's just happy to be here. <laughs> This is the dream jigsaw, right? That is the dream. So we're supposed to find the exit. But where can we find the last piece? Do you remember? You said you obtained a mysterious shard when you stumbled into this place. Check inventory. Hey, the shape seems Wow! <laughs> Looks like we're just one step from revealing the truth. Let's get to the other side and investigate. I genuinely do not remember this. <laughs> Uh-oh. Uh-oh, that's a that's a thing we're going to have to go through. Oh dear, here we go. <laughs> this 
This is it. This is my room of clocks. Bro! I love that dude that you just gave. <laughs> Bro, you need new hobbies. Clocks? This ain't it. This is creepy as shit. You get on a government watch list if you had this in your room. <laughs> While I spent my time waiting for Grandpa to return from his voyage, Walter gave me this workshop. And it became my secret base. Did Walter also give you 40 clocks? Or was that your decision? <laughs> Here, I learned how to repair clockwork and gears out of my fondness of precision mechanics. In my dreams, I was the captain of the compass, embarking on adventures with my companions, Clocky and Miss Mirror, in search of the new world. No, dog, I collected hourglasses when I was a kid. I get it, I understand. No, okay, hourglasses are fucking cool. Because, like, you could take an hourglass and, like, I'll just use this bottle of Benadryl, okay? <laughs> as, a, as an example, okay? You take this and then you turn it upside down and, like, obviously Benadryl's not a great, uh, a great, um, like, uh, representation. But, like, you slowly watch, like, the sand trickle down. That's cool. Clocks are the same. <laughs> I, I the clocks. was born and raised here So this building in the dream bubble Is your childhood home Yes, but not exactly To be more precise <laughs> The ticket will drive him nuts he's just, That's why he's got crazies in his head This dream bubble itself is my home. Clocky is not real. <laughs> this is the mysterious sticky noise. <laughs> Looks like you've remembered everything now. Wait, wait. Why does it feel like everyone else knows something I don't? It's okay, March. Uh, too bad I don't know either. Yeah, you're... Why are you here? <laughs> Do you remember when she mentioned a Clocky that only she could see? Yeah. Yeah, the little guy here, right? But we all saw him in Dreamflux Reef. See. Right? And Mr. Yang even greeted him. You know, I'm just going to be quite honest. I feel like Clocky's only still here because they have to mention him to some degree. Looks like everyone on the Astral Express has a childlike spirit. Oh, yikes. The answer lies in the Astral Express. Her experience shows that neither Firefly nor Acheron can see this clocky. Okay. And when we were in Dreamflux Reef, you may have noticed that for some reason, nobody outside of the crew had ever talked with clocky. Yeah, that's actually a great point. A mimetic life that can only be seen by a select few. It's just like a hidden message left by someone for the nameless. But Misha can see Clocky too, right? They even grew up together. But Misha hasn't started the way of the trailblaze yet. Yet. That's the key to the mystery, March. Now take a moment to recall. Have you ever seen anyone outside of the crew interact with Misha? Acheron? Uh, wait. Uh, no way! But no one can see. Oh, that's right. No one can see Misha. I thought Akron saw Misha, though. Bro, I don't fucking remember. So that was 2.0. That was like four months ago. That's the answer, March 7th. This dream bubble Just call her is March. the place where I was born. And I. I'm a dweller in this dream. Just like a memory zone meme. Mm -hmm. I should have stayed here and waited for you. When reality and memories merged, I unconsciously pushed open that door and left the bubble with Clocky. You're an idiot. You're not supposed to do that. So it's not that the Watchmaker's dream bubble is empty, but rather the stuff inside ran away? <laughs> and the whistle you heard was the sound of the Express arriving at Pentacony? Holy shit, things are coming together. That's one way to see it. 
but I believe there's a longer story behind all this. It's best for Misha himself to explain all the details. March, shut the fuck up! <laughs> How about we start with your name? Now should we call you Misha, or...? She's gonna say Mikael. Thank you all for helping me rediscover my true self. Now, please allow me to reintroduce myself. Your name's Mikael! I was born on Lushaka. In the Presmere system. Oh, no, okay. No, adopted never mind. by okay, seafarers, so Mikhail and Char. Mm -hmm. oh. They gave me a treasure. A name that carried their hopes. Okay, so it wasn't Misha. What's your name? What's your name? Tell me. Mikhail Char Legwork. It was Mikhail. What or the fuck, Sophie. man? What? Misha. What the fuck? I was right? I thought I was wrong. But no, I was right. If you prefer. You can call me by a more familiar name. The Watchmaker. Motherfucker, huh? So, you're the Watchmaker himself? Unfortunately, that legendary figure is no more. I am only a reflection of his life. Oh. Okay, so, oh, okay, okay, so, the trailblazer, um, oh, fucking shit, the nameless, uh, the, the, the dead Mikhail, the one that's in, in the fucking God knows what fucking whatever's going on, is, that, that, that's him, that's just a reflection, he's just a As for the child who has been with you, he's the innocent protagonist of Misha's childhood dream. Friend of Clocky, a young apprentice, and a future mechanic on the Express. And this also marks the beginning of his journey, devoted to the Trailblaze. At the, the end, end of, of the, the journey, journey, I just got goosebumps. I got fucking goosebumps! Which I so, so cherished, cherished in, in my, my deepest, deepest dreams. dreams. Hoping, hoping to, to pass, pass it on, on to the, the nameless of future, of future generations. generations. However, he somehow left the dream bubble and forgot all about his task. I apologize for all the confusion this caused. <laughs> because he was born with a desire to trailblaze, wasn't he? Holy shit. I don't think Misha has forgotten his role as a guide. He remembered it, and that's why he mistakenly appeared as a hotel doorman in her dream from the very beginning. Oh, right. That did happen four months ago. <laughs> the one who brought our unconscious friend here must have been Misha. If that's the case, we encountered the Watchmaker's legacy from the beginning, didn't we? Holy shit. Well, I have a sarcastic friend who says I always take big detours and end up back where I started. Perhaps that's, that's what, what every name this has to go through. Damn, I gotta get back into speed. It's fucking... Dude, this fucking story, man. Fucking... Jensho wishes it could be this <laughs> good. But in the end, you found me. I'm sure you're all wondering what my legacy is. I believe my hound has mentioned the Stellaron and my wealth. Yeah, we, we, we talked about the Stellaron, yeah. If I may apologize... The, the Stellaron, Stellaron part is real. As for my wealth, wealth however, it's nothing, nothing more, more than, than a baseless, baseless rumor. rumor. Don't worry, I got that Stellaron in me. I, I just like the idea of fucking, uh, of fucking uh, Trailblazer. It doesn't matter which one. Just a Trailblazer. The Trailblazer that we play as just has to constantly remind you, by the way, there is a fucking bomb inside of me. I left my homeland as a child and embarked on the journey of Trailblaze. I traveled to various planets until finally reaching Asdana, where my friends and I built the original Penacony and fought for its future ever since. All right, again, I don't want to dwell on it too much, but I am forever making fucking uh, Courtness over here the have the fucking uh, 
have to remind everybody that there's a fucking stellar rod inside. I've been, been moving, moving forward, forward all my life, life doing, doing what, what I could to overcome the obstacles in my path. But ultimately, my journey reached its end. And I left behind no possessions worth entrusting. So, if you ask what's left within this worn out train engine that can be called a legacy, I suppose it's the things that are still burning in the engine's furnace. Now that you're well aware of the current situation of Penicone, I certainly hope that you'll help me get this world back on track. But I'll leave that decision to you. For the path of Trailblaze is never paved by others. I have a bomb. No, wait, I am the bomb! <laughs> All I have for you is a story and two gifts. Well, shit. Two gifts? Oh, and a story, too. I want to give you my pocket watch. Huh. It has accompanied me throughout my long journey. Huh. Guiding that naive child forward and has been blessed with the presence of so many great people up to this day. And my hat, too. The one who navigated for me placed it on my head and planted a fanciful thought in my mind. The trailblazing expedition will never end. Now, it's time for you to make your choice. Once you've made up your mind, Open, Open that, that door, door and, and enter, enter the, the long dream, dream of an old, old man. man. I'll, I'll be, be waiting for you at the end of this corridor of time. All right, everyone. Let's make a decision. We're going through the door. Although I don't think anyone will have any objections. I'll choose the trailblaze. I object! <laughs> of course. We've come this far. Surely there's no other option than moving forward. In that case, it's unanimous. Then let's I didn't really want to go, but <laughs> he goes like, I really didn't really decision. want to go, but I, I guess two versus one. I saw this. Oh, God. All right. Well, uh, I haven't. I have been saying off of fucking social media for. Bro, four days. I haven't used Twitter in like four days. Like I'll post a tweet and and then log off. Here we go. <sighs> Mikhail, where are you going? Away. Someone has to step up and save Lushaka. So why can't it be me, Misha? Please don't go. And if you must, please take me with you. Don't leave me alone. Even without me, you know how to proceed forward, brave Captain Misha. The compass is waiting for you. Haven't now go. Got no that train. You need to talk. Start your journey. Where are you going, Mikhail? Away. I I'm going to clean the floor in the parlor car. I've promised the conductor. Wait, first tell me, did you fix this watch? Um, yeah. I have a strange obsession with clocks. I know what it looked like before. Its chain was broken, the back case torn, and the marks on the dial all worn out. How did you manage to fix it? Strange obsessions. Well, uh, it's hard to explain, but I knew it could be fixed. It's the hands, Mr. Amundsen. Its hands were intact and pointing in the right direction, so I knew there would be a way to fix the rest. <laughs> I see. You'll work with me from now on. And haven't you always wanted to tinker with this train? You're its mechanic now. As for the conductor, I'll do the talking. But but I only know how to fix watches. <laughs> I have one personality. <laughs> Clocks. <laughs> Don't worry. You've got what it takes. I'll teach you what you need to know. Where are you going, legwork? It's time to head to our next stop. <sighs> Clocks. I... I'm staying in Astana with Rosalina and Tiernan. Shit. Those are the others. I see. This place reminds you of home. The people of Astana have only achieved a tiny victory and still have a long way to go towards true freedom. 
Hanunu needs us. Hanunu. I love the name Hanunu. Don't worry. Hanu! Holy shit! To the stars. Fuck! Even He's so cool! Us, our path of trailblaze will continue. <sighs> yeah. I knew you wouldn't stay on the express forever. Leave in peace, my friend. And, uh, take this with you. This is Mr. Amundsen's hat. Uh, but why? When he departed, he said he would leave it to his best student. Well, I suppose the time has come. Farewell, legwork. Take care of Tiernan and Rosalina. And don't forget to write to us. Right. Where are you going, Watchmaker? Don't worry, Micah. Just going on a little trip. Huh. Someone has to be at the forefront of the interstellar frontier, and I'm the only former nameless in Panacone. So why can't it be me? This is fucking crazy lore right because now. Because you're all we have. Have you forgotten about Tiernan? The cosmos is way more dangerous now. What will happen to Panacone if we lose you too? But what will happen to Penacone if we don't find a way out? Ah, Tiernan. How could I ever forget him? I've spent countless sleepless nights asking myself why I didn't go with him back then. We nameless won't stop. Don't worry, Micah. It's just a matter of getting back to my old profession. Just wait for me to come back. But if, and it's a big if, if I don't come back in one piece, then you'll become the next watchmaker. Oh. Where are you going, old man? Gallagher! Oh, you're here. Answer my question. What are you up to? Relax, Gallagher. I just came up with a great idea. Wanna hear it? Oh, come on! Aren't all your ideas just ways to get yourself killed? I may be blunt here, but... You're the last remaining hero in Penacone. If you die too, the, the secret of the Stellaron will go to the grave with you. The Bob? Yes. I'm afraid there's no way out in Penacone, so I'll have to consider alternatives beyond Esdana. We'll organize a festival using the Watchmaker's legacy as a facade and send invitations to the entire cosmos to gather people here. So... A desperate struggle against the family? Desperate? <laughs> Don't we have you here, my friend? This task is challenging, but what hasn't been challenging for us along the way? Well, whatever you do, remember, make sure to send an invitation to the Astral Express. Misha! Where are you going? I'm going to die now. Oh, it's you, Clocky. Take me to Dream Flux. No wonder he was the, one of the only people that could see Misha. Yeah. Last night, I had a long dream about the day we met. I want to write down that dream. Write it down? Why? Oh, so I won't forget it. Do you remember how you got your name, Clocky? Damn, Gal is old. No, he's 13. He said so himself. Of course. You told me that when you were a kid, you lived in a room full of clocks. Those wall clocks and pocket watches grew up with you and were your best friends. Bro... Bro, bro made a cartoon about his obsession with clocks. <laughs> yes, but what I didn't mention was there's a funny misunderstanding behind it. I just really like clocks. I was a kid and there was always a special pocket watch in my memories. Oh. It was with my grandpa, guiding him on his sea voyages, 
and leading the way in his every adventure story. I wanted to have a pocket watch like that too. And that's when you appeared in my dreams. Okay. Yeah. Every night, we boarded the compass and set sail together. But you know what? It wasn't until the day my grandma gave it to me that I realized it wasn't a pocket watch at all. It was a compass. So your name should have been Compassy. I don't like that name. <laughs> and the watchmaker is just a nameless. <sighs> We've arrived at Dream Flux Reef. So, where to next? You know, Clocky, I don't think I'll be going anywhere else. Hmm. Nope, that's Black Swan, wrong person. Take a rest in the moonlight. All right. See you later, kid. I've traveled far enough, and it's time for a little break. Oh. So, we'll set out again. When you're rested? <laughs> no. I'll stay here. And then... This is where it ends. This is... Where it ends? <laughs> what do you mean, Misha? You told me that the trailblazing expedition would never end. Yeah, that's what I said. Whoops. <laughs> so now, it's up to you to decide your next destination. My next destination? What's that supposed to be? Okay, I need to put this down. I've been for Misha? <laughs> you're acting weird today. <laughs> if you're feeling down, we can just do what we usually do. <laughs> With the clockwork. Clocky's coping right now. <laughs> no, I... I'm not feeling down. As for clockwork... Yeah. It resolves all problems in this dream. Whoa, that's beautiful, actually. So... Do you know what clockwork actually is? Hmm... I'm... Not quite sure. Oh boy, we're about to smack clock you with some fucking reality. Shit. Well, everyone gets lost at times. They may hesitate and doubt which way to go. That happens in this dreamscape and beyond. But don't worry. Everyone goes through moments of uncertainty and hesitation. Eventually... They gather the courage to make bold decisions. Whether it's calming, joyful, angry, or, or sad. All they need is a little nudge to take that step toward where they truly belong. I'm leaving that little nudge with you. And I hope you'll share it with others. Such is the essence of clockwork. The will of the trailblaze. <laughs> oh fuck! Okay, Lucky's here we go. Mm -hmm. Spin around nonstop. Yep, this is gonna fuck me up. Frustration and weakness, but ultimately, people still need to move forward. The hat, just, just like, like your hands, hands. always oh, pointing it. ahead. This is where my journey ends. From now on. It is your path to walk. Trailblazing. 
means taking paths your predecessors forswore and venturing even further. The Panaconian Mikhail's dreams does not belong to order. to glance at Penacony at a time like this. Is it because of the resonance from the legacy of the Trailblaze? Or perhaps the bond between you is so strong that it even impresses an Eon? Well, there might be another possibility. Perhaps they want to witness, on behalf of the fallen Eons, who will hold the future of Penacony. If that's the case, on behalf of the Dream Master of Penacony and the 107,336 members of the Oak family, I'm extending a formal invitation to all of you. One second. How many family members do you got over there? Th that, that's a lot. That, that's, that's a lot. You need to stop. I'm cordially inviting you all to the Penacony Grand Theater to participate in the upcoming Charmony Festival. Woohoo! And, of course, you won't be in the audience, but on center stage. Oh, I think I know what's about to happen. Since the future of the Stellaron, Penacony, and even the entire cosmos is at stake, let's draw a conclusion there, in all fairness. If you truly believe in Akavili's path, then show me their courage and determination. All right. We're just going to let them walk past us and we're not going to do anything about it. Neat. Yes! I didn't get stabbed this time. <laughs> I didn't need to get stabbed for this one. Yeah, I kind of need to try this uh, trailblazer really quick. All right, here we go. Increases break effect. Okay, and causes additional break damage when allies attack enemies. Bro. Yo. Hell yeah. Let's fucking go. Woohoo. Please stay strategy. Get fucked, loser. Alright, sounds good, Des. I don't think you'll see me later tonight. I have to go to work Time tomorrow. Time to test our rapport. Ooh. Dreams do come true. Hm. Do you admit this crime? <laughs> In the mood for another beating? <laughs> Ow, stop it. Alright, I need to start a trailblazer here really quick. By the order of the execute the Marastruck! No one will miss the Marastruck! Time to mix things up! Thanks for the support. Let them get mixed up. Like a, my friends? <laughs> I, I really need to build Gallagher. Let's improvise. The mood is set just right. Let the show begin. Backup dancer. <laughs> Holy shit! Do you admit this crime? Hold on. Hold on. Hold, no, no, no. Stop. Stop. Where is this da damage coming from? Memories of the past, too. Wow. Dreams do come true. Enemy targets detected. What the fuck were those numbers? Ready for another? <laughs> it's time.
Oh no! Oh no! Harmony Trailblazers actually fucking cracked! <laughs> Huh. It would appear that I don't have anything for you. It's gonna have to be that one. Baby Branya. Oh, that's gross. Oh, that's fucking gross. Hold on. I got some leveling up to do. Oh, that's gross as hell. I, I figured I'm not going to get very far with this, because, uh... Fuck yeah, I can, actually. Are you kidding me? Bro, I got so many of these. 18? Yeah, no, that's nothing. How many of these? 36? Pfft, easy. Numbers I have. What's this? Pfft, that's an easy one. Easy! Yo. Holy shit. Okay. Um, yeah, uh, kind of cracked, kind of cracked. Shit. How many of these do I actually have? Fuck. Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh my god. This is made for her. Oh, fuck. Not HP. Effectors. I don't like that. I don't like it at all. But it's okay, I'll make it work. So would like would it bring me back? So if I like switch, for example, would it would it Okay, so it does keep my old layout. That's actually really good. Okay, thank God it does that. Thank God it does that. All right, light cone. Um, hold on. How is your break effect doing? You're at 110. Bro, you're gonna kill things. Oh shit. Before our paths diverge, savor the shared journey. Yes. Bro, I have Robin to take care of, too. God damn it. God fucking damn it. <laughs> All right. Uh, we'll make it work. We'll, we'll make it. We'll, we'll make it work. Bro, I have so many of these things. HP. Why is it HP? Oh, maybe because I don't really have any other options. Um, you know what? I'm going to, uh, hope for the best on this one. And, uh, yeah, I'm gonna go speak with my companions and, uh, sort the information we got going on. Does that mean he wants to fight us during the Charmony Festival? That's exactly what it means. I'm afraid so. This is weird. Aren't Ark villains usually plotting some dirty conspiracy in the end? But he actually said something like, In all fairness, could it be that he's underestimating us? Yep. Or not. Well, in my opinion, Sunday is deeply committed to his own philosophy and genuinely wants to prove that the order is right. I sensed a strong conviction and a desire for dominance in him. Maybe he won't accept the outcome unless he wins fair and square. That's why he'll give it his all in the upcoming battle. Well, we won't uh, be such a gentleman, Eve Evil. Why so nice? <laughs> God damn it! I I flexed on him too hard with my peak swag. Guess I just guess I guess I messed around and found out. Huh? I fucked around and found out. Ah, you. 
every time an important moment arrives, you hesitate. Uh, it's just my personality. We've even dealt with a Lord Ravager of the Destruction, so a follower of the Order won't be a big deal. Anyway, we can't leave the Stellaron unchecked. This is about trailblazing a bright future for Panacone, and fulfilling Mikhail's and his predecessors' long-cherished wishes. Now that we've taken up the mantle, we can't afford to fail them. However, the same applies to the Order. Their plan didn't materialize overnight. Right. And they have the profound collective consciousness of the planet of festivities behind them. A desire to dream. To slumber and escape reality. All those hidden emotions have given birth to the sweet dream of the Order. They've harnessed the will of an entire planet to create an Eon. This confrontation is far more complicated than a simple power struggle. To secure Penacone's future, fighting on the stage alone is not enough. What do you mean? Are you not coming with us? I believe Firefly is trying to say that she's heading off to another battle. Mm-hmm. Oh. Before I left, the Destiny Slave told me that this journey would bring unforgettable rewards. Even though the script he gave me only had a few lines, I couldn't ignore them. Because one of the lines said, I'll experience death three times in the land of the dreams. What? Three times? can't be serious, right? The first time was a painful death when I was stabbed by the Blade of Dormancy, which led to all subsequent events. The script will always come true, but in a way that will only be revealed when that page is turned. So now I've understood the meaning of my second death, I am prepared to face it. If all goes well, my efforts will provide crucial support for you. Only by achieving victory in this battle can we secure a future for Penacone. And only then, my third and final death won't come true in the most terrible form. The most terrible form? Does that mean... The true death. Where everyone in Panacone loses themselves completely in the eternal sweet dream of the Order. We must do everything we can to prevent that. Have you made up your mind, Firefly? Yes. Otherwise, I wouldn't be here. Thank you again for your assistance for the Astral Express. May we meet again, in reality. Yeah. Farewell, everyone. May your trailblazing expedition never end. Huh. I dreamed of a scorched earth. Everyone, are you ready? A new shoot mm -mm. sprouted from the earth. It bloomed in the morning sun and whispered to me. That is so badass! My feet death. May we meet again, again in reality. After today, Japella's name will disappear from cosmic history. Okay. And the Everflame Mansion will take its place. In the not too distant future, you'll receive an invitation. That's your next stop. Land of the dreams. Pentecost. The extension to this. I hope you find whatever you seek there. Be it answers. More salvation. <laughs> you mean my three deaths? Silverwolf told me about it. It's such a shame that it's not part of my script. Of course you'd fucking say that! Well, I want to live. 
I'm never afraid of death. The opposite of death is eternal life, and that's... That's something I'll never desire. People die. And I am no exception. Death is like a script. A fate that cannot be defied. But that's exactly why we have to choose where we want to rest forever. Do you exist just to perish? Are you not the same, Blade? The end you desire is not one dictated by others. If I were to die now, I would only be a weapon. I believe I should die as a human, though its definition escapes me. Isn't this the answer that ordinary people look for their whole lives? A name that can be carved onto their tombstone. A tombstone that belongs to me once bore the inscription, Glamoth's Iron Cavalry. Then it changed to Stellaron Hunter. But one day, it will bear the name Firefly. And all the brilliance she showed at the end of her life That's quite unexpected, old man. Who would have thought your crazy plan would actually work? Do all you nameless fools just act on a whim? I can sense that this false sweet dream is coming to an end. The nameless may be young, but they had the ability to achieve this goal. Just like you did in your time. It's a shame you won't be able to see it firsthand. Maybe I won't either. Once something fictional is seen through, it ceases to exist. What? Yeah. Not just those nameless. Even Mr. Wings is just like you. Stubborn. Won't listen or give up, no matter what. Well, fate is unpredictable, I guess. If we weren't bound by those cursed paths, Maybe we could have had some good talks. You know, I'm just like realizing something. Where the fuck have Bo Boot Hill and Don Hung and Acheron and Black Swan been? But in the end, we managed to do it. And now we can find solace. Remember how those idiots cursed us? They said, go to hell, you worthless traitors. <laughs> well, I don't know if they really meant it, but... If longing for freedom means going to hell, then I'll be joining you soon, you fool. Let's get together and have supper again in oh. hell. That's a badass line, actually. Oh, I forgot. That's a catchphrase. There's one more. Here's to you. A glass of hello and goodbye, trailblade to the imperfect tomorrow. It's warm here. Holy shit. You're lucky to have found shelter from the rain. Let alone fresh berries in this desolate place. I always find a peach. Oh, speaking of Akron, by the way. I was just following the scent of life. It's particularly strong in a place like this. It's a shame these berries don't have much flavor. Guess my taste buds have been shot. Have you lost your sense of taste? Probably. Whoopsies. I can still taste certain things, like a faint sweetness. Before coming here, I stopped by a place called Orkron. It had barren cliffs and nights lit by bonfires. 
Burgundy snow would fall from the sky, and when it landed on my tongue, it tasted like raspberries. Interesting. The flavor wasn't exactly sweet, but it left a lasting impression. When I think back on my past, I realize that what's tying everything together isn't the big events, but rather these small yet unforgettable moments. Don't worry about it. Losing oneself is a reality that every self-annihilator must face. At least, I haven't completely lost my senses and memories yet. Well, congratulations on adding another footnote to your journey. Thank you. By the way, are you always alone? No, I had a companion in Orkron. She's a short, nameless girl who aspired to explore IX. She always said she'd walk a path deeper and farther than Akavili's. <laughs> Quite an ambition for such a small girl. So, uh, what happened? She... became stagnant water. Well... My condolences. Condolences? I don't need them. The girl left with a smile. She never regretted her choice and most definitely won me to say goodbye with a smile. So, that's what I did. That's proof that you're grieving for her. Or, perhaps I'm just afraid. Uh, afraid? I rarely sense that emotion from you. What do you fear? I hide it very well. I'm afraid I'll forget the 30 days I spent with her. 30? Just like all the other days in my life. Most of them have already washed away with the rain, disappearing into an unseen realm. I fear that those vivid red memories will fade away too. There isn't much color left. And besides this faint warm red, there's almost nothing. Hard to imagine. A ranger accustomed to bloodshed, destruction, and chaos finding warmth in the red color. Because... I have experienced this warmth many times. Long ago, I promised someone that I'd bring it to more people. And that for every remaining moment of my life, I'd strive for... a better ending for all. As long as this red color still lingers, I have a chance to fulfill that promise. It represents a burning fire, a blooming flower, the berries in this cave, and life itself, fleeting yet still dazzling. In the end, it will lead me beyond the horizon of existence. And on the other side, I will cut off nihility. <laughs> the one blessed by the sleeping and shapeless is considering how to kill them. That's truly... Pure nihility. But you're right about one thing. After spending so much time near this stagnant water, only when I look at this vibrant red fire do I realize that I'm still alive. When will this rain ever stop? Perhaps when the sorrows of the departed have finally quieted down, the sky will clear up. Four hours. Oh, yay, it's Have them you again! Heard of a planet named Biari Scamandros, Don Hung. It's one of the paradise kingdoms under the influence of the Harmony. A sought-after wonderland for the inhabitants of the Dardanu major and minor systems. Half an amber era ago, the family held an unprecedented festival there. And after that, everyone on the planet became part of the family. Are we not going to talk about this? Are we... Do you think the same thing will happen? What the fuck is happening over there? Yes. Or how else can we explain it? 
The family deliberately used the watchmaker's invitation to keep all the Pathstriders here, but banished the emanator of the Nihility. Because of the Nihility, I'm rarely affected by the power of other paths, but somehow I can unconsciously infiltrate them. Maybe that's the risk they're trying to avoid. I would disagree. Biori's command. What the fuck is, is happening not over there? The system or connected to the Silver Rail. It's nothing more than a remote civilization sheltered by the Harmony. But Panacone is different. If the family messes with Panacone, that would be like declaring war on almost half of the factions in the cosmos. They have no reason to do that. No, they don't. If they truly serve the Harmony, that is. What do you mean? The path in Panacone is impure. The Harmony here has impurities. Do you remember the ancient swarm disaster? Bru <laughs> Tazeron, the propagation, brought endless it. havoc to the universe. And it eventually evolved into a fierce battle among all eons. Two paths lost their eons in that war. The Propagation and the Order. Coincidentally, their downfall is related to a certain eon. Shipe, the Harmony. Legend has it that they participated in the crusade against the Imperator Insectorum and devoured Anna the Order for unknown reasons. Is that the sound of Pom Pom having anxiety or some shit like that? Holy Forgaroni. So you're saying that the two leaderless paths are working behind the scenes? Yeah, but I don't see any descendants of the propagation in Panacone. Could it be that the remnants of Beyond the Sky Choir are hiding within the family, trying to resurrect a fallen Eon? How the fuck did you figure that out and you weren't even in Panacone, bro? I mean, I guess Black Swan and Acheron were there, so yeah. I can't say for sure. But they're definitely planning something for the Charmony Festival. Whoa. Boo, now this is getting way too complicated. Is Wait, this why what? you want us to leave Astana right away? Are you giving up? The Charmony Festival will start soon. There's one thing that I need to confirm no matter what. A warp jump is the best way to do so. Mm. Time is running out. I have another plan. Oh, pray tell, what Come is your on. Are you thinking of using the Jade Abacus of Allying Oath? Oh, yeah, he is. Exactly. The assistance from the Lawful Cloud Knights would be enough. Bro, what? Think it over carefully. You can only use that once in your lifetime. I have considered it thoroughly. My companions are... They're also once-in-a-lifetime treasures. Okay, Pom Pom's anxiety mission is over. Thank God. All right. I think this might be are a battle. Are you the only one here, my child? The, the Nameless is quite the diplomat. diplomat. Our secrets have spread like wildfire within the family. And IPC starships are gathering towards Astana. This is a crucial moment for us. So, where is the chosen one who harmonizes the varied sounds? <laughs> what do you mean, Master? I'm right here in front of you, aren't I? You know, she was supposed to be the star of the Charmony Festival in our plan. And she decided no. But the plan has changed. As her brother, I... I know she doesn't want to sing for the Order. So I'll take her place. I'll sing! Hmm. You've always been wise beyond your years. I'm sure you understand the consequences of your choice. If you consider this a betrayal, well, there can't be two suns in the sky. I'll step up and take down the other sun if necessary. Do you believe in Carl? It's a bitch! 
<laughs> if karma exists, then everyone has their own karma. You have yours, and I have mine. And my karma has nothing to do with you, Mr. Gopherwood. Hmm. All right. Since you're willing to sacrifice yourself for her, I'll grant your wish. Well, the compromise came sooner than expected. Yeah, like with like three hours Why? to spare. You and your sister were born as twins of the Order. And one of you is destined to follow this path to the end. <sighs> is this part of your plan? Of course. You're still as clever as you were when you were a child. The opening is near. Go, my child. Seize the power of the harmony and reveal your karma. I have one final okay. question. Why did you choose to bring the Order to Penacony? Wouldn't it have been better to choose a desperate world instead of a city filled with hope and dreams? Why? It's for justice, my child. Sure, let's go with that. If we lose justice in our hearts, we'll make the same mistake as the harmony did. So Shit's hitting it's a crescendo. It's not you who manipulates the dreamscape with the Stellaron, but... Well, that's where our conversation ends. Go ahead. The 107,336 souls of the Oak family have dreamed of this moment too many times. I shall ascend to the heavens, becoming the scorching sun, bathed in my light. My people shall oh, flourish, while all evil shall be eradicated. Oh, same location. This is the interior of the Penacony Grand Theater. Correct. Oh, it's quite exhilarating to be flushed into the air by Soul Glad, but. Why is the venue still closed when the Charmony Festival is about to start? Couple hours, don't worry, we got time. And not only that, the entire theater is eerily quiet. No audience, no staff, no one around. They all found out Robin was going to be here. <laughs> Looks like it was a flop at the box office. Yeah, I wonder how many tickets... Hey, that's not what we should be concerned about. Let's explore around. Be careful, everyone. I like the I, I think the idea of everyone found out that Robin doesn't want to perform here anymore. And so she's just so everyone's just like, well, fuck that shit. I ain't going here. A hat. That is really cool, by the way. All right. Let's see here. OK, it's still to be continued. God, how much more of this is there? Like, it feels like I'm reaching the crescendo and I, I'm reaching the finale here, but Gosh, like... the atmosphere here is so creepy and unsettling. Yeah. Even if there's no audience yet, there should be some staff around. Why is it so silent? I don't know. What you doing down here? <laughs> Me. They yes they uh, did. Why are there so many puppets at the ticket office? Great question, uh, Marsh. Behind you. Wh what? Uh, you're so annoying. <laughs> you're scaring me. Are these puppets part of the stage setup? Even so, it's so eerie that the entire front hall is empty. The fact that Hibiko's like, can you please stop harassing her for like five minutes? This is some serious shit going on. Something feels.
feels off. We're in the right place, right? Yep. There's no other grand theater in the dreamscape. Correct. So Sunday's messing with us? He said we'd have a final showdown on the stage, but why is there no one here? My apologies for the delay, March 7th. That's my name. <sighs> you scared me. Where are you now? Yeah, like, where are you? I'm waiting for you behind the curtain. Following the Asdana tradition, I invite you to enjoy a stage play in three acts before the festival begins. History is a mirror reflecting the universe's true essence. Let's use this opportunity to delve into the rich history of Penacony and the eons. Within it, naturally, the future takes shape. All right. Let us commence with the dawning of the world. All right. After the dusk wars, darkness veiled the sky and chaos consumed the earth. Anna the Order emerged, destined to restore all existence. Sorry, that I got to get all these. The first day. That's important. They gathered nebulae and forged them into picks, thus creating a grand lyre with black and white keys. Strike the white keys, and the sun rose. Strike the black keys, and the moon rose. And so, the cycle of day and night arose. That marked the second day. Yep. Ode to prisoner. All right, here we go. Where are we now? The atmosphere here looks similar to Sunday's inner world. Perhaps this so-called stage play is created with his abilities. This act is named Ode to Prisoner. Given the atmosphere here, I believe it's about Pentagoni's past. Probably. I thought things were finally looking up as I managed to dodge prison during my recent trailblazing expeditions. But now it looks like I'll be back behind bars again. It's tradition! I genuinely wish to avoid a violent clash with my esteemed guests from nah. afar. Yeah, that's not happening. Therefore... I've arranged three acts before the situation becomes irreparable. All right. Where shall we start our narrative? Well, let's start with the time when Pentacone. Don't worry, it's an adventure bird. Just give him a second. Old man would. Bye. Where Where shall we start our narrative? Well. Let's start with the time when Penacony was still you look a frontier new. prison. Shame I don't want to fight you. Part of me feels like I should end the stream here and save this for tomorrow, especially being as fucking much of a finale as this is going to be. All right. Important business. Sorry, guys. This place was once In 2147 AE, a prisoner named Hanun ignited a struggle for liberty and emerged triumphant. 
IPC refer to it as the War of the Frontier, while the Asdanians dubbed it the War of Independence. Hanunu was a legendary hero. Hanunu! But it must be acknowledged that while he bestowed freedom upon the prisoners, he didn't grant them true liberation. Thank you for staying here, honorable travelers. Our well. three nameless stayed on the planet, endeavoring to spread the tenets of Trailblaze throughout the frontier prison. Alas, their efforts proved futile. Close call. Uh, that's not important right now. Let's build another prison, not within the prison. Once again, as Donna was engulfed in war, this time the enemies originating from within. The prisoners remained prisoners for the rest of their lives, fighting for freedom rather than living for it. Hmm. I hope you like this land of freedom. On a scorched earth. As you can see, their sentences have long ended, and the IPC guards have long been expelled. Yet, these prisoners remain enslaved, not by external forces, but by the confines of their own mind. Freedom permeates every corner, except fragile souls. It gives solace only to those who believe in its existence. Prisoners, this is my order. Learn the essence of freedom, and teach your fellow prisoners to fight for their lives. Okay, we're gonna hey, fight. Why don't we have to fight while enjoying the show? Well, I like it! Not only your enjoyment, but also your assistance is complete. I'm sorry, this game just has fucking banger music. Another journey destined for oblivion. I weep for the departed. It too shall fall. Ooh. Oh, don't worry, I'll Your take it out. Oblivion. You won't get away. I have something for you. <laughs> I have something for you. <laughs> Free will, or was it fate? Destined for oblivion. Death. Uh? I weep for the departed. <laughs> This so thing's actually putting up a fight. Nope, never mind. <laughs> <laughs> Shit, this Nobody thing's got me. You, know, oh, right. you anymore? You are free. Yay! We did it. Yay! Fuck. There, I fixed it. Thus concludes the first act. Amidst a raging war. The frontier prison headed toward becoming Land of the Exiles. This must be how Panacone was constructed. With the aid of outsiders, the prisoners were finally liberated and established the Land of the Exiles. I hope we can hear that song in fucking Simulator Universe. However, it appears that Sunday aims to convey the spiritual plight of the prisoners more than the physical aspects of imprisonment. Uh, this show is a bit too... Literary for my taste, but the battle part is quite easy to understand. Anyway, we've arrived at the exit. Let's go. I agree with March. Thank you. These puppets. Where are they guiding us this time? Uh, the exit. 
They transmuted streams of stars into inked nibs, oh. creating symbols to be pronounced and counted. They molded stardust into flowing rivers, assigning the righteous upstream and the unjust downstream. Thus, all things were marked, and the world learned to discern between good and evil. That marked the third and fourth days. All right, come on, finish your finish your words. Yeah. Huh. All right, last where we left off, we are about to watch Act Two. Ode to Fool. This must be the second act. It looks just as complicated as the first. The surroundings are different from before. The stage decorations look a bit tidier now. Behold the ensuing tale. A struggle for power. Mm -hmm. Panacone witnessed the ascent of the seven major lineages. Tree. Grass. Flower. Bird, beast, Bird. fruit, and insect. Okay. My child. Peace it never truly graced the leader. Oh, the my child, you hit the, oh, my the ground! My child, my ground! Trading freedom for survival. I'm sorry, Sunday's talking. However, his eldest son slew him in the name of righteousness and ascended as the new family head. All right, well, I imagine this is going to build a fucking staircase. I mean, you know, wild suspicion. Am I right? Crazy concept. Land of the Exiles All right. was in disarray, besieged by both internal and external perils. Oh Though my the seven god. The major lineages appeared united on the surface, each harbored their own. Don't ambitions. worry. And the two. Black Plum family was the first to fall. They withered away in the White Desert event, orchestrated by the Alfalfa family. Because Master shaped you from clay, but forged me from fire. From fire! Superior to you. Bro, I'm getting so many good... I'm... I'm... Dude. This event is paying me right now. Uh... The funds that I oh so rightfully deserve, you know? Like, like I lost a lot of, uh, of jades uh, during Robin Pulse. Actually, all of them. I lost all of them, but ten. So, uh, they, they're paying me back right now. And in fact, they're paying me back so well, I almost have another 10 pull. Isn't that nice of them? So nice. Stream four. Oh my god. You little bitch. Hi there. I am me! No. I see. No, but like generally, I do not know how much longer this uh, this is gonna go. So that's why I put finale question mark at the end because I'm just like my friend, my my friend only when Gopher played and said, "Yeah, you're like six the land of the I'm like, that's like only over a little a half. All five major lineages did panic. Dear outsider. Oh, hello. Teach your aid in purging this mansion of the poison spread by the lurking instigators. Oh, okay. Uh, you want us to help you? Yes. What do you need? March, you're very convincing. Very good. I wish they could regain their reason and cast away the shackles of hypocrisy. I agree. This is the second act. Looks like it's about Penacone's journey to becoming the land of the dreams. But this new master seems like a bad guy to me. 
Don't you I, think? Yes. Perhaps this is the truth Sunday is trying to express, if you read between the lines. The harmony God changed damn it, I hate reading between the lines. just as the guards once did. Looks like we've got to help those guys kneeling down over there calm down a bit. Yeah, they All need right? to calm. Look how calm they, we need to calm them down. <laughs> In the absence of my master, I am free. <sighs> but without their guidance, for whom shall I sing? The decaying human heart finds rebirth with the, the calmness. Activate clockwork. We're gonna make you calm. I shall That's... sing for my new master, just as their noble voice once resonated throughout the cosmos. You are welcome. Whoa, hello. That's twenty more for the team. Master, hope oh, you will return in due course, and I shall stand vigilant, awaiting the reward. All right. Only reason can we must calm. Don't worry. Once you're calmed down, you'll Master, feel better. Now that you have gone. Uh, Alright, you. I stood as the most loyal guard among all the servants. Now, with my master banished, it's my right to assume control of his dominion. Hmm. Well, looks like we're gonna have to put him into a state of calm really quick. Don't worry, we'll make him calm. My former master has long departed. But why do I I don't know. Master is no longer here. Nope. I thought I'd be free, but I'm not. Don't worry. I will give you the calm. Once you are calmed down, you will feel better. Master is no longer here. I must seek a new master. Okay, sure. Either I shall be my own master. Yeah. Or I shall return to my former master. All right, well, don't worry. We'll calm him down really quick, and he'll feel better about himself. Nope, that's angry. Without a master, who can grant me true freedom? Thank you, dear outsiders. My servants have regained their sanity. That's nice. Feed me, one and all. Your former master shall not return that's fucked it is through righteousness and unwavering support for one another that we cast aside the veils of hypocrisy and embrace one another get ready looks like another fight is all right here we go Hit him with it! Still waters of oblivion. Alright. I weep for the departed. I am not strong against him. You won't get away. Himiko is kinda like a bullet right now. Ow! All right, I need some attack. I need some attack, and I need it now. Bro, stop. All right, this could help. This could help. Nice. 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 Memories up beneath the water lies an endless abyss. And then Acheron. What? Yeah, just like that. Exactly like that. Alas, they remain but slaves till the very end, with the illusion of freedom. Don't worry, I Thus killed her. concludes the second act. That was nice. Amidst an illusory harmony, Land of the Exiles charted its course toward becoming the planet of festivities. This Very is nice. how Penicone fell under the family's control. Since the arrival of the Harmony, the land of the Exiles has undergone dramatic changes. 
not all of which have proven beneficial. This guy really loves dramatic scenes. He does. Bet he comes from a whole lineage of stage performers. That's right. Sunday is a theater kid. Okay. Well, we got a lot of rewards out of that. That's pretty nice. All right. Well, let's uh, move forward. Before we do that, though, I do need to yank you out. All right, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you are wasting my time, by the way. But that 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 is against my own accord. I did kind of do that on my own, so... Uh, uh, I guess that was me. That's on me, bro. Sorry. Hmm. Something tells me I need to go they this way. They used the planetary rings to establish the law, forging a code of yep. conduct among the masses. A grand liar with black and white keys. I see as the an bird, but I'm not wasting my time. Symbols of articulation. I'm gonna forget and about that later, by the way. took the form of musical notes. The downward flowing river became a meltdown. The canon of law dictated the form. Thus, all mortals found Don't their worry. unique place I'll within kill it. this symphony. That marked the fifth and sixth days. All right, here we go. We're entering the last uh, this act guy three. Is really into these puppets. Oh yeah, he is. Okie dokie. Here we go. Act three. Ode to. Order. Yeah, that's not going to be good. Oh, I get it now. The last scene is all about singing the praises of the Order. Yeah. And the atmosphere here is completely different from the previous two scenes. Yeah, I wonder why he's doing that. This is the concluding act of this play. How do I get you? I have showcased the past and present of Penacone. Okay. Hoping that my desire for change resonates within you. No, I don't. And now, I shall reveal its future to you. Oh, this is the future? I know what no one will protect the weak. We are the weak. Standing against the mighty. Hello. Stream four. Gleam of old prince. No. Move the module. Doki. Stream four. No, that's not the one. That's the one. That's better. Don't worry about it. Everything Nope. And so it shall continue even after the king's departure. After the king's departure. We no longer have no Don't worry about it. You guys are worrying too much about things. Yeah, I'm a little too late for that one. That's okay, though. All right, here we go. We're in Act, uh, Act of Three. Hey, aren't we supposed to kick off a short story and have a fight here just like we did in the previous acts? Why aren't any of these puppets saying anything? They got nothing to say. Perhaps we'll need to complete the story ourselves. So, do you think their mind needs tinkering or something? Yes, I must give them emotions. All right, come on, guys. Let's go. Come on. Activate the clockwork. We Farewell, former king. <sighs> How did it go? That's not possible. I can't change their emotions. They're only satisfied. You can't change them? What does that mean? It means they can't think. My apologies for my negligence. 
I forgot to inform you that the final part was scripted long ago. Oh, was it now? So how long has this been in the world? Let our previous king recount it to you. Now it is time for the final right. All right, let's do it. Prepare for battle. Looks like we'll have to fight again. I like fighting. All right, what's your we? Oh, 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 you're fucked. Oh, you are so fucked. Oh, shit. Oh, no. Oh, you got fucked. Oh, 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 no. Oh, no. Oh. Bro did not lose a lot of health. Destiny what the fuck, you idiot? <laughs> Quick, Wawa, fix this. Don't worry, it's just a scrape. Dusted for oblivion. I have something for you. You won't get away. Man, that wasn't enough. No, I. Thank you. <laughs> no, I need that. <laughs> You scan who never conceals its desire to control the heavens, and I'm no exception. What do you want to know? Uh. <laughs> Another journey begins. Still waters of oblivion. All right, this one's I gonna hit. To depart. What? <laughs> it so far. Bro is not dead. <laughs> All right, dead now. In the hushed expanse of a nocturnal reverie, I leave faint traces behind. No need to remember me, or to recall the essence of dreams. What is mine shall wane, okay. while you shall transcend its delicate nature. Got it. This is the final scene. It's much more straightforward. He wants to expel the harmony and establish an empire based on the order. I see. Let's go. Once this stage play concludes, it'll be time for the main event. The main event! All right, here we go. Beautiful. One they system. They imbued the world with meaning, perfecting all things in the heavens and on earth. Then, they rested from the labors of creation. Yet, all beings cried out to Enna. Under the banner of the Order, you have defined all things in the cosmos. But this made us realize that we are but puppets in your hands. Thus, on that day, all beings united and cast the Eon into the abyss of oblivion. This grand theater looks totally different. Is this the power of the Order? Sure, let's go with that. Everyone, get ready. This could be a tough battle. What's his weaknesses? <laughs> ah, fuck it, I'll just bring Acheron. It's fine. Acheron can just brute force into anything. Watch him have... None of the three options that I have. I have three elements that to choose from. Marked the seventh day. Cheers and chants reverberate in the Sunday, they don't like you. Neither do I. <laughs> Look, there he is. Get him. <laughs> that concludes everything related to the order. What are your reflections on this? I, my dear guest, barely paid attention. <laughs> I don't like him. Nevertheless, this is but a trivial blip in the annals of galactic history. I'm sorry, what'd you say? What truly matters is the course this river shall take in the days to come. You've arrived at the perfect moment. The Charmony Festival is about to commence, and it would be a shame if you were absent for the Harmony's prologue. 
Allow me to extend my warmest welcome once more. Mm -hmm. Welcome to Penacone Theater. The very core of the sweet dream, the abode of the Stellaron, the grand stage of the Charmony Festival, and the very place where the future of Penacone shall be determined through conflict. Okay, we did this once in Bellabog. Let's do it again. Where is the Stellaron? Other than the one that's in me. <laughs> uh, the very place where schemes get smashed to smithereens. Your unwavering faith in the trailblaze is truly impressive. I can get serious at times. True goodness can only be achieved through faith. Allow me to point out that falling into a permanent slumber is not happiness. Especially when those people are driven by someone else's will in their sleep. You know, we're kind of in... I'm, I'm starting to realize something, Himiko. We are absolutely in, like, the disadvantage court. We're in the dreamscape. It's kind of his dreamscape. We're kind of fucked. Do you believe that the Order only seeks to control the universe as their puppet, Himiko? Yes. No matter how perfect your vision of paradise may be, a cage remains a cage. People will never achieve true happiness in a world like that. They would just be toys for the Eon! It seems you have misunderstood my intentions. Yeah, probably. Allow me to clarify. My desire is not to resurrect a fallen Eon or become one myself. Huh? Is my sole objective is to create a paradise free from Eons, uh. where the Order ensures the dignity and happiness of all humanity. A paradise exclusive to us human beings. That's not the case. If people are to live with dignity, there must be nothing and no one above them. In your so-called paradise, you would be the one reigning supreme. Yeah. <laughs> Looks like we won't be able to convince each other. Let's just fucking now fight already. We don't like each destined. other. Let's unveil our paths and reveal to the universe the true path. However, before the prelude to the future begins, please take a moment to ponder the questions I've posed. Is darkness equal to daylight? Okay. Are sinners equal to the righteous? Oh, I can fight these. Fuck you. If you were born weak. Which god should you turn to for solace? Come on, I've already fought these fuckers! You think I can do it? I can't- Oh! Under the banner of the Order, you have defied all things in the cosmos. But this made us realize that we are but puppets in your hands! Mm -hmm. We'll remain dark. Alright, time to kill. Ill tidings manifest. I'm scared! Straight get them! Or devils. I'll crush them all. Destined for oblivion. Okay. <laughs> all right. I weep for the departed. Hell with it. <laughs> it is my fault. Okay, that's not exactly what I want. Now I need. Bro, I need that. <laughs> Memories oh, are beneath the water. Lies an <laughs> Bro, I need that. Still waters of oblivion. I love that move so much. <laughs> I have something for you. Ha! You won't get away. Perhaps you still humanity never conceals its desire to control the heavens, and I'm no exception. I weep for the They part. receive more damage, eh? <laughs> One, two, a three. <laughs> <laughs> Shit, what round two. <laughs> what the fuck kind of ultimate is this? Oblivion. Stop it. 
Stop it. Just get it started. Uh. Oh! That's fucking beautiful. Quickly, heal everyone! It's just a scrape. Again. Oh, this is so good. Still water is I don't like where things are going here. Hi, Beth. That how's it going? Memories of beneath the water lies in oh an endless God. abyss. <laughs> All right. Okay. I'm getting a lot of achievements for getting my ass kicked right now. That's pretty nice. <laughs> Stop hitting me! Isn't chosen. <laughs> Okay. It's just a scrape. Quick. I weep. Akron, smack him. Destiny is ill fate to send. Bro, I need a building so bad. <laughs> Another turn, Dustin, for oblivion. There we go. <laughs> I already know. Your decision. I now permit you to gaze into the sun. On these 107,336 stones, the almighty and powerful strings of harmony are at my disposal. The supreme tuner, harmonious choir, Dominicus. Okay. Fuck. <laughs> Oh no. The embodiment of the harmony. Oh my god. So the true purpose of the Charmony Festival is to usurp it? Okay. Every time you break a layer of enemy toughness, you gain a certain collective shield. What do you mean? Wait a second. That fucker has three shields. Oh no. The seal of ill fate. Well, I'm glad Himiko's back. Still waters of Time for an overhaul. Hi, Honkai Impact Third. How you doing? Oh shit! Oh, that's five fucking people right there. Oh no! One, a two, a three. Yes! You won't get away. Memories of beneath the water lies an endless abyss. Why is it receptive to our answer to this? Why could the harmony and the order merge into one? Destined for oblivion. Uh. Oh, this is awesome. How noisy. Ah <laughs> Get fucked! Get fucked, idiot! <laughs> Ow! Oh man, oh, stop it. No, stop this. Oh my god, stop! Humanity never conceals its desire to control the heavens, and I'm no exception. The time has come. Creation will be reborn from the remains of the gods. Oh, hi, Daniel. Oh, you dumb motherfucker! Why the fuck are you here? Show no mercy, bro. This is cheating, <laughs> bro. That was cheating as fuck. So Don Hung was just like, "All right, I got a cheat code." <laughs> The fuck are you talking about? Oh, are you all right? Can you hear me? Do you remember your name? Where am I? Why does that line sound so familiar? Uh, it does? Well, doesn't ring any bells to me. Looks like your mind's still in one piece. If you're able to remember such details. Well, 
Uh, it's a long story. Uh, simply put, Don Hung used the Jade Abacus of Allying Oath when we were in the middle of a fierce battle. Yeah, he fucking did. And to help us just in time. Yeah, that's weird, isn't it? And then we returned to reality. Look, this is your room. Everyone else has also returned from the dreamscape. Himeko and the rest are at the lobby discussing matters with the general. And now that you're awake, we should tell the crew that you're all right. Come with me. This doesn't feel right. This doesn't feel like an ending. <laughs> Not going to come chat with me, sleepyhead. Ah, uh, I'm sorry. That voice. Is that Black Swan? It's her! Hello. Hey, where are you going? Black Swan, she's over here. Hey, we meet again, sleepyhead. What? What's Miss Black Swan doing here? She's in the hotel. Nothing, Miss March. I noticed she was awake and wanted to check to see how she was doing. Though the strike from the general was timely, its destruction was also immense. When emanators collide, ordinary people inevitably suffer. Hold on, I want to talk about that. The general's an emanator? But, luckily for them, the dreamscape is my home turf. Oh, you're Thankfully, the I emanator. managed to get everyone out before the harmonious choir collapsed. Oh, so that's what happened. Uh, thank you, Miss Black Swan. Don't mention it. After all, I wouldn't want to see such precious memories vanish. You're heading to see your friends, aren't you? Yes. Would it bother you if I walked with you for a short while? Yeah, sure, why not? Of course not. But you're not planning on doing something like last time, are you? <laughs> why would you think that? I've never harbored any ill intentions. Well, not when you are around, anyway. Himeko and Mr. Yang are probably still busy. Let's go look for Don Hung first. Let's go find Robin as well. Like, hey, Robin, let's talk about your fucking psychotic, psychotic, uh, um, your psychotic, uh, friend and all that stuff. Look, he's still talking If you're tired, about I'd Cowboy. say go to bed or something. Don't you're tell awake. me you're tired. I can't How do anything do about it. Well, fork me. You must be that Stellaron they were talking about. I see. Yeah, I'm fine. Uh, for con I prefer... No. <laughs> Why do you have to blab about everything? I didn't mention anything to him. Partner, you got it all wrong. I heard it straight from the memo keeper. Allow me to introduce you. Oh, hi. You. Welcome back. This is Boot Hill, a galaxy ranger. During our pursuit of a certain person we crossed paths and just so happened to uncover a shocking plot being concocted by mr sun which is why we sought you out to help the astral express save the world together no need for thanks now the galaxy rangers principle is correct every injustice one sees that's how you lot in the cien show put it right don hung yeah <sighs> More or less. Wait, hold on a sec. Second. This is the first time I'm hearing about this certain person. Who are you chasing? And why would that lead you to the express? Uh... Y yeah. <laughs> uh, good question. <laughs> it's, uh... <clears throat> Who was it again? Uh, Don't know. Do you remember? Acheron. I don't know, man. You look kind of sus. <laughs> no, that ain't it. I just can't seem to recall. Yeah. <sighs> Weird. My neurochip hasn't registered any malfunctions. It... Hmm. I can't seem to remember either. What? Uh, what's going on? <sighs> Thick. Forget about it. If it slipped all our minds, reckon that person was just a mind. What the scoundrel. fuck did Black Swan do to these people? Ain't gonna stop us from piecing together the story anyhow. Yes. When the dust settles, I'll just think of a way to recall it in the memory zone. Everyone, let's hurry up and look for Miss Himigo, shall we? 
She's now a minor star on Panacone, and the entire hotel's concerned about her well-being. Oh, I am? You're right. Let's head... I am? Oh, I guess I am. I'm, I'm a mini star. I did things. Okay, yeah, why... Look, they're yeah. with the general. Yeah, this is a weird weird situation to see you of all people here so let's uh, let's chat what's up <laughs> that's all right in these times of conflict for the sake of utmost safety it is only right that the alliance steps forward to mediate on behalf of the astral express we must not allow you to take unnecessary risks that's why i've given you another one of these <laughs> more, despite the IPC's that way we can come back for every success, time <laughs> it prioritizes peace above all and the family, trapped though it may be, professes a desire for harmony. The Alliance has always won people over with reason. I firmly believe both parties can indeed put aside their differences and come to a peaceful agreement. The General possesses a deep understanding of the greater good. With the Sienjo Alliance mediating, peace for Penacone is within reach. It is. <laughs> you flatter me. But ultimately, it's been all down to the Express. Without your efforts, this sweet dream paradise would have been claimed by the last remnants of order before there was even a shot at peace. Yeah. Well, oh, would you look at that? Here comes the big hero. I think that's me. <laughs> Hi. I do what I can. <laughs> if it isn't the galactic baseballer. That's me! True hero what the fuck? How'd you know? Are you okay? I heard you couldn't wake up. Uh, don't worry, Mr. Yang. There's nothing wrong with her. Actually, there's a she lot wrong with her. She practically burned through a lifetime's worth of jokes on the way here. There's a lot wrong with her. She's, she's not right in the head. She got, cel she got that Stellaron in her. What about you, Mr. Yang? I heard that even Miss Robin wasn't spared. And that guy locked you both up. <sighs> It's a long story, but at least Mr. Sunday took it easy on us. Well, that's nice of him. He used an ability called tuning to connect our consciousnesses with his. In other words, he imprisoned us within his consciousness. So, now what? Thanks to General Jing Yuan's destruction of the Harmonious Choir, we were able to escape. Uh, he used that tuning on us, too! Does that mean that we were almost imprisoned as well? I can confidently say now. He was truly after a fair fight with us. Had he wanted, he could have easily taken us down. Without so much as lifting a finger. At least he decided to go with a fair fight. Speaking of the Oak family head, where is he now? Under arrest! <laughs> it's complicated, but in a nutshell, he's now the former... Oak family head. Well, who is it now? The IPC has named him the key figure in the family's Pentacony split, citing a threat to cosmic peace. He must represent the family and answer for the unrest caused. His trial is set to take place at Bro! this point. Bro! This happened like 10 minutes ago! This happened 10 minutes ago! How have we already set up all of this shit for this? I mean, it is a big deal. I'm not gonna lie, but like... This happened 10 minutes ago! The family quickly labeled him and the remnants of the Order as enemies, declaring the turmoil an internal rebellion. This move effectively barred the IPC from intervening in family affairs on both moral and rational ground. Everyone really has their own agenda, after all. <sighs> what's new? Then, what's going to happen to Miss Robin? She and Sunday won't be able to deny their involvement in the Charmony Festival. They're siblings, after all. <sighs> yeah, what happens to Miss Robin? By the side, General. I can only say that this incident is an unexpected mess for the girl. That's true. The Alliance will try to persuade the family to consider this matter carefully during mediation. It's time, everyone. The IPC's key members and I have agreed to consult one another before the upcoming negotiation. Do any of you wish to sit in? I do! I do! <laughs> Given the General's invitation and the matter's significance to the universe, the crew will naturally accept. 
However, if the IPC has any reservations... Why, of course you're welcome. They've mentioned that your team is a trusted ally of the IPC and Pentagon, so there's no reason not to welcome you. <laughs> we all show up and they're like, except her. She's not allowed here. And it's just like, me? Why? <laughs> Besides, if there can be reliable observers from the Astral Express present, discussions will go more smoothly. That's fair. <laughs> well then, we shall oblige. I'm kind of allergic to those types of situations. I think I'll just head back to my room and start packing. Yeah. Not to worry. Himako and I won't take care of things. I'm afraid I'll also have to return to the Express first. The conductor is worried about us. It's best I go and Yeah, we did kind of leave him alone on the ship for a little bit. Thank you. What about you, hmm? Will you join Welt and me? Or have you got... Uh... I have to help! Don't know why, but something tells me I only have one real option here. <laughs> Good guess. Although I'm not too sure of the reason, the representatives from the IPC have insisted on her presence. Allow me to lead the way. Yeah, the negotiation will commence at the hotel lobby. Everyone, please follow me. How are you feeling? Greetings. Um, so, uh, we're going to talk about what happened? No? I'm sorry, I didn't mean it. Make a wish. Stream four. Lean the <laughs> All right, we go down the elevator. Stream four. <laughs> One's got to feel a little bit. Oh, he is okay. Oh, and who is that over there? Oh, that's Dr. Ratio. Don't worry about it. Intelligentsia him. Guild's Dr. Ratio. Hi, Topaz. It's been a while, my Astral Express friends. I'm genuinely surprised you're alive. <laughs> I would also extend my sincere thanks to you, General of the Lawfu. The presence of everyone here assures that the talks will likely reach a conclusion that satisfies all sides. Oh. Looks like everyone has come with expectations. Care to share? Of course. Topaz, if you please. I don't want to do the talking, so do it for me. Sure. Leave it to me. In summary, that's good news. After much deliberation from the Strategic Investment Department's Council, the absolute majority of members have agreed to the following resolutions. In light of long-term considerations for interastral peace, and by authority of Pierpoint HQ, the Strategic Investment Department, on behalf of the Interastral Peace Corporation, will permanently relinquish its claim on Penacony sovereignty and offer unconditional support of the family's rebuilding efforts on Penacony. Well, that's pretty nice. Ah. Uh. <laughs> now that's something. Huh. What's in it for you guys? Well, to be honest, it does nothing to benefit the IPC. But it is extremely beneficial to the long-term development of the entire universe. I guess. Has the IPC finished sharing all its thoughts? Then it's our turn. The Guild, much like the Genius Society, has taken a keen interest in the recent calamity in Penacony. Ultimately, both parties have agreed to a comprehensive collaboration, offering technical support for the reconstruction of Penacony. Okay. The floor is yours for the finer points, Mr. Scrullum. Oh, hi, Mr. Scrullum. Please. Organic life's unrelenting search to understand the realm of inner spirituality is something I both admire and envy. I see. Inorganic life has no mechanism to evoke dreams. But when my mechanical impulses are activated, my inspiration circuits will start to operate and I will enter a state defined as imagination. Every time, within the realm of imagination, there emerges a fire from the shadows. It is warm, bright. I frequently ponder this flame 
might represent the essence of intelligence. A cluster of inspiration ignited by high temperatures. The future direction of the universe may well lie within it. Alas, they are nothing but projections of my thought system to me. Desired, but unattainable. After deliberations with my partners, we have decided to defer the progress of the simulated universe project, and instead assist the Intelligentsia Guild as technological consultants oh. in the research of the dreamscape and memory zone. All right, so this is so weird. That they these don't. Assets may be better used to I serve thought they hated humanity. each other. What the fuck? Not only that, we've also established contact with the Garden of Recollection through well, the Well, that's IPC, huge. And they've pledged their support for our research endeavors. I'm truly happy for the Dream Chasers on Panacone. The cosmos is brightest and, let's admit, dimmer intellects are now at their service. Yeah, it's a big W for everyone! <sighs> Never mind. At the end of the day, this is a positive outcome. <laughs> no wonder everyone insisted that she be there. It heartens me to learn that everyone is willing to put aside their differences for Panacone's plight. I trust that everyone will surely reach consensus in the upcoming negotiation. Looks like Panacone's future is decided. Yeah. I'm wondering, is there anything else the crew... What is your position about? on this? Peace is our greatest Like, I know wish. you're the general of the law firm, but like... We desire nothing else. <laughs> well, that's good. Now that everyone's minds are at ease, I shall take my leave. Oh, goodbye. You may now depart with peace of mind. The Alliance will deal with all subsequent procedures. Bye! Bye-bye! If that's the case, it appears that we have nothing else to worry about on Penacony. Yeah. Looks like it's time for us to embark on a new voyage. Sounds good to me. You two head back to the Express first. I'll pick up March and deal with the checkout procedure. Oh, also, Miss Black Swan, you have a matter to discuss with me, yes? Mm-hmm. <laughs> nothing escapes your attention. Miss Navigator. You've been with us this whole time, huh? In any case, she and I will be waiting for you and March on the Express. Let's go. Our time on Penacone has come to a fruitful end. Why do I not believe that? Penacone's journey ends here. I guess it was pretty fruitful. I, for some reason, don't believe it. Something's gonna happen. Something's gonna, uh, something's gonna happen. The so navigation meeting is about to start. We're all waiting for you. Hi guys. Oh, you're already done. Ahem. Looks like everyone's present. Let the navigation meeting commence then. Yes. There's some meeting to decide our next stop. <laughs> How we doing this? But show of hands. Hold your horses, cowboy. It's for those to decide. Black Swan, how come you're here too? <laughs> Shouldn't this be expected of a memo? Keeper? Are you just gonna follow us? <laughs> Allow me to explain. Mr. Boothill and Miss Black Swan submitted a request to temporarily travel with the Express for their own personal reasons. Fuck yeah! As you all may know, the Astral Express never declines any passenger whose heart yearns for the distant stars. Therefore, they will be traveling with us for a while until they reach their destinations. Whoa, the Express is going to be much livelier now. But, Miss Black Swan, for the love of you God, do not use your memo <laughs> keeper abilities to pull any pranks. <laughs> Understood, Miss March. I promise you, you'll never see me in your room while you're taking a break. Uh, don't! You're freaking me out. All right, all right. Now that everyone's met everyone, we can continue our navigation meeting. All right, cool. Firstly, Pom Pom wishes to thank everyone. If it weren't for you all unearthing the truth about Penacony, Pom Pom would have never known where Mikhail and the rest had gone. Oh, it's like What they had to go through was regrettable, but I reckon they all fulfilled their wishes. And it was thanks to all of you. 
This Thank is Thank you, everyone. It's a weird ending. Now then, we come to the crux of this navigation meeting. We must decide on the Express's next stop. Let me introduce our current options. The first choice is from Himiko, the oceanic planet of Lushaka. Ooh. A planet composed entirely of water. I don't like it. Many aquatic races reside there. Of course, it's also the home planet of the venerable, nameless Mikhail. Oh. The second choice is the agate world Melustanin, suggested by Welt. It's famed as one of the initial sites of the Stellaron disaster and the place where the beauty Idrilla ascended. Today, it's celebrated as a planet of undying allure. I see. The third choice is Edo Star, a planet nestled within a vast ion storm region, currently under assault by the antimatter leader. There! I want to go However, there! the distress signals from there have recently ceased, prompting the IPC's wish for us to check in on the situation. That one! The last choice, courtesy of Black Swan, is the glass belt Petravia, a massive belt of asteroids that was turned to glass by the Lord Ravager Zephyro. These days, it's apparently known to house one of the branches of the Morning Actors Troupe. I want to go there. Ooh, so many options. I'm seeing stars already. I want to go. Next up, everyone will select the destination that they wish to visit. And then, we'll put it to a vote. Great first message, QD. Very good first message. Uh, the glass Black belt. Swan has arranged to meet a Morning Actor there. I've heard they're preparing a special performance. I wouldn't mind going to enjoy it. That type of performance isn't really my cup of tea, but uh, I'll let you all decide. Mm, I'm really interested to check out this troupe's performance, but it really sounds like the Edo Star is in a lot of trouble. As Nameless, should we not extend a helping hand? I guess. March is right. Though the fact that the distress signals have ceased means we're probably too late. But... I still think we should investigate the situation I, I there. Think, I think we should, too. Three votes for the glass belt. Two for Edo Star. Looks like we have a winner. Next stop, the glass belt. Fuck Petrivia. those people, am I right? <laughs> then this navigation meeting is adjourned. I'll go check the warp jump coordinates. Everyone can catch up on some rest in the meantime. When it's time to make the jump, Pom Pom will make an announcement. There's still some time before the jump. What should I do? Uh, <laughs> Mark. How about a chat? Over here. In, in about 10 seconds, I gotta Please talk to Mark. Please let this trip be uneventful. Please let this trip be uneventful. Please let this trip be uneventful. Please let this... <laughs> What's with you and always copying the way I talk? <sighs> the last couple of trailblazing expeditions have been downright terrifying. It's about time we had some fun, cozy, and cute adventures for a change. Come on, start right? praying with me. Oh, please let this trip be uneventful. Please let this trip be uneventful. Please let this trip be uneventful. Okay, I see what you're saying now. Huh. Daniel. For some reason, I'm suddenly stricken by the feeling that we haven't crossed paths in quite some time. It's been like a week. <laughs> I should have known better than to expect anything serious from you. This time we must disembark with us when we reach our destination. <laughs> Got it. Yeah. Hey, Boothill. This Astral Express sure is comfy. But I got one tiny problem with it. How come there ain't what no cap? potent drinks on this ride? I can live without malt juice. Yes. At least talk something else. Uh, uh, no way. Our express is only rated 12 plus. <laughs> Thanks, sister. <laughs> Any low cost swill will do. I ain't fussy. All right. <laughs> All these years out in the wild, and now I'm bunking in luxury. Gotta say, it's quite the treat. All righty then. Oh, well, Timiko, I'll talk with you in a little bit. Okay, listen, you're important, but these two. Come to think of it, <laughs> this trip to Panacone was the first time we trailblazed together, wasn't it? Not quite. <laughs> uh, 
I hope we can trailblaze you. <laughs> Don't worry. We'll have plenty of time to spend together on the Express. So there'll definitely be more chances for adventures. Let's turn in early today. You've really been pushing yourself hard recently. If you don't take this chance to recharge, it could lead to long-term problems. It seems fine when you're young, yes. but it's a different story as you age. Fair enough. Well, <laughs> you're fast becoming an excellent trailblazer. That's it's an honor yes. to be able to watch you grow. Thank you. Stop flattering me. Don't downplay Stop. your achievements. Everyone has witnessed your growth. I've known many warriors in my time, and only a few achieved the kind of growth you have. Back home, where I'm from, you'd be rated at least an S-tier. S-tier? That's huge. It's not been easy for you these past few days. You've earned some downtime. I'm looking forward to seeing how you'll perform on our next journey. You got it. All right, Swan, let's go. Yes, Black Swan, what is it? Oh, you're here. Seeing your reflection among the stars in the porthole <laughs> really does seem somewhat surreal. All right, what are you How doing? about it? This journey of beautiful dreams. Was it to your liking? A lot eventful. Um, when the next survey comes, I'll be checking the too easy box again. This other part does. <laughs> Uh, it's just so peak. Keep it covered. Uh, it seems like there's still lots of loose ends now. There's a rich scent of curiosity here. Like, what's going on with Such Robin? What happened to Firefly's three deaths? I only got one of them. So, how about you hand that small parting gift back to me? Oh, yeah, sure. Why not? I don't know what it I'm was. I'm quite eager to have it back. Oh, that thing. Yeah, I suppose I can give it back. Hmm. Oh? What? I, I wasn't the one who broke hmm. it. Never mind. I just stumbled upon a particularly fascinating spot in your memory. What? Before I explain, I would like to apologize to you. This farewell gift I gave you isn't really a compass from the memory zone, but merely an empty light cone. What? Remember when we entered the hotel in the dreamscape for the first time, and I procured a few trinkets from your companions? This way, I can always be attuned to your location, ready to assist immediately if you encounter any threats. That's pretty big. But this is not its most intrinsic function. Light cones are slices of light used to encapsulate solidified phenomena. This empty light cone is the same. It can etch your memories in their most vivid form. And then, allow me to admire and manipulate them, turning them into unique mementos. All the world is born from the power of mind and soul, and that power is memory. To prevent ourselves from being forgotten by the world, we must make the world remember us. Or use our memories to recreate it. Life, seemingly vast, offers but a scant collection of impactful memories. Some joyful, some sorrowful, some light, some heavy. But you are different. Memory is a reflection of the future. Within that reflection, I see your unparalleled worth. You have the power to craft memories that can captivate the world. Your memory can illuminate the universe's future path. And that memory will be as scintillating as the star clusters you see in this porthole. I see. You're making me blush. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> How adorable. But do you know the deeper meaning behind it? The reason is simple. In this grandiose and ostentatious dream of the families, only you personally experienced the entire course. Nice. What does that mean? 
<laughs> Patience, my friend. I will reveal the answer to you, but that time is not now. Turn around and take a look at your friends. Every one of them is reveling at the arrival of their next destination, all filled with hopes and expectations of their own present and future. Revealing everything at this moment would be a bit of a buzzkill, wouldn't it? I suppose. I'm looking for an opportune time. A time when you're totally at ease. Okay. Perhaps when the night grows hazy and you're about to drift off would be the most opportune. How about one fine night? I will prepare the candles, aromatics, and even a cushy couch to create a cozy dreamland for you. And then, I will tell you the answer in the form of a little bedtime story to lull you to sleep. Jesus Christ. Ahem. Hi. Hello. Attention all passengers. The express is about to make the jump. Please be seated and hold on. Wait, what? We're going now? It looks like we're finally about to set off. There are countless gleaming memories out there waiting for Bye, us. Bye, Panacone and... Why don't we just um, leave it at Everyone that else. For now. That really feel like we are not resolving a lot of things right now. Uh, that's right. As a small token of compensation for playing that little trick on you with the empty light cone, I will gift you with some words. They hold great significance to me. Sorry I tricked you with a with a with a card. So uh here, have some uh, words. Life is akin to a winding labyrinth where memories serve as our sole companions. <laughs> You'll remember these words dearly, won't you? In the year 2158 of the Amber Era, the first year of the new epoch, the universe resumed its intended trajectory. The kindling of conspiracy smoldered in Panacone, the land of the dreams. Failing to erupt into a blaze, it instead flickered briefly on Klopoth's anvil before vanishing in the blink of an eye. Hmm. The dead and those fated to die remain in their eternal slumber, hmm. while the living find solace in deep sleep. Hmm. All clamored in a cacophony of silence and then went about their own ways. The cosmos emanated a vitality characteristic of a new era all for the modest price of a brother and sister's mild grief. Babies are born as stars extinguish. The silver rail unfolds. The story of the Astral Express comes to a close, yet it also embarks anew. Okay. Time marches forward, Correct. heralding the arrival of a new chapter in the history of trailblazing expeditions. Yes. The end. Honkai Star. Wait, are we running the credits? Roll the credits! <laughs> yeah! <laughs> Run the credits! Lead actors, Courtness. Sorry. Don Hung is Don Hung. March 7th. Himiko is Himiko. Hello, well. Firefly is Firefly and Sam. Acheron still unknown. Black Swan. Gallagher. Boot Hill. Sparkle. Uh, Ratio. Robin. Sunday. Dream Master. Go for wood. Uh, Silver Wolf. Sampo. Topaz and Jade. Argentina. <laughs> Script Advisor. Oh, no. Not the loving memory. <laughs> no. No. <laughs> Oh shit! Yeah. Okay, we're not done. The sky tonight. What? If you can pick the right one, it will carry your wish to thousands of distant worlds. You're feeling very relaxed now, aren't you? So then, 
It's time to tell you a little bedtime story. Well, let's start oh. with a conclusion. The crew was defeated in the battle against Sunday. Whoa, hold on. Everyone in Panacone failed, and no one survived. Well, I don't like this story. But don't panic. The truth, as horrifying as it may be, is not yet irreversible. There's still a glimmer of hope, and that's why I'm here. Oh, of course. Next, I'll use this empty light comb that carries all your memories to relive everything that happened before. And when this story reaches its end, I'm sure someone as clever as you will notice that. There's a major flaw in the story you have experienced. I knew it! Yet, within that flaw lies a glimmer of hope. Are you ready for it? Yes! Do you remember everything? When the clock turned back, the Express started a warp jump, sending you to a strange dream. You were bewildered back then, and then a galaxy ranger named Acheron showed you a way out. When you arrived at the Reverie Hotel, you met the doorman Misha and had a confrontation with a Venturine, yes, an IPC representative. Thankfully, Acheron appeared again and helped you. Yes, After you that, did. you saved Firefly and explored Penacony together. I did. During the tour, you ran into Sparkle disguised as Sampo that and accidentally funny. entered a child's dream. Yeah, that's kind of funny. There, I rescued both of you from death, but Firefly didn't return to reality. She realized the truth and tried to involve you in her plan. But that resulted in an accidental death. Even more unsettling, you soon encountered another murder. The two cases of death prompted you to investigate the truth behind the sweet dream. That did happen. Despite your efforts to gather information about the two victims, you didn't make much progress. But you did learn about the watchmaker from Gallagher. So she, st so she was stabbed. She had, like, a very similar stab wound. Meanwhile, Aventurine was secretly carrying out his scheme, in which you were one of the pawns. In the midst of a fierce battle, Acheron revealed her true identity as yep. an emanator of the Nihility. That did and happen. And unsheathed her sword. That strike foiled Aventurine's plan and opened a passage between the Sweet Dream and the original Memory Zone. Upon your arrival at Dreamflux Reef, you learned the truth that death was actually dormancy. Sleepy! <laughs> as well as the truth about the Dreamscape, the Stellaron, and the Bellboy. You split up with Sunday and Robin, Mr. looking for a way to seal the Stellaron. However, it turned out that Sunday and the Dream Master had their own hidden agenda. Okay, I was I was very present for this one. Like, and very you had recently. to engage in an ultimate duel on the stage of the Charmony Festival. Finally, the story reached its conclusion. Yeah, I was really you emerged weird. victorious, with the Trailblaze triumphing over the Order, and Penacone embracing a bright and peaceful future. Yay! This marks the end of the thrilling journey in Panacone. I'm sure you've already noticed something unusual. Something. The major flaw, which contradicts all the known information, hides in this story. Are you suggesting that the sleeping and shapeless never bestows its gaze upon anyone, and thus no one can truly possess the power of the nihility? That's a very astute guess. But unfortunately, Hi there, little honest myth. How you doing? Acheron did progress further down the path of the nihility. Her unwavering belief in liberating the world from the grasp of paths surpasses the capabilities of ordinary humans. Hmm. I'll discard that incorrect answer for you. Bummer! Take your time and think it through. What is the fatal variable? Your good work sucks. You are the second person to talk about how much they hate their job in chat today. Uh, death. 
is the disguise. It is true that Gallagher is a history fictionologist, but he didn't lie in this matter. Okay. In addition, death and dormancy do arise from the same concept. Yes. Don't they? This okay. is not the fatal variable in your adventure. Okay, you're right. I need to think it through. All right, me and Misha in the hotel at the first time. Uh, I was attacked by Sparkle, disguised as Sampo, um, and uh, and uh, uh, the the fake deaths of Rob, uh, Firefly, and Robin. Um, that was well. A one. Although the fake deaths of those two ladies don't align with our initial assumptions. This fact itself doesn't contradict the information we have so far. Hmm. I'll go ahead and eliminate that incorrect... Wow, you really didn't even, like, play on that one. You were just like, mm -mm, nope, not gonna talk about it. Ugh. Misha got no screen time. I practically... I missed him. Hey, don't worry. <laughs> yeah, Misha's gone. It's fine. <laughs> Little Misha. It's, it, it's fine. Or should I call him the Watchmaker? He played a very important role in the story. <laughs> He's only a segment of memory in a dream bubble, but his hey, ambition I'm sorry to hear for that. the Trailblaze led him to leave. It's good that you're doing bubble. something good, but it, and it still sucks. And embark on a sucks. grand adventure in Penacony. Sorry to hear that. Well, Misha is a rather special memory zone meme, and he was granted power by the Trailblaze. There's still one thing that he shouldn't be able to do. Yeah. A life born in the memory zone could never manifest in reality. I think I'm right. So, why did he appear in the Reverie Hotel in reality? Yeah, that's a great question. How did he get there? The answer is simple. He is the one fatal variable that contradicts all our known Okay, so it was Misha. Okay. This All right. Means that you, hey, who person who said Misha got no screen time. I think memory. Misha's about to get more screen time. <laughs> We're about to get a lot of information here. <laughs> Black Swan hot. Yeah, Black Swan is mommy. Are still trapped in the dreamscape at this very moment. <laughs> Let's go! <laughs> Wake up, sleepyhead. Break free from this eternal dream and return to the real world. We'll find our answers there. The train is about to make the jump. Whoa, whoa, Five, whoa, hold the fuck up. Four, three, two. <sighs> All right, we're back. Is, I got lucky with my pulls early. E, early E1 and light cone after losing 75-25. This way, darling. All right. Yep. Okay. Thank you. Um. Yeah. No, I... Uh, they still in the dream, though. Oh, boy. Yeah. We go back now. <laughs> back in we go. <laughs> you thought it was done? No. Uh, I, I lost my 50-50 to Acheron. And then I uh, lost my 75-25. Uh, uh, Acheron's light cone, and then I won uh, both. <laughs> See, yay! And then I got E1. Yay! Um, I did. I get. I got Robin 50/50. Not another one. Acheron, no! I'm sorry. It wasn't me. Thank you so much, Black Swan. You're welcome. <laughs> Finally, I can breathe a sigh of relief. What the fuck? What is this, this deja vu? <laughs> I understand you must be confused. Very. We'll do our best to shed light on the situation. However, before that, it's essential to know that... This place is the rift between dream and reality. Okay, so... A place reserved only for those who have awakened from Enna's dream. I'm so confused. Do you remember Sunday's ambitious yes. plan? Yes, I do. He intended to harness the power of the Stellaron, the collective will of over 100,000 Oak family members. 
and the desires of everyone in Penacone to usurp the harmony and restore the order. As I was saying before, I got really uh, interrupted by uh, others. Uh, <laughs> that's not the word I should use. Uh, hold on, I want to find out if YouTube chat's actually going to work. YouTube chat, do you want to work today? Do you want to look nice and adorable? Okay, yeah, so you revealed too much information about people's profile pictures, so I can't have you anymore. And I hate that because I love YouTube chat because you guys are my people. Uh, but sorry. Unfortunately, it didn't stop there. From the early days of our journey into Asdana, we were that's already not your profile picture on, on that YouTube. strange dreamscape where we met. Maybe it was a sign that your thoughts were beginning to drift away. Uh, I already fought Sunday, but it looks like I might have to do another one, so... I don't know. Uh, as, I, as for Robin, uh, I got... I won my 50-50 for Robin. Uh... Uh, and then, um... And then, um... And then I lost my 75-25. And then, next 10 pull, I got the light cone. So, uh, Robin's complete. Haven't built her yet. Uh, I think I might save that for a stream when I get back from my uh, two-week vacation, though, for sure. Uh, so, more content. More Star Rail content. I got, like, Robin, like, three pity, and I don't know how. Bro, you lucky. You're so lucky, though. I respect the hell. I respect the hell out of that. That's awesome. Um, did I fall asleep on the express? I don't think the goal of the order was to put everyone into a deep sleep. Quite the contrary. They used the Stellaron to catalyze the leakage of Astana's Memoria into the material world, allowing the dreamscape to blend with reality. Okay. And that included a lot of Memoria from the Beyond the Sky Choir. Yeah. As time came and went, the dreams eventually became indistinguishable from reality. And reality became an illusion. Guaranteed Firefly, but people you think they are awake. But their spirits have long since stepped into the Temple of Order. Yeah, I got C6 her. <laughs> I have her C6. Oh, man. Oh, man. This is what makes Anna's dream so powerful. Yes. In this paradise governed by the Order, everyone indulges in their delightful dreams and lives happily ever after. Hey there, Son Goku. How you doing? Good to see you. I believe what you experienced in the sweet dream, except for that flaw, was real. Only in this way could you reach the destination, lifting the crisis in Penacone and embarking on your next trailblazing expedition. Yeah, no, I'm not guaranteed Firefly. I do want to get, I am good. I'm absolutely going to do my best to get Firefly, but woo. Uh, been grinding materials for Firefly. Yeah, uh, I'm not on that yet. Uh, I'm leaving soon, so. If it wasn't for Acheron's plan, we might have been trapped in this dream forever. Yeah. Fortunately, while the path of the Order governs all things, it can't affect the Nihility. I came to realize this when the Dream Master tried to expel me at any cost. Uh, I regrettably skipped adventuring. I really did want him, because he is, he's a solid unit, but like, yeah. This I gotta get is back also to the story. why I felt a sense of peculiarity when traveling with her. Well, I'm not as fortunate as she is. Even if I'm a memo keeper, I was still influenced by the power of the Order and fell into hallucinations. However, thanks to your memories, now we still have a chance to turn the tide. Yeah, I still have Jeppy. I got, Je I got Jeppy, but I don't really use a shield unit. For mortals, even if they possess the great power of a path, they can't create a flawless world like gods do. Right? That's why there was a flaw in your dream. Huh. In other words, once you have realized the world is not real, you'll have a chance to break free from the dream. Oh, I'm oh, I'm same here, Minnie. I'm I'm gonna be uh, skipping Boot Hill as cool as he looks and going for Firefly and Jade. The flaw in your dream lies within Misha, who could have never appeared in reality. When I turned the pages of your memories, I realized that I was in an illusion too. Whoa, 
That's crazy talk. <laughs> Didn't expect it all comes back to Misha. Now Sunday has usurped the power of the harmonious choir Jade hot, yes, through the Jade's charming hot. festival. Jade hot. As Donna has thus fallen into Anna's dream, transforming failure doesn't mean weakness. Only the strong can gather the will to resist the order and try to break free. We still have a chance, though. To make it happen, please, Black Swan, guide us to those with a strong will. Okie dokie. <laughs> All right, please come with me. Okie dokie. These people are... They're the ones who accept Anna's dream and oh. indulge in their happy illusions. Hi, I'm going to try using clockwork on you. I'm gonna control your emotions. I can't control your emotions. Fuck! <laughs> uh, that's not fucking wonky or anything. Totally not. This also isn't my dream, to be fair. This is someone else's dream. Okay. Well, you're you're all useless to kind of save at this point. All right, Acheron, take care of some business. Stream four. Good work. Huh. Hold on a second. That's better. Uh-oh. One, two. Listen, guys, we're not going to fight anybody while we're here. Not, not on my watch. Don't worry. We're going to take care. We're, we're going to get us. We're going to get us there. We're going to get us where we need to go. Hey, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Hello there, birds. Hello. Hello, everybody. Stream no. four. Gleamable. Here we are. Robin. It's Robin? It's Robin. <laughs> we don't got to go through the fight. I know. There's so many enemies swarm in the area. Hi, Robin. How you doing? Finally, you've arrived. What are you talking about? Let me introduce you to Robin. I know, I know Robin. She woke up from Anna's dream by her own will. And it's this tough lady who led us here with her song. I woke up for the same reason as all of you. Interesting. In the dream, I experienced something that could never occur in reality. Are we going to lock it up in a cage? I want to see it fly freely in the sky. Uh-huh. Without us, this bird would be too fragile to survive on its own. Do you want it to die? No, but... Yeah, I'll show you my Akron stats after this. <sighs> it's not perfect. Then let's take care of it together until it can return to the sky. Uh-huh? What? Birds have wings because they're meant to fly. Even if they may crash on the ground one day, they shouldn't be trapped in a cage. What? <laughs> Birds belong to the sky, so we should help them return there, right? The illusion was so impossibly blissful that I realized it was just a dream, and this is our final hope. Anna's dream is founded upon the Harmonious Choir. Namely, everyone shared wishes. It will only materialize once the aspirations of all beings in Penacone merge. Okay, them. part two! At present, it has become impervious due to people's desire to remain slumbering within the dream. Oh. And in order to destroy it. No, no, the roles were very reversed last time. We must make everyone in Penacone want to wake up. That's the Robin we know. Now comes the tricky part. How do we do it? <laughs> we flip the lights on and off over and over again until they wake up. <laughs> lights on, on, off, on, off. <laughs> Wait till they wake up. It works every time. Or we make really loud noises. <laughs> uh. <laughs> you want to go back? 
Unfortunately, human consciousness always grabs Wake him up eventually. Reality. Now that you've seen the flaw in the dream, there is no turning back. Humans yearning for sweet illusions borders on obsession. <laughs> Wakey wakey, ready for gets to work. The harsh reality. It breakfast time. <laughs> Therefore, I carefully selected a moment where she was completely unguarded, guiding her to uncover the truth herself to make her regain her consciousness. The people with epilepsy are gonna suffer, though. Oh shit. Um, we'll just get simple monkey. We'll just get simple monkeys and just throw them in all the rooms. So, I'm going to need to acquire at least 30 minimum symbol monkeys. So, because we're, we're going to have to reuse them. Symbol monkeys are expensive. Did, I'm not sure if you knew this yet, but symbol monkeys are not cheap. Like, not even in the slightest. Like, like if I were to go to Amazon right now and look up how much a symbol monkey is... Shit, these things are only ten bucks. Oh no, that's that's sixty-five dollars. Oh, that's that's a car sticker. <laughs> All right, thirty-five. Okay, thirty sounds too low a number. Fine, we'll get thirty-five. But we're gonna have to reuse them. Okay, it's gonna take a while, but we need at least thirty-five participants. <laughs> However, to wake up everyone in Panacone and get them to share the same determination, that would be nearly impossible. Bro, that one simple mon monkey from Toy Story. Get that one. Oh my god, you're so right. Indeed. But that's the $65 I'm one. I'm afraid it's almost <laughs> as difficult as resurrecting an eon. I don't have that type of money. <laughs> Robin, you're rich. Buy 35 simple monkeys. But we can't just stay here and do nothing. When the fuck did you guys get here? <laughs> this is a critical moment for the whole universe. Who cares about some dumb number? Oh, good morning. <laughs> thanks to Black Swan. Mm -hmm. You're welcome. And thanks to the Memo Keepers and Penacone too. I believe your partners have also awakened from their dreams. Yeah, how did Boot Hill get here? I, Don Hung too. I, how? Okay, hold on. Crazy question. How did Don Hung and uh, Jing Yun? It, it's fine. They sell. Oh, you know what? Minnie's right. It's fine. They just teleported here. It's fine. Okay, we, we're not going to question too much. This is the first step of our plan. With the assistance from the Garden of Recollection, those who possess a strong will like you will gradually awaken from the dream. These free wills are the discord that will sway Anna's dream. I'm just realizing something. I need to go a little lower here. So that way we can see chat. Sorry, chat. I was blocking you for a little bit there. However, awakening a mere handful of individuals is insignificant compared to the vast number of people immersed in the dream. We must find other ways to awaken the free will of millions of people within a short period of time. You said millions of people? Oh, uh, we're gonna need a lot more symbol monkeys than that. If breaking through from the inside proves challenging, we can seek assistance from the outside. We've long been aware of a potential solution. We need a lot of As symbols. Donna is a galaxy known for its abundant memoria and the remarkable phenomenon known as synesthesia dreamscape. When people first enter this place, they often find themselves and others sharing a collective dream. Yeah, I don't know who that is. But that might... It's not personal, right? It's okay. At this very if you're okay moment, with that. There is only one I do want your chat messages on screen. The entire Asdana system. If you're okay with that. So, you mean... If we can attract a large number of outsiders to this system, their free will would intertwine with this dream and shake it to its core. However, those outsiders might also succumb to the dream and become the foundation of the Order instead. The real challenge is, how can we gather a huge number of people as determined as you within a short that's period right, of time? That's alright, I don't care. Alright, that's fair. That's cool. 
<sighs> Looks like the JDAP kiss of allying oath will be the only solution. No. No need for that. I know, right? Keep your wants and lifetime treasure. We don't need to bother the Sienjo Alliance for such a tiny request. But there's a you lot of them. We could wake up a lot of people will. with all those people. <laughs> we don't need the symbol monkeys if that's the case. <laughs> Just leave it to us, Galaxy Rangers. You can gather Galaxy Rangers? No, the other one right there. <laughs> <laughs> Outsiders may see Galaxy Rangers as elusive and disconnected individuals, and actually, they're right. Oh. And that's why we have a tacit understanding among us. Right. Do you know what it is, Acheron? It's the relic I return to you. Whoa. Exactly. Its owner must have told you that it's meaningless to anyone other than a Galaxy Ranger. Like a coupon. And that it can only fulfill like its purpose looking. when returned to its rightful owner. Because it's a burial artifact. Oh. Worthy only of a hero who has served the Galaxy Rangers with honor. I see. When its light illuminates the universe, it means the fall of a hero. And countless sorry, meteors sorry. Will streak across the sky. Sorry, Boot Hill. Those meteors are galaxy rangers oh. coming from all corners of the cosmos, driven by a shared purpose. Without questioning the cause or counting the cost. Because we abide by a common principle. The shooting stars of the hunt only descend on the longest night. And with them comes the dawn. Boot Hill, I just got an idea. Pull your gun out. Shoot in the air several times. That's way louder than a simple monkey. We stayed silent for far too long. Now, it's time to remind all the cowards, oppressors, and villains of the universe of our presence. I'll be the one to ignite the first spark. We need to sign a petition to let Boot Hill say fuck. I know, right? He, he says fork or fudge, and it's just like, bro, you just want to say it. Just say it. Once the dreamscape is swayed, I'll complete the second step. I'll fine-tune the slumbering souls with the song of the harmony, interrupting them with the discord of trailblaze. Come on, you let him swear! <laughs> let him say the fuck word! It's true that some people are born strong, and others are born weak. If the trailblaze is the target of heroes, then the harmony will guarantee that the strong help the weak. Only the people of Penacony themselves can be the saviors of their homeland. It's so iconic, though. What the fudged fork say? No, that's why I like it, too. Like, he just he just never says the F word, but he, like, says things that are close to the F word. Their path of happiness should be forged by themselves. While I may not be a nameless, I'm willing to instill courage in all those who need it. This includes my brother as well. Anna's dream is too cool for him and everyone else. Your brother did some fucked up shit. Just keep that in mind. Your plan sounds well conceived, but still, it appears somewhat idealistic and romantic. The flaws rooted in human nature can't be eradicated overnight. Do you believe these efforts alone are enough to convince everyone to Robin choose the right Robin is legally path? not allowed to say fuck. Aw, sorry Robin, I can't, I'm sorry for you. I agree with you, Black Swan. That's why the most critical aspect of this plan is not to convince everyone to choose the right path. Okay, but wouldn't it be funny if Robin said fuck? Like, what if on her latest album of Inside, she just dropped the fucking F-bomb, like, Right in the middle of if if I could stop one heart from breaking, she's just like, fuck. And, then, and, and we're like, whoa, hold the fuck up. Did she just say the fuck word? But to inspire them to save themselves. She's been waiting for that moment. <laughs> so, you're the key in the end, I assume? The Harmonious Choir possesses the power of an emanator. To overcome it, you'll need the same level of power. The final step in destroying the sweet dream will be my responsibility. Get him, Acheron! That's a relief to hear. 
<sighs> now that our roles are assigned, let's get to our battlefield and pose a grand finale. I like this lineup. May I have a moment alone with you? Oh, hi. Sure. There's one more thing I need to explain to you. Yeah, sure. Go ahead. This grand festival is drawing to its close. Uh-huh. This is the starting point for the ultimate stage of our journey. Uh-huh. Just as it marked the beginning of all the stories in Panacone. Right. Akron's here to save the day once again. I know, right? That's just how it is. Whatever we're prepared, whatever we're facing, I'm prepared. This is where Firefly uncovered the truth. Your words still carry a profound... Oh, that's right. She uncovered her true form here. Yeah, I'm whatever I'm prepared for. Not everything's about Firefly. I have faith in you. However, before we depart, there's one more thing I must tell you. Okay. Which there's something you should know. We were able to locate you within this boundless dream and find the key to breaking free from the dream. All because of one person's unwavering dedication. Firefly. Never mind, it's about her. She <laughs> Firefly is a stowaway who entered the dreamscape in a different way from ours. All right. Without the dream pool and the hotel, the audio's the glitching. From the family, yeah, it's gonna do that. She can only oh, awaken not, yeah. from this dream in one way. So OBS, yeah, a so, real death. Okay, so OBS um, integrated this thing uh, where you can capture the audio of a certain game and only the game. It's just in beta and it sucks. So, it, yeah, unfortunately, it's something we're gonna have to bear with. My apologies on that front, but I, I'm not OBS at the end of the day. We must as long as it fixes itself, that's what matters at the end. But thank you guys for helping I'm me out with that. I'm not implying that we must win this fight. We're much appreciated. Lot, but our resolve should match that of that courageous lady. Wait, did Akron just say that Firefly died? All right, there's something you should know. We were able to locate you within the balance dream. Firefly, she awakened from the dream and it came at a cost. As you know, Firefly is a stowaway and who entered the dreamscape in a different way from ours. Without the dream pool in the hotel or assistance from the family, she can only awaken from this dream in one way, a real death. We mustn't fail her determination. I'm not implying that we must win this fight no matter what, but our resolve should match that of our courage. Oh my God. Are you ready? Are you? Yeah, let's do it. Very well. Now, please close your eyes. Okie dokie. No, wait, I can't do that. That's the only death. Yeah, that's the only death we've seen. But Firefly revealed to us that in Ilio's script, um, from Ilio's script, uh, hold on. So from Ilio's script, God, I'm really good at words right now. <laughs> uh, Ilya's script, she's supposed to endure three deaths. All right, well, unfortunately, mine is not built for... <laughs> she's not built different, so I have to bring in the story one. All right, Akiron, get in there. <laughs> so it's you. Our time spent with one another is precious. Yes. Um, okay. I'm going to bring in Locha. And I need fire. I need Nihility. God damn it, you suck! You're not good! I built you and you're not good! I'm sorry! <laughs> Ibiko! If there's anything you need, don't hesitate to ask. You're not good either, but you're <laughs> way better! <laughs> Poor Acheron is not gonna get her Nihility! <sighs> She doesn't need it. <laughs> she should have it. How long has this rain been ongoing? If I remember correctly, it has lasted for decades. Bro, I probably just or fucked myself. Centuries. 
Oh man, I'm an idiot. <laughs> the unwavering determination of the hunt followers persists even in death. I didn't even bring Black Swan in. Oh, I'm a fucking tard. We've guided those lost souls to their lives beyond. They were heroes. I need to, so I can get Sparkle on my team and boot. Yeah, no. And they won't be reduced to puppets. I wanted her game. to be good. I really did. I really wanted Lil Gooey to be good. You see, the shadows on the sea have vanished. I used the Venture and Links and or Acheron. Oh man! He I probably should have brought Hua Hua in! Oh, I don't, wait, no! No, Hua Hua wouldn't have solved the fucking problem. Why would she solve the problem? But it's still raining. I know. Links is E6? Shit, I don't even think I have an E6 Links. So, why is all this? I find her well with a dot team of copper. Oh, I know. Yeah, she's Why great. Did this rain Why me? me? <laughs> because someone's regrets haven't been fulfilled, perhaps. Oh, the hands got there. They made it. Guys, look. The hands got there. The, the, the hands, the shadow hands, they got there. They got to their target. Mortals who walk the paths are like sailors on a past ocean. Leaving behind a trail that creates countless ripples of possibilities. These ripples last longer than the fleeting lifetimes of humans. And for some, Topaz, the presence MC, leaves such a Sparkle strong mark that it's reflected in the waves. The I wanted to take an emanator to fight God, but Hoyo said no. Don't worry, I'll defy those fucking odds. Why did I just notice the ha the hands there literally in the middle of the ocean? Listen, they were all over before. Now that they made it, they're making it to the ball. Sin thirsters. The obsession. I believe in you. Striders. Thanks. <laughs> I have, I don't. <laughs> My Himiko can't hit Seeing for shit. themselves as masters of their own destiny. I've been trying to Unknown rebuild their and repeating just like, the actions uh -oh. of their past lives. They emerge from the nihility and head toward it. Leading purposeless lives. However, these hollow phantoms. Also, I found your UID. Uh, Akron crit stats are pretty good. Hey, thank you. I appreciate that. I want to make them better, but uh, relic luck. Am I right? <laughs> I have journeyed with for follow up for such is okay. Exactly. Okay. <laughs> so this is how it is. I'm already dead. What the fuck is happening? Yes. Are you watching over me? Yeah, kind of. This is my duty. As Acheron the Watcher. Acheron the Watcher? I'm guarding the path to the abyss of the Nihility. Guiding every soul reluctant to become one with it. Back to this side. Relics, you get a required main stat, but the substats are fucking awful. Welcome to Honkai Star Rail. It's kind of like Genshin in a way. But if this is what the departed ones expected, should you try to change it? No, no, no. Correction. Uh, so she's the Grim Reaper now? I think that. Kind of. I don't know. She's the Watcher. <laughs> but someone once told me that when the inevitable moment came... He hoped that. Anna, uh, keep that in mind. If we finish the story later today, I'm check. I'll check yours out. Just let me know. Someone would stand at his grave and place a bouquet of flowers. Even if it doesn't make sense at all. Yeah, that's true. You can you can just do that now. I th that's what I like about Star Rail. You can just get the artifact or the relic right away. Like with with Genshin, if you want to if you want to like get rid of artifacts and then get the ones you want, you have to go by like back from like two years when those things came out. And it's like it's not like I want today's artifacts. Some tasks have to be done, even if they are pointless. Like sometimes I, I'll I just grind. Experienced that much already. So sometimes I like to uh, grind uh, relics, relic sets that even I don't even need to use precisely, and just exchange them away. 
for uh, relic remains, so I can just do that. Please extend your hand and then close your eyes. I'll carry your wish with me and fulfill it. Only then will I be able to put an end to the final regret by the Dead Sea. The fuck? My main account for Hunkai Sorrow is built so weird, Lamau. I think right now my best character is Akron, but yeah. Do I see them again? Yeah, no, that too, with Genshin. Yes. You have to gamble the certain. artifact you want. Relics, you were like, I need boots. And it's like, okay, boots it is. Because it was you who told me about the Express. Your two former companions. Whoa, what? The expedition no, hold on, floor. Swarm. Your narrow escape from death and Pentagon. The hometown to which you could never return. Mikkel? Yeah. For countless times. I got rejected by the family and had to pass it by. But I knew that my companion was still there. Or is that someone or is that someone else? Okay. Oh my god! Are you still there? Take my hand and come with me. We We'll leave this place. You'll embark on a long, long journey, shrouded in darkness. Okay, so Fear not. As a touch of red will be awaiting you. Oh shit! Past. Okay, not Mikel, but still a huge lore drop. That's the color of existence. Follow it, and it'll guide you and illuminate the way. Doing so, you'll eventually reunite in the warmth of the sunlight. Thank you. Thank you. May death be the end of your boundless dream, guiding you back to the waking world. Welcome to the horizon of existence. Welcome home. This place is one of the thousands of manifestations belonging to the sleeping and shapeless. This is where I send people when I want to slash also them with a chore, exit with a sword, the and gain for the awake big ones. numbers. Let's bid our final farewells here. Uh -huh. Okay. I'll walk up to the JPEG image of it. Always oh. distinguish between reality and imagination. Alright, Gray. Life okay. is akin to a winding labyrinth where memories serve as our soul. May your schemes be forever concealed. Okay. Firefly? Anna's dream. Robin. Is too cruel for him and everyone else. To the imperfect tomorrow. Okay. I still remember the question on the invitation letter. Why does life slumber? Why does life slumber? We don't know the answer yet. But we are about to awaken from this dream. Or perhaps such is the answer itself. Leave this place. Return to where you belong. And awaken Panacone from this dream. Will you come with us? Will I get to witness your hidden power? As I said, our plan is not about convincing everyone to choose the right path, but about inspiring them to save themselves. Makes sense. So, when will people actively save themselves? The answer is, when they are in desperate situations, like a drowning individual in the deep sea. Penacone's story when is one's fucking body awesome. and mind bear immense pressure, agony, confusion, and despair will follow. I firmly believe that the fragility of humankind often freezes them in their tracks. But in truly desperate situations, they will strive to save themselves. And now, 
Panacone has enough heroes to lead them forward. It's through this inherent, self-centered instinct that people exert their utmost effort, even when they know their struggle is fruitless. As absurd as it may seem, it's their resistance, as for now. It is time to guide them, not as a savior, but as a nameless among those mortals. In this way, you will reunite in the warmth of the sunlight. Holy shit. The rain is intensifying. Correct. Before we part ways, please allow me to ask a few final questions. Okie dokie. So far, you have forged unbreakable bonds with numerous individuals and entities in the sweet dream. I did. Might I ask if you fear severing these bonds with your own hands? I... I guess I feel no fear. I have no other choice. Red tech, yeah, red tech is scary. Lifelike dreamland that is virtually indistinguishable from reality. A realm without death, where everyone can attain the happiness and fulfillment they deserve, living blissfully ever after. See, I haven't played Honkai Impact Third. I, okay, I played a little bit, but I haven't really got like too invested in the story. Maybe that's something I do on my plane ride. I don't know. I would ask, would you wish to stay? Uh, I would never, ever want to live in a dream. Well, I mean, that was going to be my answer anyway, so yeah. Imagine if this splendid dream were fated to fall apart. Friends, family, strangers. Followed by the gentle breeze, soaring birds, the stars... And ultimately, yourself. Everyone. And every face they remember. The joy and the heartaches. The vows sealed and those left hanging. All will inevitably march towards a predetermined ending. If you had grasped the journey's finale right from its inception. I stayed up until 2 a.m. The Dude, I, I'm literally on day three of this quest right now. I would ask, would you still embark on this journey? Whoa, okay. Minnie just said something fucking actually brilliant. Because Akron did ask these questions. I vividly remember this. I wonder if the choices you pick at the beginning of the story determines on... Holy shit, I think you're right. I'm glad. The answer itself doesn't matter. What matters is that you've made a decision. I can't remember what I said the first time, but I did stream it. So I could go look back. Listen, touch, and ponder. And therein lies the sensation. To be fair, she did Change ask questions. To be fair, she did ask questions. Us exist. To be fair, she did ask Such questions. Which is the only answer humans can offer when that facing I would the answer. nihility. If the nihility represents the primal fear of life, rendering any lofty convictions insignificant under their imposing shadow, then behind this shadow, there must exist the most fervent source of light in the world. Just as every life that edges closer to death oh. fervently approaches the end of the night. So maybe Court, maybe Courtness over here has, an, has knows the answers. It was all red too, so I mean it had to say. Yeah, that's I, I I think I said that in the stream of 2.0. I was like, this red text is going to be important later. I can just tell. We must pursue that primordial light. You're right, Acheron. And you watch over others to depart it? Such a task is absurd and meaningless. Nevertheless, someone had to do it. As for the meaning you mentioned, even if it's a meaningless task, I've come this far, haven't I? Even if the future you forge may not even belong to you. 
It may not belong to me, but it definitely belongs to someone. Oh. What hardships you must have experienced. In that case, allow me to do something you must do. Please, tell me your name. Perhaps my existence will vanish in the next moment and nobody will remember this conversation or your answer. But I believe that your name should be and this universe will remember it as well. For me, some things are difficult to recall. Yet there are others that I find challenging to forget. Such is memory, a creation of the past that blossoms into significance in the distant future. I remember that marks the start of my journey, the origin of the vibrant red hue in my life, and the most fervent element amidst every tempest. That's my name, Raiden. Ozen Mori. May. The golden dream is getting restless. In the coming long nights, I'm afraid you will face many setbacks and witness many tragedies. And in the end, you will only see in black and white. But please believe me, <laughs> in that monochrome world, there will be a glimpse of fleeting way. And when you make a choice, it will appear once more. Hey, what you must do falling is from the sky. Deja vu, eh? Then return to the waking world. <laughs> Oh, let's That's fucking go! Our answers. Good morning, you two. In three, four, we're about to go and do some shit. It's time for round fucking two! <laughs> Have you broken free from the dream of order? We've done enough sleeping already. Let's show them a wake up Let's call. kick some fucking ass! Good damage. <laughs> Eternal step dead. Return. All right, here we go. Okay, nice. It too shall fall. I have something for you. Yeah, this feels more like a boss battle. I should be fighting. <laughs> How can the weak be righteous? Fight him! Kick his ass! Holy Just shit! For oblivion. Nobody risen. All things are part of the melody. Ow! Oh, well, that wasn't really nice. Now was it? Uh oh. Hey. Hey. Keep up with me. You settle down. Wake up. Good morning. You won't get away. Let's play our own melody. Let the show begin. 
I have something for you. Dude, this. Okay. I saw this comment on a YouTube video one time. Let me just say it. So let me just time. repeat it, okay? This is not my quote. This was someone else on a YouTube video. Man, it sure is nice that Hawkeye Star Rail made a game to go along with the music that they make. <laughs> Another journey begins. Still water. Oh, noise. <laughs> <laughs> Perhaps you see humanity never conceals its desire to control the heavens, and I'm no exception. Super break! Oh no! <laughs> Hey, whoa, whoa, whoa! Whoa, that's way too much of a shield, bro. Still the same old. Time for an overhaul. Noisy. Again. Still water noisy. Bro. Indistinguishable from reality. Can it still be called an illusion? I'll take the lead. Let's Hit him with it. Let the show begin. Super break's gonna be kinda helpful here. You chose the wrong enemy. Yeah, that's gonna be important. You need to fucking stop. Hit him with it, Robin! Hit him! Music. Oh, I love this song. Oh, I fucking love this song! There seems to be another kind of sound coming into the Order Symphony. Panacone's first and last disharmony. Come on, train! We got some things to do! You still don't understand. Humanity never conceals its Oh my god, I love this game. Those imprisoned in their dreams are awakening for free. Here comes a fucking train. Oh my god! <laughs> Holy shit! <laughs> Is that you singing? Brother, you have heard their cry. This is not the paradise they hoped for. Even so. They don't know where they should be heading. That's why I had to become the lone star in the sky to guide them. Even if that star must hang in a perpetual night of solitude. Yeah, fuck you. <laughs> I weep for the departed. It did not fall. Eternal stay. Dead return. Let's play our own. Let the show begin. Wake up. Stop shielding, you little bitch. <laughs> I'll see you off. <laughs> Noisy. Destined for oblivion. All things are part of the melody! Nothing major would worry. Free will, or was it called still waters of a blip? Hit him with a fucking train! The weakness of humanity cannot be redeemed by others. <laughs> you chose the wrong enemy. Wake up. Need you back. Okay. Oh. Bro! 
It's just Eternal a sleep. The dead return! Wait for good tidings. No, you're not. You're you won't get away. I weep for the departed. It is my fault. You won't get away. Weakness is not defined by listen up. Listen up. Another journey begins. I'll see you all. I have something for you. I'm gonna save that all. Or not. Or not. No, nope, no, I'm not. No, I'm not. Perhaps you stick in envy never conceals its desire to control the heavens, and I'm no exception. Bro, what the? I've never experienced solitude. Okay. How could we have embarked on different paths? That's a good point. Now. Our final talk has concluded. All the work of creation has been completed. Oh no. The inevitable day has arrived. Oh no. The embryo of philosophy oh, no. will reshape for us all of reality. If your paradise can save more people, Sever my path with your hands. All right, throw a train in him. Let's play our own melody. Let the show begin. Free will, or was it fate? Holy shit! <laughs> throw a train! Don't be shackled by the past. Insolent. May I honor you? Guys. The train did nothing. We're fucked! <laughs> it won't be so easy next time. Insolent! I command you. Oh my god. Uh -oh. I have a bad feeling about this. Yeah, I do too, Ra. Uh huh. Quick. I weep. For Quick. Macaron. It did so fall. It was not you who created all the things. It was humanity that created you. Oh. Let's go! Right. Don't worry, it's just a script. Eternal step. Dead return! Insolent. Throw the train! The will of the weak! Yeah! The train worked this time! Up from our dreams. Fuck yeah, we are! You chose the wrong path. Free will, or what the still waters of oblivion. Listen up! Let's play our let the show begin. I have something for you. I'll see you. Perhaps you still don't. Humanity never conceals its desire to control the heavens, and I'm no exception. <laughs> that attack was awesome, I'm not gonna lie. Oh no, he's gonna do it again! Throw the train! The train worked, guys! Wake up! Yeah, Robin singing makes this I such a fucking epic God. fight. You chose the wrong enemy. Huh. I swear. Locha, you're not helping. Listen up. I swear on me. Free will, or was it fate? Guys, I don't got a good feeling about this one. <laughs> I swear you did. Time for an overhaul. Receive I'm 
alive! <laughs> Hit him! Smack him! Throw a train. You won't get away. I weep for the departed. Yeah, I'm kind of suffering not having. Destiny for oblivion. Keep up with me. Listen up. Another Let's play our let the show begin. I have something for you. Perhaps you still Here we go. Understand. Launch! You can see to control the heavens, and I'm an exception. I'll see you Here we go. We talked about this, man. I swear. Free will, still waters of a place. <laughs> Get fucked, loser. <laughs> that was a fight. So, why does life slumber? Yeah, why does life slumber? Because someday. We will wake up from our dreams. Yeah, get him right in the fucking heartstrings. The night is still too short. Brother, the dream is over. In the first year of the AE-2158, a fiery conspiracy erupted in the land of the dreams, but soon faded in chaos and destruction. Whispers carried the tale of those fateful 48 system hours, when a sun teetered on the precipice of collapse, a paradise stood on the brink of destruction, and a world was poised to surrender to its new master. Amidst it all, a body decayed, a pack of vultures gathered, and a brother and sister were doomed for eternal separation. And so, an eon succumbed to slumber once more. Some celebrated this fall while others mourned. Among the insignificant witnesses, mere specks in the vast tapestry of the universe. It was said that this time, the Eon met their demise with dignity. As the cosmos bathed in the radiance of a pure dawn, a tempestuous storm brewed on the horizon. The chant of everything for the Amber Lord grew ever louder. Yet, no matter how one contemplates it, time inexorably swings Klopot's colossal hammer in eternal cycles. The tale of the Astral Express reaches both its conclusion and a new beginning. Wait, this is... Time marches forward. Black Swan said this. Heralding the arrival of a new chapter. But in the history. It could of I think it might be Elio. Expeditions. He is the scriptwriter. Brother, do you think the stars will fade away? I don't know, Robin. Where did that come all of a sudden? I don't fucking know. <laughs> it's the constellation that looks like a bird. The torrent eagles. Looks a bit dim lately. 
Dude, I'm like 12. I don't know. I just ask weird questions. <laughs> it's the Torment Eagles. Don't worry, it's still there. It's just it's located in the inner ring of Pentacony and can only be seen when spring and summer overlap. As for the question you asked, I think stars do die, just like people. But do you know, sister? No star actually belongs to the present. The light we see from them is from a long time ago. Even after the stars perish, their light will travel millions of light years, spanning countless years, to illuminate the night sky of another world. Okay. In our paradise, I believe there will be a star like that, shining with the same light. Its radiance will last forever, and its name will be happiness. No, not just one star. We should have two stars, or maybe even more. Like 35. Yeah, you're right. It's a deal. 35 stars. It's a deal, then. This is our promise, and nothing will sway our No enemies. more, no less. <laughs> Sold to the highest bidder! Wait, hold on. Hold on. This happened once. This happened one time. I gotta watch this again. Courtness! Yay! Don Hunk. No, we still don't know who March 7th is. There we have. Oh my god, Akron's name. There it is. Um. Cameo appearances from Silver Wolf. Let's go! Script supervisor, Iliel. Yeah, Will's, Will's birthday was there. Just don't worry about it too much. Hey, where the fuck was the in loving memory? Ah, there they are. <laughs> yep. Mm hmm. Aboard the astral spec, a young scholar. Whoa, there's so much more lore. Um. To spoke out broader academic po Jesus fucking Christ. Okay, I didn't need their fucking autobiography. But I appreciate their autobiography. The former guard, uh, she was the true founder behind the Land of Dream. Whoa. Whoa. Ambushed by the swarm and disappear only to be rescued by galaxy rangers. That is until the day is open. I found his relics until truly he was true. Okay, Mikel. Former mechanic for the Astral Express and the legendary big shot of Pentaconi, the Watchmaker. Hailing from the oceanic planet of Lucia. Uh huh. Mikel. The Mikel Car couple. Uh -huh. uh, oh my god, I cannot read that. I am way too ADHD for this. Um, but he was unable to witness Pentaconi's end. He died in a quiet death. He forgot in the corner. Blah, blah, blah. Blah, blah. In the line of the nameless tradition, his crew ticket was returned to the starry seas. Uh, meanwhile, Pentaconi remains to replay. Blah, 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 blah. Yay! The text goes by so fast. I know my ADHD Ash can't read that fast. It's a pleasure to hear your voice again. Congratulations. You've become the biggest winner of this festival. Are you calling just to poke fun at me? No. I'm just impressed. Not only did you venture alone into Pentaconi and discover the truth of Dreamflux Reef, but you also managed to escape with the help of that Knight of Beauty. It's Argentina. The country. Remember the recording you received from your Trailblaze friend? It's now the most valuable chip in this game. However, this came at a high cost. Losing a cornerstone is a hefty price to pay. Diamond just called a meeting to discuss what to do with you. Just as I expected. So is Diamond planning to demote me or kick me out of the Ten Stone Hearts? <laughs> Why don't you take a wild guess? Well, all right. Then I'll guess. He's going to promote me to P46. All right. What will you wager? Are we talking about a real bet here? 
I don't want to wager anything just to escape your clutches. But if it's just a friendly bet, I'll put on the line what I did when we first met. I'll bet my life, ma'am. Interesting. But since it's Diamond's call, no one can predict the outcome. I'm on my way to Penacony. Once everyone is settled, we'll return to Pier Point for the final showdown. Guys, I think there's something going to happen in 2.3. I just can't put my finger on it. Sounds like I'll be out of the action for a while. Finally, a chance to kick back and relax. Did I say 4.3? I meant 2.3. Dude, I'm so fucking ADHD. <laughs> yeah. Leave everything to me and Topaz, child. Thanks to you. As soon as the Jade Stone was delivered to the family's compound, we finished up our preparations. The seeds we planted have taken root. Soon, it'll be time to reap the rewards. Huh? Let's wrap it up for now. Looks like I've got a visitor here. And it's... Boot oh, hell! So many surprises today. Didn't expect a galaxy ranger and wanted criminal to show up here. That's insane. One who managed to take out two IPC members under the noses of our fleet. Do you understand what that means? Battery on a, on a peace officer. You're going to jail. Just for that. Screw Wubba Boo. I just put him to sleep. Oh, okay. No, no. Don't try to intimidate me with that nonsense. Besides, I've taken down more IPC lackeys than the residual value you squeezed. And I don't mind adding a few more zeros to my wanted poster. I have a question for you. Be honest, or I don't mind putting a bullet into your head. You know, that dude just, like, kind of pulls that gun out all willy-nilly. He's kind of insane. Is a swallow Snyder. Okay, Penacony isn't done. Penacony is not done. Bro, I thought Penacony was done. 